Welcome to the Whatever Dating Talk podcast. Thank you for tuning in tonight. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. We are coming to you live from Santa Barbara, California, every Sunday and Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I am your host, Brian Atlas. I'm joined by my co-host, Kiki. She's a bit shy. A few quick announcements before the show begins. This podcast is viewer-supported, heavy YouTube demonetization, so please consider donating through Streamlabs instead of super chatting as YouTube takes a brutal 30% cut. So if you, if you super chat 100, YouTube takes 30. If you donate 100, Streamlabs only takes three. Streamlabs.com slash whatever. Link is in the description. For the sake of a smooth show tonight, we have temporarily boosted some of the donation and super chat triggers, guys. Uh, if you want to see all the details, links in the description. We're also live on Twitch right now. Pull up another tab. Go to twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow in the Prime sub if you have one. And uh, yeah, so we had a false start there. So we got, I'm a little, uh, a little befuddled there. Anyways, uh, Without further ado, we're going to have the guests introduce themselves one more time. So please tell us your name, age, and occupation. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Azalea. I'm 31, and I'm a flight attendant and content creator. What kind of uh, content do you? <laughs> Twitch streaming, OnlyFans, okay. and yeah. All right. What about you? My name is Lexi. I am 22 years old, and I'm a full-time sex worker. Okay. And when you say sex worker, what do you what do you mean? Um, I do content creating like on OnlyFans as well as stripping at strip clubs and I work as a legal courtesan in Nevada. A courtesan. A courtesan. legal prostitute. Okay. So is there have you ever been to a court? No. Like not not like uh, for criminal reasons, but like a have you ever you been know what in I a meant. No no no, but like courtesan, you know. I mean there's there's still kings out there that have a court. So you could, like the Philippines, do they have a king? Do you know? I don't think no. The Phil of There's the some kings out there. Chose. There's the king of Sweden, <laughs> king of, so like an actual, you know, court. Courtesan. Okay, all right, she's a courtesan, <laughs> folks. Okay, uh, what about a you? A legal prostitute, that's the term for it. Okay. Hi, my name's Pixie, I'm 24 years old, and I stream politics on Twitch. All right, welcome back. Um, I'm Essie, I'm 24. Um, I have two jobs. Um, my passion is social media management, and then I do OnlyFans as well. Hey there, I'm Olivia Bentley, and I am an intimacy coach. I am a legal sex worker, and I am an OnlyFans content creator. Did you say age? 46. 46, okay, got it. Hi, I'm Tara, I'm 22 years old and I'm an EEG technician and research assistant in the field of clinical neuroscience. I'm Lily, I'm 23 years old and I'm a couple of things. I'm a student at Belmont, I'm graduating soon and I'm a personal trainer and my goal is to be a worship artist. Gotta make money though. I am Candace Owens, I'm a wife, I'm a mother first and I also obviously have a political podcast, documentary filmmaker, uh, and I just create a ton of content regarding what's going on in the media landscape. Sweet. And you have tomorrow uh, a documentary yes. coming soon. Yes. Convicting I'm a murderer. Very excited um, about that. What, what time does it drop? Um, you can watch it live on X tomorrow night, so we're super excited about that. It also will be available on Daily Wire Plus. The first two episodes will be free. And yeah, it's jumping into kind of building on Netflix made Making a Murderer made it seem as if Stephen Avery was guilty. I don't know if you guys watched that. Um, it was very, everyone was obsessed with this idea that the justice system got it wrong. We kind of went in, re-examined the case, and created Convicting a Murderer, which is a 10-part series, first docu-series I think we've ever done at The Daily Wire. Um, extremely proud of it. It's apolitical, first and foremost, and um, it's, you know, a, it's been a labor of love, so I'm super excited to bring it to everybody and to change people's minds about what they thought they originally knew about the case. So, yeah. And you went, if I, you went boots on the ground in what is it, Manitowoc yeah. County? Yeah. Went to Stephen Avery's uh, the junkyard. The junkyard. Or, yeah, yep. yep. And yeah, just I like to get my hands dirty in terms mm. of really understanding what's going on and talking to people in the town, and seeing how they are impacted. Because for us, we scroll through our cell phones aimlessly and we comment on these cases, but real lives are impacted when something goes viral, and especially when something goes viral and produces the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Lives can be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And in this particular circumstance, you have a man and his nephew that are in prison, and they get love letters, and they've got fiancés, and adoring fans, and people writing songs about them. 
And that's all because Netflix was able to produce a docu-series and people believe that everything they watch is real. Mm. And so I'm really interested in dissecting uh, the deceptive media narrative in a bunch of different circumstances, just you know, what they're feeding people, what people think is the norm, what people think will bring them happiness, what people think is true. And so that's kind of been my shtick, so to speak, for the mm. last yeah, 10 years. Yeah, I, I remember uh, seeing Making a Murder when it came out, I think it was 2015? Correct. Uh, and then they came out with like a part two a couple years later. And basically, I, my understanding is your documentary is saying, nah, he did that shit. <laughs> that is that is about... And that's the most eloquent way to put it. I mean, there's obviously, <laughs> yeah. you go you, you would go into some details and you've reanalyzed the, yeah. the court footage and the documents and... Um, yeah, just showing people what they didn't want you to see, essentially. Yeah. Because when, when people decide on a narrative, the media gets fully behind it. Mm. It's a full court effort. It's supported by the usual mm. pundits and suspects. Alec Baldwin got behind the Stephen Avery innocent train. Nobody thought about the woman who actually was killed and murdered. Trevor Noah got behind it. You know, I, I kind of say anything that goes from Netflix to Alec Baldwin to Trevor Noah, you should immediately have your radar up and mm. just go, am I hearing the truth or am I listening to propaganda, and I'm fascinated by the impact of propaganda. I've been impacted by propaganda. You know, I'm obviously a person that started with liberal tendencies. I think everyone knows that part of my story. I was uh, left-leaning, so to speak, and now I'm super conservative. So it's right on par with everything that I do and everything that I've learned in my life about, you know, not just accepting what the media is trying to spoon feed you. Mm. What, one question. So. And I don't know if you want to save some of this for what's in the actual documentary, but uh, what would you say is like the most egregious thing making a murderer did that they just either something that was deceptive or something that was omitted? If there's one thing that was just the mo the biggest smoking gun or... Yeah, well, I think I can definitely tell you this because this will be within the next 24 hours, people will be able to see this. Um, but just skipping over who he was before he they believed was wrongly convicted of this murder. People tend to tell you who they are early on, mm. and a person that's torturing animals and cats and dogs and, you know, in a relationship that is, you know, with a minor who's crying and talking about that, you know, he just had a very long, thick packet of crimes that they decided not to mention mm. or to entirely diminish and make it seem like, oh, that was nothing, yeah, so what, he threw a cat in the fire and doused it in gasoline, the family pet. Mm. And not normal behavior, not something that we do when we have a couple of drinks. Um, yeah. And they, I think that was kind of the most egregious thing, really unpacking everything that they chose to leave out about okay. who he was. Can, can I make a pitch to you and to the Daily Wire for yes. the next docu documentary? Yeah. Can you guys look into the Tiger King? <laughs> <laughs> Could you guys maybe Matt, put Matt Walsh and Michael Knowles on oh my it? God, Matt Walsh and the Tiger I, King needs to happen. I'm, I'm fully behind you on this pitch. Yes. I will I bring that, this to the right people who can make the right decisions. Please, yeah. please. Can I get like a little special thanks in yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the... Matt uh, Walsh the free movie. and the Tiger and King the is irresistible. Yeah. Who, is that, do you think that'd be Matt Walsh would be the best yes. at the Daily Wire to tackle the... Yes. Okay. There's just something about the fact that Matt's a cat and you he always kind of gives you the impression that he doesn't want to be there and he just has to kind of lecture us all. Mm. Like he's like the classic dad. Right, right, And right. I just find him to be so funny, even when he's not trying to be funny. Okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Cool. Well, we're, we'll go around the table once more. So what is your, everybody's current relationship status? So are you single? Are you in a talking stage situationship, friends with benefits, relationship, married, polycule? Are you in, whatever, maybe. Uh, so if you're single, how long have you been single? And what's your longest relationship? Starting with you, go ahead. Um, I'm in a relationship. I have been for about a year and a half. And my longest relationship is two years. OK. I am single. And my longest relationship was probably about four years. How long have you been single? Um, I've been single for about, I want to say a year now. Okay. I'm single. Um, my longest relationship was like around three to four years, and I've been single since like February around there. Okay. Um, single. Um, I've been single for six years almost now. So. Since you're pretty much eighteen, you've been single. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Has, did you have like a high school boyfriend or anything like that? Or yeah, I think I dated two guys in high school, but it was very at the brief. same time. No, oh, separately. Not. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, gotcha. 
What about you? So I just got out of a relationship of six months with a federal agent, and I am single, ready to mingle. Federal agent? Yeah. CIA? Mm -hmm. FBI? Oh. Coast Guard? Oh, wait, that's not it. Never mind. <laughs> federal agent um, down in Texas. So, okay. yeah. Got it. Um, and Hold what's on. your longest relationship you've ever had? Um, I would say seven years. Seven years. Were, were you married or? I was. Okay, yeah. gotcha. All right. I'm currently single. My longest relationship was a little over a year, and I've been single for about one year. Um, I just started talking to somebody a couple weeks ago, but I guess I'm single, and my longest relationship was about three years. Wait, sorry, you, you just started talking to somebody, but you're... I'm, I've been single since February 2022, and so this is, it's really fresh. Okay, so I, I would still it. consider myself single. It's early on, okay. Yeah. Uh, Candice, I'm married. I'm married. <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> third child on the way. Third child will be here in 10 weeks. Oh, you're pregnant right now? <laughs> yes, are you kidding me? Very oh. pregnant right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how but it's far? good of you not to assume, right? Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. get into any trouble. <laughs> yeah. um, you're how far along? 30 weeks. 30, oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Any Rounding thoughts the on the, here. is it a, a boy? Girl? Thoughts on whether it's a boy? No, well, I have a biological well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. understanding that it's a boy. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean it that Let's way. Let's keep the thoughts out way. of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's definitively a boy. And uh, I have one boy already at home who's okay. two, and I have a little girl that's one. So we're on the back to, I've basically awesome. been pregnant for three years, so this is kind of my permanent state at the sure. moment. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's uh, yeah, Thank congrats, you, and uh, it's certainly impressive that you still uh, are you're working like crazy, and uh, yeah, well, otherwise you'll just drive yourself crazy. Yeah, <laughs> sweet. Um, and how long have you been married for? Four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. And you you said um, earlier on that you used to be kind of left leaning or pr super Definitely left leaning. Definitely left leaning. Okay. Yeah. Which like I think nose is free. Ring, pink no, hair. no, there's no, there's no old photos no, that are okay, going to surface okay, okay. of me in a pussy hat screaming about <laughs> aborting my children. I'm gotcha. safe in that regard. But um, it, I mean, I would say uh, I was definitely mm -hmm. on the left, held liberal perspectives, which I think is actually really normal when you're young. I think when you're young, you kind of associate liberalism with freedom, and you're like, well, I mean, even the word sounds better to be a liberal than to be a conservative. Mm. Um, so I. I think that that's why they have that quote that if you're not a liberal when you're young, you don't have a heart. If you're not a conservative when you're older, you don't have a brain. So it turns out I had a heart and I do have a brain. Mm. Uh, so now I'm a conservative. And, um, but I, I'm actually happy that I used to be a liberal because I, I think I understand why people gravitate toward it. And uh, it helps me better able to communicate to people because I can mm. understand where they're at. Yeah. Got it. And since uh, we... It, I feel like politics is so, sort of related to dating because obviously you want, I assume most people want to date and partner with someone who has shared values. So let's go around the table. What's everybody's politics? Would you consider yourself, let's say, liberal, moderate, conservative, apolitical? I mean, I guess I would have liberal stances or what people would call liberal stances. I don't like to call myself a liberal, but that would be where I guess Progressive, you would put me maybe? progressive would be a good word for it. Yeah. Okay. I guess liberal. Okay. More liberal. Yeah. I consider myself a progressive. <laughs> okay. I would say I'm is an independent where it's like in between, but kind of more so leaning right, just based off of how I was raised. How were you raised? Super conservative, super uh, religious. Okay. So, so maybe moderate politically. Mm -hmm. Maybe are there some things you're a bit more uh, progressive on? Other things you're a bit more yeah. conservative on? Yeah. Okay. What about you? So when I started out um, in my early twenties, I can relate to Candace. I was a little bit more um, on the left. Mm. And then as time has gone on and I've, I've worked real jobs and I've been out in the real world, I'm more to the right. I am independent and I don't like our two-party system. I think it's failed. Um, but I would say I, I lean more to the right. Okay. I was raised very liberal, but um, I found myself becoming more conservative, especially over the past three years. But I wouldn't fully call myself a conservative yet. I would just say I'm still centrist. 
good place to be. <laughs> um, same, I used to be pretty liberal, but I am very, very conservative. Oh, you already answered, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right, uh, so I have a first question here. So. I'm trying to, hold on, I'm seeing where I want to start here. Actually, wait, we had, we had one chat come in. I'll just read it while we have it. Goodness boy, thank you for being on the show, Candace, but the world is effed. Can already tell from the panel that your views will not change their outlook. Eh, never say never. Brian, you could be an amazing psyoper, just saying. I've had a couple accusations that this show is a psyop oh by the CIA, believe it or not. I've had a couple. So. You have any show that is an accusation that you get. Have you so. had? Oh my any? God, yeah. You each just fix. Candace Owens shows a psyop. <laughs> by who though? Who's who is psyoping? Okay, I don't know. Uh, but uh, goodest boy, thank you very much for that. And then we had a uh, we had a couple. Uh, we had this one. Seven deadly simps donated two hundred. Nick, can you boost the audio, a little? dear Candace? What are your thoughts on Proverbs twenty one nineteen? Better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and nagging wife. <laughs> also, 777 oh, no. decillion, 777, no, million, 777 octillion, 777 uh, He's just kind of joke. He's kind of memeing uh, because 777 the TTS voice will read anything. <laughs> um, but so, uh, th thank you, seven deadly sins. It's almost, I think it's, I think it's almost done. <laughs> Welcome to the whatever podcast. Um, <laughs> uh, so, your thoughts on Proverbs twenty one nineteen? Yeah, I like that we just jumped right into the Bible. That's awesome. Yeah, there you go. Um, I would say, that, yeah, you should aspire to marry the right person. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> Without question, you should aspire to marry the right person, and and, and part of that is making sure that when you're dating, mm. you're dating somebody of value and that also when you're considering looking for someone of value you also take a second to measure yourself and see if you are a person of value that's worthy of marrying because I think people forget that part mm. um, and I, that's almost the most important part got it so recently uh, a video went pretty viral on the internet and Candace you actually tweeted about it something about Shashuka I don't know if I'm <laughs> oh, saying that right um, so Nick if you can pull a video we're gonna just have the panel react to it and then before you go full screen on that so Matt Walsh posted it, and I saw this everywhere. I saw it yesterday. Uh, her life doesn't revolve around her family and kids, so instead it revolves around TV shows and pop stars. Worst of all, she's too stupid to realize how depressing this is. And then Candace uh, quote xed it, quote tweeted, I don't know anymore. I xed it. He, okay, quote xed it. This is what this is what was future wait. This is Let what was oh, okay. This is what a future. This is what a this is what future. future sorry. I, uh, future depression Xanax and wine combo nights alone looks like but hey the shashuka be amazing um, so <laughs> let's play the video Nick if you can go full screen on it and then we'll get the panel's reaction Xanax wine nights it's 10 45 a.m. on a Saturday. Time. I'm 29 and single, and I don't have kids yet. Here's what your Saturday morning looks like when you're single at 29 and you don't have a kid running around the house. I didn't rise from my bed until 10 15. Every time I thought, I should probably get up and do something, I thought, why? Nobody's making me. I'm not missing out on anything. I went to Beyonce last night, and I didn't get home until 1 a.m. And I danced and drank my little heart out, and I didn't pay a babysitter to watch my kids as I did that. And I woke up a tad hungover this morning, just probably why I was in bed for so long and I was just scrolling on my phone and I saw a picture of shakshuka and I thought you know what sounds really good maybe I'm gonna learn how to make shakshuka today because I have no plans and I don't have kids and I don't have a husband and I don't have errands to run I can go to the grocery store and learn how to make shakshuka so that's on my agenda today also on my agenda probably a rewatch of some Real Housewives of New York I'm also doing a rewatch of Normal People on Hulu which is really spicy and I highly recommend weirdly I'm into this documentary on Netflix about blue zone countries so I've got a pretty stacked day anyway I say all this to say whenever I'm hard on myself about why I'm not married and I don't have kids Kids and I should be further along at 29, almost 30. I wouldn't want to do anything else this Saturday. And I know that you can do all these things when you have kids and you're married, and I understand, but the effortlessness and ease of my life, just kind of focusing on myself and the shakshuk I want to make or the Beyonce concert I want to go to really pays off when I'm hard on myself for not being where society tells me I should be in life. 
I thought I thought it was gonna be really her going sha sha sha. So, um, what? Why do you guys think that this video went kind of crazy viral, and what what's the analysis here? I mean, it went crazy viral because Matt Walsh tweeted it. Let's be real. That would have just gone into the ethosphere on TikTok, and no one would have talked about it had he not picked that up and tweeted it. Well, was Matt? I don't know if Matt Walsh was the, like the first. He person. was. Oh, was yeah. he really? Okay, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that. But I guess my what's interesting to me is that this woman has actually even said, you know, she gives herself a hard time. She wants to be married. She wants to have children. So I don't think that it's right to demonize her and act like she's going to have a depressing life when she just hasn't found the right person because clearly she wants those things and she's trying to make herself feel better and other people in that community feel better about not being that far along. Because like you said, you wanted people to settle down with the right person take their time, figure out if that's the right person. So just because she's 29, you're saying that it's like too late for her and she's going to be doing Xanax and drinking wine at night no. because she hasn't reached that point I yet. I didn't say no, that. That's not what my tweet said. That's not my you tweet said the said. future. Yeah, I, right. because she's an, obviously a narcissist, right? <laughs> so like, Why the issue, would you first that? and foremost, let's not, let's not pretend this is one video that she made. It's her brand on TikTok. It's her brand on social media. She talks about these, these are this community known as dinks. We're happy and we're childless. She talks about how great it is to be childless. So she has developed a, she's a social media influencer that talks about childlessness. So let's not pretend this is one woman making a video who just said, oh, I had a great Saturday. There's absolutely no reason if you had a great Saturday at 29 years old and you learned to make shashuka and you slept in at 11 until 11.15 or 10.15, whatever she said, that you need to bring up children. There's absolutely no reason. You just say, here's what I did today. I laid in all day. I did this. I did that. The fact that she has to correlate it to saying, and this somehow makes me better than people that have children, is the problem. She, she started, she, she literally goes on to talk about not having children. It wasn't necessary in this video. So it's not like people are just shaming single women on the internet. You could go on right now and talk about what you've done all day, and there's no reason to bring up but, you know, having, a ch having a child or not. She's actually doing the shaming, and now we're trying to pretend that she's the victim. She's not. She has a brand where she talks about childlessness, and she talks about leaning into selfishness and all the things that are amazing about not having children. Again, this is not the first video that she's produced. So the reason why, and if you're a man watching this, don't marry this woman. She's basically telling you she's selfish. She's telling you she's a narcissist. Everything she says is about me, 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 me. Even if you're single, you don't have to make your whole day revolve around you. <laughs> you don't have to. You can get up in the morning. You can go help others. You can do other things. You can say, now that I have free time as a single woman, I can go dedicate time to the church. I can sing. I can do this. I can help people find God. That particular woman that you just looked at is a selfish bitch, and men should not should men should not marry her. That's my personal opinion. You wanted I, to come in really quick? Yes. I wanted to answer your question real quick as to you said why it went viral. I sure. think it went viral because it's like nowadays it's like it's relatable in our day and age you know what i mean like 22 23 years old i don't know how old this girl is but like 29 20, 29 or whatever but in my day and age like it's relatable to be like haha we don't got kids like quote you're unquote, 22 fuck them kids you know what i mean it's like i'm glad it's, you're admitting that. it's like that i'm glad like, you're admitting it's, that it's like a term that people use you know what i mean and it's like it's just relatable it's like that's why it gets so many views is what to answer your question i think that's really honest of you to say that you wanted to come in go yeah. them kids yeah no i said <laughs> i'm just gonna unquote, i was that's gonna, what they say you yeah but I mean? you're admitting that that so that she's start, starting the fight you're looking and at people that are moms that are trending like, i don't when, I, I'm not, when, when i'm with my kids right i don't post bi videos and say f them single chicks with no kids right she did the baiting okay and we responded that's it. I right. don't know. Like it's the a first thing I was going to say. Hold on. Let's just let Essie yeah. go ahead. Go the ahead. first thing I noticed about the video was that she was putting people with kids down. It'd be fine if she was just talking about how her day was and sporting it differently, but it seemed like almost immediately from the mm. beginning of the video that she was belittling people with kids, which I think is like the part of the problem. Mm. Pixie, go ahead. Yeah, no. I think this is like up to interpretation because personally, when I saw that video, my interpretation was like, oh, she's putting herself down because she's saying like, oh, you know, when I tell myself, why am I not further along in life? You know, it's okay because at least I'm enjoying these things. So I could definitely see, like, depending on how you're looking at it or if you have further context, why you would think she's putting kids down. But when I saw that video by itself, I was thinking, like, people are kind of going a little bit overboard in the sense that she says she's being harsh on herself. She doesn't have children. And these are just the things that have made her happy today. And I don't think that by itself without additional context is inherently wrong. Mm. 
Anybody? Tara, did you? Yeah. Did I say it right this time? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know the background of what other types of content and messaging she puts out, but just from that video alone, I don't think I it she ever to me I never got the impression she was shaming people that did that women that were married to kids. It felt like she felt bad that she wasn't already there and she was just trying to be optimistic about it. And so I think it, it sounded more like her content was about making women who are childless and not married yet and are approaching the end of their reproductive years to like look on the bright side but i really and i'm, I'm the i all my friends know i'm like so eager and ready for like marriage and kids but um i i really honestly just didn't get that impression from that video alone that it was she was in any way so when she was shame. talking about i got to go to a beyonce concert and i didn't have to pay for a babysitter you yeah, don't think that I was know, a little like, yeah, it's so she, yeah, she that was, was obviously selfish of her to say that yeah yeah, yeah but, she's being selfish and, she's and she was that. being rude and if, if it was flipped and a conservative woman with children said the opposite of that right. to single women it would blow up it would blow up and they right. would say how rude of you to, why are you even mentioning single women just say you had you had a good day with your kids that's yeah, fine if i said i, I woke like up went to the park with my kids did that okay chill why are you correlating it to children it doesn't you know it doesn't make any sense so and like i said she's produced more content so that the context is important she's leaned into this as a brand and as an influencer so you know then you're going to expect the people that influence people to have families to respond matt walsh being among them me being among them and i do would like to again warn men against marrying a woman who holds those sorts of perspectives because she's ultimately just selfish like i said you can have a day and you can be single you don't have to dedicate your whole day. it's me 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 narcissist me here's what i did for me it's just not a woman that you want to marry full stop for leaving apart leave leaving the kids totally separate from it i wouldn't marry a woman like that mm. go ahead you and all to i'm come saying in. is like it is it's sad but it's crazy that like it's a trend you know what i mean like it that's is. why they're getting so many views on TikTok or Instagram or whatever they're posting these things on. It's like, it's a trend. Yeah. And it, yeah, you know, it's crazy. Just a sh uh, show of hands, who here wants to have kids one day? More, yeah. It's my third, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, love. Besides Candace, does anyone here have kids? You got kids? How many? Yeah. You got? I have um, a son. He's 21. Okay, gotcha. He's gotcha. perfect. And I'm good. <laughs> okay. But Got one it. thing I notice, um, a trend, like, I agree that it's a trend. And, and she's doing that to brand herself and, and go viral and get a lot of attention and, and maybe monetize that. Um, when I talk with other girls and they're younger and I'll say, uh, are you married? Are you, are you planning on having children? Sometimes that's a hot button for them. And it's maybe perhaps, a, you know, these kind of trends are like the re it's a rebellious thing because sometimes it's expected for for people to to get married out of the gate and have children mm. and that kind of traditional lifestyle if it's an expectation that parents have that they put on on their children and younger generations aren't having it especially these days when it's so hard to i mean it's so expensive people are having to work a lot you know i mean that's just one thing i've noticed a little pushback on that question even when i ask it and and i love children gotcha and did i, I don't recall if you had a response to Candace or I mean I was just gonna say the opposite content does exist and I would say that it's more prevalent and usually there's more of it than there is the opposite and whatever community she wants to represent I think that somebody that is single and obviously like I said she closed out the video saying I know that women that are married and have children can do all of these things as well but this is what makes me feel better because I'm not that far along and I think if she's giving comfort and solace to women that want to be in that position and aren't quite there yet whether you took it that way or not I think that that's okay I don't think anything that she did in there was meant to be charitable it was all about her so I mean just a different interpretation different interpretation but i'm just happy that you were honest and admitted that it is becoming trendy to put it's down like, women like tea, yeah yeah and but by the way speaking to what you were saying about it being an act of rebellion i used to be a feminist if you had found me you're 22 right found me That's at right. 22 i would have probably had the same perspectives as you about family it is something different and you will realize that when it's someone that's 29 years old and saying that, it's not the same intention. It's not, I'm young, I'm free, I'm wild, and I think I'm gonna live forever. Mm -hmm. um, what she's doing is something different. And also, just recently today, actually, uh, Emily, Emma, Emma Roderick Joukowsky came out with a quote about, I think getting divorced before you're 30 is chic. That's something else. Mm -hmm. And that a chic. woman at 22, a woman at 29 saying something that is appropriate when you're at 21 or 22, it's a little different. And she knew what she was doing, it was intentional. And like I said, mm -hmm. if you look into her content, this is not some innocent woman that was posting just to boost herself up on the internet. Mm -hmm. She's trying to get clicks, she's trying to get views, right. and she got them, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, come back a little bit 
now to people's uh, relationship status, so, uh, or not even so much relationship status, but perhaps it's related. Um, so both of you do uh, court, courtship? Sex work? Courtship. Courtesan. Courtesan. That's um, an old Sex fashioned work. historical term. Okay. Back in the day, courtesans were able to um, own property, whereas the Little Miss didn't have that ability the way the laws mm. were written back in the day of ancient years. Um, like the wife was toddlerized. And, and then the courtesans were able to go and attend the meetings with the politicians and the business owners and actually state their case and be influential. But, okay, so I'm just trying to differentiate here because courtesan, that's, when it's, I think of it, I think of people who are in the court, typically, there's a the kingdom, <laughs> yeah. there's a kingdom, there's a monarch, yeah. mm -hmm. and there's, you know, maybe some of them are are dukes maybe or it's from that there's era but viceroys yeah. there's some viceroys in there <laughs> yeah. there's a couple of uh <laughs> well, i don't know some other terms uh, lords, yeah. Lord, yeah. lords <laughs> ladies uh, yes. but okay so uh you guys work in nevada is that correct in uh what's it what's the place that you guys work at uh um, there's different brothels. The Bunny Ranch, um, I've been at the Bunny Ranch. We've both been there. Uh, we both worked at the world famous Mustang. Okay. Um, Those are more normal. Oh, so you guys both don't work there, or you don't work there anymore. Do you still work at the, what is it called, the Bunny Ranch? Or? So, hold on. We're independent contractors. So Take your, take your time. So, <laughs> like, when, when we're on tour, we contract ourselves out, you know, with, with whomever. Okay. So that might change. Sure. So a uh, couple questions here. So um, I don't know, maybe it's changed throughout the course of your life, but how many, maybe you see men, maybe you see women, how many per day or per week, uh, do you call them clients? What do you call them? Tricks? Clients, what friends. No, not tricks. Marks? <laughs> no. No? Okay. I don't know. I don't know the terminology. I'm not I mean, in the world. Some, some providers may, but they're not okay. maybe the, the most respectful. I, okay. I like to deem them friends as soon as I sure. get to know them. And, gotcha. um, and we are like friends. Sometimes we're like married couples. But um, yeah. it can be, um, it depends, anywhere from like two to three a day. That's a lot. Two, um, but maybe okay. five a week. Okay. Uh, what about you? Um, so... Anywhere between two to three. Oh, sorry. It's fine. Anywhere between two to three. Okay. Um, and sometimes four or five, depending per, on. Sure. Per day. Yes. Do you know what the most is in one day? Uh, like, was there one day? It this? always fluctuates. Okay. Is there ever like a ten, a dozen? A I don't. Yes. There, I mean, Baker's yeah. Dozen? It can. It. Okay can happen sure. I don't personally do that. when uh, coming off the heels of um, Dennis Hoff's cat house there were I what? mean oh, ten. Oh, Nick 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 hide 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 In okay cool. okay we're fine we're fine okay all right good <laughs> all right welcome to the whatever podcast uh, always something um where were we? I was mentioning um, after Dennis Hoff did his famous show, um, Cat House on HBO, he drummed up a ton of uh, mainstream media. He got one of the girls on, on Oprah and whatnot. There were so many people coming in. Those mm. were the days where maybe you'd be seeing like 10 clients, 12 clients in a day. Okay, and that gotcha. Was, that was a lot. Gotcha. And for, for you two, has being involved in prostitution, has it had any impact when it comes to your uh, romantic prospects? Yeah, they've, I've got to be able to be, I've got to be able to be myself and fully disclose and I need that person to accept me for who I am, bottom line. Um, I have had no issues doing, uh, being a legal prostitute. Um, I've had no issues being a legal prostitute just because I haven't been dating anybody um, within this time for that year. Mm -hmm. uh, as for everything else, um, it's hard dating. Mm. Um, I've ran into a lot of insecure men. Typically, those are the ones that can't handle me doing what I do for work. And um, well, Just a point of clarification. So 
you've run into a lot of insecure men and, and are they insecure because they don't want to date you because you are currently active as a prostitute? No, I'm saying I've never dated a guy while I was uh, working at the brothels mm -hmm. at the Bunny Ranch or the Mustang Ranch. But I've been dating guys like between me doing camming and sure. dancing. So that's what I'm talking about. But um, you, you mentioned insecure men. What, what, make, what specifically are they doing that makes them insecure? Is it because they're, they're insecure about your work? Yes, like uh, I've had exes in the past that would cry about me going to work to dance at the strip club. Mm, okay. um, I've had guys try to control like what I wear and uh, say that I can't work at strip clubs or do OnlyFans or whatever. Um, is it, oh, sorry, was there more? No, and that's... Okay, is it because they're insecure or is that just them having boundaries and standards? I feel like that's... I mean, you knew what I was doing before you met me right so all of them knew exactly what i was doing before they met me which brings it to yeah if you have a problem with what i do before you meet me maybe don't get involved with me sure i'm very open i'm very honest person um you knew what i was doing before you met me if you don't like it there's the door nobody's making you stay I think, too, um, gentlemen love the idea of dating mm -hmm. us. And then once we go to do it, then it's not really realistic. Right. It's almost like fetish. fetish. A fetish. Like, right. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's so hot. I have a girlfriend that does this, that, and the other. And then when they're really at home and I'm, like, on OnlyFans or on a, cli on a call with a client or whatever, they're like, no, this is weird. Mm. This is weird. You know what I mean? And that, I think it's an insecurity, yes, because mm. you knew where I was coming from, you knew what I was doing, and you weren't okay with it, then you should have, have made that a point. Well, I, I mean, I suppose you have a point that, I mean, if they knew going in mm -hmm. that you this is what you do for work, you're a stripper, or you're right. doing OnlyFans, or you're doing sex work, then I think it's a a little bit of a stretch that all of a sudden a couple of weeks or months into a relationship then they start changing up but I think to dif differentiate the conversation a little bit for example like let's say and I don't know if you mentioned this when it comes to like posting perhaps revealing photos online not intended for commercial like the they're just on Instagram they're but they're not monetizing it they're not content creators or like for example if they go to the bar club party a lot um, would you consider it insecure if a guy, maybe three months into a, a relationship, at that point he started having issues with some with uh, with you or with another girl? Hey, he starts saying, "Hey, I don't, I don't want you to go in the clubs and bars anymore." And, I and don't he want already you to... knew. You're saying he already knew this? Well, like I assume he knew. Yeah. So, if he already knew, then. Well. I, I guess my framing is prior to dating, he had no problem with you or with another girl engaging in what mm -hmm. he considered to be single behavior at the time. But once you or whoever it is started dating, he wanted his partner to act in a way that he thought was more consistent with being in a relationship. So perhaps it's okay to go out to me personally. I, even if I'm single, I'm not really interested in going to bars, clubs, and I don't post revealing photos online. But. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like that men don't do that too much. I mean, there's certainly men that post like whatever. Anyways, um, but once you get into the relationship, there's expectations that certain things change. Well, with the sex worker. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm just differentiating when it comes to like posting, revealing photos. If it's not for your work, uh, then yeah, or like going I can to bars I, and clubs. I can separate my work identity sure. from my personal life. Go ahead. You wanted to come in. I think, I mean, if we're talking to somebody that's not a sex worker and is posting revealing photos, I think that that's something that you talk about before getting to, into an, a relationship with somebody. Because then if you're talking, you know, and a guy is like, you know, my expectations for my girlfriend are X, Y, Z. I don't like these kind of revealing photos for my girlfriend. I don't like her, like you going out all the time. And then I think from then on, that's when you decide whether to make a relationship serious or not. Because if she doesn't want to restrict where she's going or what she's doing or the type of photo she's posting for him, then that's her decision. But I don't think that it's wrong for a partner to ask her, you know, hey, if we're in a relationship, this is what I expect. And then, you know, she makes the decision, yes, I will do those things or no. But do you, do you think that 
so early on, like say on the first date or second date, that there's enough of a relationship established for a guy to have enough, I don't know if leverage is the right word, but <laughs> like enough pull or influence to be like, hey, listen, I don't want you doing this anymore. You Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. But that's, I mean, she just change. said that you should early on, you should early say, on, I not don't... date number one. Date not number date one. number oh, one, not okay, date number okay, two. Okay. That is Maybe wild. date number three, I mean, okay, four. Wait, wait, like, there's, okay. I think there's two things Go ahead, go, going on here. I think um, you can date someone and then as a relationship evolves and changes, some things that you thought you were comfortable with, you're like, hey, I'm not really comfortable with this anymore. Yeah, I, I think that. that's reasonable. Um, but I think that's very distinct than going into a relationship thinking, oh, I don't like the fact that she posts this types of photos. I'm going to make her stop. You know, I'm going to change her, basically. Because mm -hmm. you're setting up, I think, everyone for disappointment. Mm -hmm. You're setting up yourself, her. There's a difference between going into something, having feelings change, talking from there, and intentionally trying to change before you even date, really. I have a question. Yeah. If you ever fell in love with somebody, would you be willing to delete all of your stuff if they asked you? Would I be... Me? Yes. Oh. Okay. If you, as a sex worker and everything that you do, if you fell in love and you found someone and they asked you to right. stop. So with that being said, I am currently single because of what I do for work. I am very much so busy doing my work and I'm full throttle, like wanting to make money and capitalize off of this industry to the best of my ability and make it to the point where I can retire. And then it's like, also making this much money and doing what I do for work, it puts me in a position to be able to meet the p type of guys that I want to meet, right? Um, the higher end type of guys. And maybe later on down the line, not any time yet, uh, I would be open to it if I find everything happens for a reason, you know, never say never, but like if I found Prince Charming or something one day and he didn't want me doing this anymore like the or i wouldn't be doing this anyways i want to retire from it at one point and then yeah eventually maybe and when you say high-end men what do you mean by that like like high value men yes high value. or men with a lot of money high value mm. okay i have a question for you two here uh so both of you do only fans having done only fans continuing to do only fans has it had any negative impacts on your dating prospects? Does it make it harder to date? Has it been maybe non-issue at all? Some guys like it. I've never had an issue with it, dating-wise. No one has ever, because I'm very upfront too. You know, first date, if this is what I do, if you don't like it, this is how I make my money. Unless you're gonna pay me the same amount of money I'm making, then I'm not gonna stop supporting myself. Um, but yeah, I never really ran into issues. But again, I don't do full pornographic content or anything like that. So it probably is a little bit different for somebody on OnlyFans that does do that type of content. Um, but I personally have never ran into an issue. My boyfriend at first was, you know, I told him and he was like, okay, well, if I'm going to date you, I have to be okay with this. And that was that. And it's never been mm -hmm. an issue. Sorry. Um, sorry, I was asking a question. Yeah. What kind of content do you do on OnlyFans? Uh, mainly topless content. Okay. So, and you currently have a boyfriend? Yes, I do. Okay. Just that's the extent of it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Essie? Um, I've also never had an issue mm -hmm. um, in my dating life. I don't date that often, though. But, right, because uh, you've been single for six years. Yeah. So. But, but it might not necessarily be related to that you're now doing OnlyFans. Yeah. I also don't do um, nudes on OnlyFans, so it's just like lingerie content. Oh, um, okay. So I think that right. also maybe helps, because I, I, so, sure. yeah. Okay, um, question here for Candice. So um, what are your thoughts on OnlyFans, uh, sex work, and do you believe that uh, a woman doing OnlyFans or porn might have an impact on her future romantic prospects? Uh, and if so, how and why? I can repeat any, that was yeah. a lot, so let no, me know no, if you need me to repeat fine. anything. Um, I, I talk about this extensively on my show. I mean, the truth is that if you are going to engage in sex work, you are going to probably make a lot of money, especially if you're young. Um, you're on a very tight rope as you get older. Your value goes down, and men are going to want women that are younger and available to them. Um, I'm talking about in terms of just making the person who will subscribe to your OnlyFans page. You know, obviously, women, it's you're, you're declining as you age, as 
And um, the truth is, is that high value men don't want to date women that are sex workers or even women that aren't sex workers and lean into the whole talking about how sexy and are freely, are freely available on the internet for other men to see. What we're talking about is biological proclivity. Um, what men are doing when they first say, uh, ah, it sounds amazing to date a stripper or to date a prostitute or to date a sex worker, is there, there's this instinct to have sex. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to have sex all the time. But then when they realize that actually a form of wanting to be in a relationship is feeling that there's a mystery to a woman, that there's something that's yours, there's something that's sacred, there's something that's powerful and mm -hmm. beautiful that just you share. And when they realize that they have to share that with other men, it completely diminishes the man. Um, a recent cultural example of that, obviously, is what's happening with Nina Agdahl. Uh, she's not a sex worker by any means. So just, she just kind of said some sexy things on the internet um, about wanting cock and look at what... <laughs> I mean, was not expecting that from Candace. <laughs> I'm just I'm quoting her directly, so this is purely academic. <laughs> purely um, academic. Purely <laughs> academic. And look at what happened. You know, now Logan has become the la laughing stock of other men as they piece together everything yeah. that she's ever said that's overtly sexual. And again, mm. she's not a sex worker, but mm -hmm. what happened is her value just completely plummeted because uh, you know there this thing that men and me need to feel. Um, and I don't want to say possession in a way that sounds bad because it's not bad. It's actually really beautiful. Um, and I'm lucky and fortunate that I get to experience that in my marriage, you know, and, and it's it's something that women should strive toward. Women that make those exchanges in their youth, I think that's sad. And I do feel bad for me to Agdal is because she said a lot of those statements when she was really young. She's probably your age. <laughs> um, and she, she had a camera and she said it and it lives forever. Right. And now every man that she dates is going to say Dylan Danis has made her e available to everyone. And it's it's I, I hope things work out between her and Logan. But if you don't think that that's going to impact Logan or that's not actively impacting him as a man, it is. Um, so with women, it's a trade-off. First thing you said was, I make money. This is about money. It's about money. But when it comes down to marrying these women, men, men just don't oh, want and it. And that's exactly why I said that in this industry, I'm single until mm -hmm. I retire. But I it don't, will, But it I, will still matter. I don't plan on doing this or getting married or finding the love of my life until I retire, yeah. like truthfully. And, and then, then after I hope that, that you see what happens to Nina Agdahl. No, no, no. And then after that, I will be honest and truthful with the person that I will be getting married to or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it'll be up to him to accept that, right? So, and, I, and, and that I'm would just be saying that men's decision. natural proclivity is to not accept that because it brings them shame. Um, men are biologically okay. proud creatures. I understand, and but not everybody wait, on, can be on, like No, I know. I'm, I'm not. At, I'm just telling you what is happening and why people are I'm just talking about cultural events and the Agdahl thing. And if you look at people like Emily Rajkowski, she's obviously hot. <laughs> um, but this is a woman who's now trying to make divorce chic. And I think that the understanding is in Hollywood is, you know, sleep with her and move on. She's not marriage material. Um, her husband, when he had her, cheated on her because they didn't have that thing. She was, I feel like I've, I've slept with the girl. I've seen her naked so many times, right? So there's nothing special about Sebastian Bear marrying her because we've all seen her naked. There's nothing sacred in that relationship. And uh, I'm just speaking on telling you, you know, this is why women struggle to get married when they've made themselves available on OnlyFans because other men don't want to share. They don't want to share their wife. They maybe will share their girlfriend. They might think it's fun to date a stripper for a little bit. They might think, oh, this means I'm going to have sex 12 times a day. But then when it gets down to just their biological instinct, it's it's actually quite embarrassing for them as a man because they can look up your girl and here she is, you know? So that's what I think is happening. Yeah, I'm um I'm just curious about your opinion on this because I've seen like a couple of people in like red pill spaces, like Tate's or people similar to that, talking about how they should marry a young woman. Would you agree or disagree that that might not be the most like rational course of action? To, to marry a young woman? What do you mean by yes. that? That I hear a lot of men talk about how a woman inherently loses value as she gets older. And that's why that they should seek out young women. Mm. Um, well, I live in the South and a lot of people get married young and I think it's really beautiful and wonderful. They're, they preserve this sort of innocence. I have people that work for me that want to get married at 22. They drop out of school. So I don't think there's anything wrong with marrying when you're young. Um, I'd have to see the full context of what they're talking about because I do think obviously 
the longer you wait, and especially in this society that's creating the simulation that sexuality equates to freedom when it doesn't, um, that what he might be suggesting is that the longer a woman runs free, the more partners that she's gathering and her, her worth is being diminished. And I think that there is some veracity to that. Um, but you know, if it's said in a way that sounds a little crass, like seek out younger women because they're not as used, and I can see why people would be offended by it, but there, that might be underpinned by a little bit of logic. So I'd have to see the, the clip in its entirety. Yeah, the reason why I'm asking is because in general, I think um, men do have a biological procl proclivity. I can't pronounce that proclivity. word. Proclivity. <laughs> proclivity. Um, you know, to seek out like youth and beauty. But I also think when it comes to like settle down, um, you want a mother who's going to be responsible and good towards her children. Mm -hmm. So I think the idea that like men seek out beauty is true, but mm -hmm. I also think men seek out a level of like responsibility and maturity that only comes with age. Can so I was just curious because of the other stuff I've heard from and, people. And also it's like they, sex is just sex. Like it's just sex. Huh? And <laughs> just se when you, you have a partner, you, you have an emotional connection with yeah. them. And so, like, the guy on your last podcast, the, he was on here a few days ago. He was saying how, like, men, for men, sex is just sex. But, like, spending time with a woman and, like, buying her things and, like, going on trips with her is, like, different than having sex with just random people. And that's why they were, like, in an open uh, relationship or whatever. Can I just have you scoot your mic that way a little bit? Yeah, perfect. I mean, but I yeah. definitely wouldn't say that, like, swapping DNA is, like, just sex. I mean, a man leaves a piece of himself inside of you. But, man, that's the way they think. And, like, for women, we get attached to them emotionally right. having sex with them. Which but is why they get it's, attached. it's more of a... When women have a lot of partners, it's it is different. It's it's it is worse in a way, and people don't want to admit that. But because we are more emotional, there is an attachment. It isn't just sex for women. Um, you know, I think women are damaged by those relationships. Um, women like to think because of the social simulation that oh, it can just be sex. It's whatever non-committal the only people that benefit from that lie are men <laughs> you know it it is not great to have sex and have a man not call you back it doesn't feel good it doesn't matter if a buzzfeed article says it does i had a wonderful weekend and this is why i had sex and didn't worry about it you feel used and especially i would say if you're not a sex worker and you're you just a man does that and never calls you back and you don't even have money to show for and, it i think it diminishes your your self-worth even more than your worth to a man the reason why I say sex is sex is because in our line of work, we see it as transactional, mm -hmm. right? Especially when we're working. And then at the end of the day, they go home to their wives or whatever, right? And it's like emotionally, you're emotionally being there for them and taking care of them and doing all this, that, or the other. So then sex clearly isn't just sex. It's also emotional. It can be, yes. It can be, yes. But I was saying, ac according to the guy that he had on the last podcast, he said that for men, um, sex is just sex. Well, and that I kind of, sorry, I, I disagree with the idea that sex doesn't harm, or casual sex wouldn't harm a man or does harm women, or that sex is just sex. I think a lot of people tell themselves that, but I think it can like lead to a lifestyle of just like pure hedonism, whether you're like a man or a woman, mm -hmm. and that can be like dangerous because then you're losing you know sight of other things that you value or other aspects of life so i don't really think like for i think for some people that can be true but i think for the majority of people like there's a reason why a lot of people are only into monogamy or why that's been like the norm for a lot of cultures and i think most people are a little bit hardwired to kind of seek out those intimate relationships and i'm not saying it's impossible i'm like i'm just saying i think that's how most people are where casual sex so, can be yeah harmful. and i think it can definitely be harmful for men i want to be clear I, i'm saying that it's different for men and it's different for women, but I don't agree with the statement sex is sex. It's just sex at all. And it's natural to be like attracted to a lot of different people. You know what I mean? So it's like... But that comes with self-control. I think well, attraction yeah. is one thing and acting on those needs or wants by sleeping with multiple people to... I just, I don't understand that. Did you want to come in? <laughs> On, on I this. guess I don't. What do you mean? Like well, I don't not, understand not, why. Not in would response you... to her, but okay. just the in general. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily ag agree with the idea that sex is just sex. When I was younger, I definitely had a lot more, you know, like casual sexual relationships, not one night stands or anything by that measure, more like situationship. Um, and as I got older, you know, 
my views on it kind of changed and you know you do feel differently when like you were saying it doesn't feel good to hook up with somebody and not have them call you back so I actually was celibate for about two years before I met my partner um, doing OnlyFans and everything else your I current partner yes okay um, I wasn't sleeping with anybody I like stuck to it very hard because I just didn't really like the feeling of sleeping with somebody and then getting an emotional attachment to them mm. so I I think that certain people because everybody is different I don't think that it's that black and white um, but I think to some people and to some women and to some men casual sex really is just sex whether they're leaving DNA or not I think that there are people that do actually feel that way because I've met women that are like that but for me it is not that simple and I don't think that it's that simple for most women can I raise a possibility just because it's something that I've sort of seen um, so I I do think it's possible that for some people, sex may be detached from romantic emotions with that person, but I do think there may always still be an underlining part, an underlining psychological part there of at least an ego boost, at least some sort of like grab for validation, some sort of grab for emotional intimacy, even if you're telling yourself, I'm just doing this because having casual sex empowering and sex is just sex I think even in most of the cases where that's where people genuinely believe they're just having sex because it's sex if they ask themselves a little further why am I really doing this is it just for is it perhaps just you know to placate my ego or for some sort of male validation or for some sort of like intimacy or connection because I maybe I'm not getting it romantically otherwise um in more in a more like serious relationship I am um I would also press for that as a possibility, even in those cases of people who genuinely do think for themselves that it is sex is just sex. Well, I mean, I guess we can look to the people that do it professionally. I mean, do you feel that there's some underlying male validation in your work or no? I find it very meaningful. I find it meaningful when couples come in and they want to work on something. They're working on a goal. Maybe he's got a mental block and we're working on that. Um, the gentleman that comes in that's having issues with erectile dysfunction mm -hmm. and he's trying to troubleshoot that and we and we actually create success for him um, it's it's meaningful to me wait just one point of clarification so you're, you're a sex therapist as, as yeah. sex workers we're basically sex I mean therapists. I, I, no, I don't but, have oh, a okay. counseling degree I have, I have a master's degree I mean, in actually, education we have I'm an article you recently kind of went viral uh, Nick can you pull up the article like I think New York Post. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, New York crazy. Post. I'm a sex therapist. <laughs> yes. I sleep with clients to save wow. marriages. Oh my gosh! I didn't <laughs> they went you crazy. Were this person. I did see. They went crazy. Did you you reacted to this or I you saw? You almost saw it? did, but I'm here. You're here now. Yeah. So. Perfect. Uh, can you, Nick, can you pull up the article really quick? Yeah. One more. Uh, sex therapist Olivia Bentley. Wait, wait. Nick takes a hands-on approach with her clients by sleeping with them. I've saved marriages, the Boise, Idaho native told Kennedy News, calling her, li her work life-changing. I get physically involved with the majority of the people I see. I think that's part of the appeal. The veteran sex worker who spent 15 years in the industry claims that women have asked her to demonstrate sex acts on their husbands, while some wives grant their eager hubbies a hall pass to pay Bentley a visit. Um, Good times. Yeah. Is that pretty accurate? I mean, so yeah. you so you save marriages by having sex with the husband? Well, I think the, the tabloids went a little crazy. Oh, they, with, okay, with the okay, whole, okay. You know, but... New York Post is known <laughs> to... Uh, yeah. You know, okay. Uh, they really, you know, went wild with it. But um, I do help a lot of couples that come mm. in. Um, one right now is asking me to, to lend a hand and he's more of a beta and she'd like him to be more of an alpha and she wants mm. me to work with him on on being more just outwardly in control and aggressive in the bedroom things like that um okay. there's there's a lot of different psychological needs and reasons why people would want to come and work with professional sex worker sure uh candace it sounded like seemed like maybe you had something i think on it's this. the most outrageous thing i've ever heard <laughs> I, I, it, it's so in the realm of like dragons and mystic, mythical creatures that it's mythological creatures that it's, it's hard to respond to the idea that she's saving marriages. Um, it's just there. You're in disbelief. Uh, I'm, I'm actually here's in another utter disbelief that she's saving marriages. I, here's another example. Sure. 
Okay. So like, and this has been, there's multiple um, mm. clients that do this, where the wife will not have sex anymore. She right. went and said, look, I, um, you know, during the, when they were courting each other, she was down for sex. She was a sexual person. She was all about it. Then let's fast forward, they're married. We're married now, contract solidified. I don't want to have sex anymore. Mm. Ooh, oral sex is gross. Oh, that's demeaning if you're asking me to do that. So you're not saving marriages, you're helping people to keep up a farce that they are in a marriage. Because at the very moment that you let someone else into your marriage, it's no longer a marriage. No. Yeah. And, and these guys women will come in so to guys, say women guys, have turned around and said, I will allow you to see a professional. So they are not so, in a marriage. That's the well, point. Well, they're as soon married. As you, as soon as or you some of their wives out, are like dying from cancer and this, that, and the other. And if I'm dying from cancer even, and, and my husband goes to sleep with somebody, else, somebody I, I will, swear well, to God. Like their wives, their wives are, wives are guys, the ones the that come. Hold on, just one at a time, please. Go. Um, Candace, were you? I just would like to make the point that at the very moment that you loan your spouse out, especially if you're dying of cancer so that they can get, you know, get off, you're no longer in a marriage. So mm. it's just a farce. It's like when you, it's a comical, you're pretending for people that you're in a marriage, that you're in a loving relationship. That's not what a marriage is. Mm. So to say that I help marriages, no, you help destroy marriages and they can go out and say that we're still married because what we've done is we've essentially said, you take care of this aspect of the marriage. It's like saying, you raise the kids, you have sex with him. This isn't a marriage. It's, it's well, the whole thing is fake, right? What do you go think ahead. that they should I'll bring do? You in next. What so do you think that they- th They should work on their marriage Together, the union between a husband and a wife should work on their marriage together to fix it. You don't bring out an outside person to sleep with your husband or your wife. But if she's saying, I'm not down for sex. Then she I might be down for a divorce. I want to outsource the sex. What if she's going to die from go cancer and, and, second, and she second, wanted second. him and she allowed him to do that because he needed to get off some way or shape while he was di While she was dying of cancer, one of the last things on her mind was... Let this is a sure. real life this is a real well, life um this to. is a real life uh yeah this was a real i'm asking you and is that what he told you this yeah so that his wife that's dying of cancer wanted him to come have sex with you not with me one of like this is from what i've heard yes somebody told you right. that that this that as a dying wish my, yes. my dying so wife how would said, you want to go have sex with the prostitute i saw it on tiktok brothel. I'm just gonna call bullshit on that altogether. No, I just don't because think it does that you're happen. Of cancer, it happens. Going through leukemia. People will <laughs> literally bring <laughs> their guys here. Uh, please okay. bring them on okay. the podcast. Uh, I just want to uh, say so that it's okay, absurd it's, scenario I've ever heard in my life. There, there's a lot of crazy shit. shit there's been marriage counseling brothels. where they can take you Many through sex things. therapy where you don't have to sleep with somebody else. Yep. If it's about a woman not wanting to have sex anymore, what's the underlying reason? Are her hormones messed up yeah. so she's not wanting to be sexually active? Mm -hmm. Is oh, there not enough this. foreplay when they're having sex? Like, there's other avenues you can take for yeah, sex like therapy. There's normal <laughs> couples counseling. Yes, real couples counseling. Like regular. Where you try to solve the problem and you release yeah. it and you don't just source it out to a prostitute. Go ahead. The cancer thing is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's just the most absurd. The cancer thing is he lied. crazy. He lied. But, but yeah, outside of that, lied. I don't think that it's up to any of us what constitutes a marriage because every relationship is different. Well, so the if Bible. A, if yeah. a husband, okay, but His words have not, meaning. But not, not everyone is religious. Not everybody. Well, wait, hold on. Is like that saying, a cross it, necklace? It doesn't constitute, yeah, like, what do you, wait, yeah. I'm, okay, sure? really quick. Not everybody's since religious. Since we're talking about religion really quick. Okay, you have a cross necklace, but then your shirt says, made in hell. Yes, it does. I'm a little confused. Ironic, Can you? So. Uh, I mean, the, I'm a little confused. The stone is red, so it matched. You know. But why are you the, wearing a cross you on your neck? Are color coordinating with your neck? Because I don't see a cross as religious. So okay. Wait. I just like you don't see a marriage as religious. So, see, these I don't think don't, that a marriage has meaning, which is why it's like people are out of stage. People are like, "What is a woman?" Because they just go, "Well, we're going to oh. call it a marriage, but we're going to sleep with other people. We're going to bring in prostitutes. We're going to outsource raising the kids. Where we're never going to have kids. You're calling it a family. It's not a family. And this is what it is. They just the words have no meaning, right? I'm wearing the cross. Why? I don't know. I don't. I don't think of it as religious. Okay. Well, Jesus Christ died on the cross. You think that? That's what you think. Wait, it's That's been what proven. you think. So why are you proven. wearing the cross? Sex because I think it's cute. Yeah. I think that the design wait, is cute. Yeah. Better uh, wait, 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 really quick. I grew up Hold Catholic. I was religious, and I'm not anymore. I don't have to believe in what you believe, and I can say that if I didn't say you had to believe. I asked you a question. But I you're said, why are you wearing the cross? Okay, and you're saying that the, relig the religious aspect of marriage is the only thing that matters. It's not, because people don't follow what you believe. Yeah. Okay, I asked you why you're wearing the cross, and you said because you thought it was cute. Yeah, I'm and glad I did. we got an answer. She's wearing the cross around her neck because she thinks it's cute. I do. Would I'm you not religious. also wear like a Star of David? 
It's cute. Well, well like, because if it was cute, <laughs> would you wear well, okay. it? Well, I just I mean like I'm asking that going. because I wonder. Well, like I my have, guess is that you would think that you talk. You, maybe you wouldn't wear a Star of David because you're like, oh, this is maybe like disrespectful to people who are. Are you making Jewish. the argument? Maybe I mean. No, I'm. I'm. I'm just the secular. It's a very, it's a very here, good question. I, I, I'm just saying. Devil's advocate here. Secular argument. You, someone might just say that the cross is just maybe. It maybe it's more aesthetically. Pleasing. pleasing even for an atheist i don't know sure but liberals okay. are all about what? like having you respect wear, like, a yarmulke and tolerance. Like, so i'm just like wondering if you i'm think asking it's, <laughs> if you wore, if, would you wear a yarmulke <laughs> yeah, yeah, i think those are very oh are you talking things. like blasphemy yeah, i'm saying I'm, from the yar- I'm, yarmulke i'm just i mean asking, i was raised catholic and i that's just would not you wear that a I believe yarmulke anymore. if you thought it was cute? no i wouldn't wear, i mean a yarmulke is completely different than a cross that's been adapted to you can buy a cross necklace anywhere there is there's symbols of a religion. the argument the argument of why it's different basically would come down to like how catholicism has been practiced versus judaism in the sense that like catholics did use the cross symbol tried to emplace like an indigenous populations tried to spread it as much as possible and that's why in modern day a lot of people think that's like more okay because it was meant to be popularized it was meant to be a symbol that the masses should look up to and should see in general versus jewish symbols okay i would argue didn't go through that i think we're kind of derailing a little bit yeah. you wanted to come okay. in go ahead. yes so back to the interesting brothel stories i wanted to say uh we do actually have men coming in oh. with their parents yeah this actually and their happened wives. wait so I had a time where a guy came in with both his parents all the way from England to come to the Mustang Ranch because he wanted to lose his virginity. Wait, is this and really his where we left parents, off? I'm, <laughs> not, I'm, not, I'm just not following and his parents the relationship paid our previous. for him to have sex with legal prostitutes. Haram. I want your stance on that because and, what's your stance on that? Would, to, and if I may, and wait, uh, nowadays, can I just say like that we, for me, we I enjoyed the experience. Call it sex workers, not prostitutes. Oh, yeah, wait, well, I'm she sorry. Said, wait, she wait, said wait, prostitute. Yeah, it's because okay. they keep. Wait, did it's I? It's because they keep. Yeah, wait, just, yeah. You said prostitutes beginning of the show. Yes, there prostitutes a little bit more. Question: Is it like a? Well, she said that at the beginning of the show. Legal prostitutes. She said legal prostitutes. Is is pro? I don't want to offend anybody as prostitute at like a. Offensive. It's old school. It's still on the books, like on Nevada's books. But like the the, the hipper the, the hipper way, way to say it is sex worker. But the, here's the days. thing with sex workers. Personally, that can me. You can call me a legal prostitute. Yeah, she's I got you. Cool. Um, but the the thing with the term sex worker is that is such a broad. It, it includes strippers. It includes women who take uh, lingerie photos who aren't naked. Um, wait, question. Steward, is stewardess okay? Because you're a flight attendant, so I'm just curious. It's not the term that we Would prefer. you be offended if someone referred to you as a stewardess? No, you get any older... older older people do all the time. Doesn't I, doesn't bother you? No. Okay, all right. Just curious. Just wanted to m- make sure since we're... Yeah, okay. it's, um, it's not a big deal. Earlier it was like talked about like how, you know, sleeping or letting your husband or wife sleep with someone else is like irresponsible or it's not a marriage anymore. Like I'd be kind of curious of what you believe a responsible marriage is like or... I understand that you have a religious view on marriage, but when I think about marriage, I think like I could see somebody saying they're married if it's like completely romantic, like you're not allowed to do romance with anyone else. Like basically, what does a responsible marriage mean to you? Marriage is not just a contract. Like it, it wasn't just like the government came up with a contract for people to get married. You know, the, the history of marriage, you can't separate that from the church. The problem is people are trying to make things cool and trying to update and make them modern. And now people are saying you can have a polygamous marriage and you can bring in other people on the outside of a marriage. What's the point of getting married? Literally, I'm, I'd like to ask the question, if you think that you can, if, if, if you want to marry somebody and then outsource the sex, you know, outsource the responsibility, outsource what the labor of love is actually supposed to be about, why not just stay single? So you wouldn't do a threesome with your husband? Absolutely not, because he's my husband. Do you Did believe you even have to ask that <laughs> to get the well, answer? I mean, there's married not. couples that want to have threesomes, and, 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 and you know some of happens? these ladies should, are you should, bi-curious. And you should jump into those Reddit threads because every single time that marriage ends in divorce, there's so many Reddit threads. No, about, they don't. Oh, and a lot yeah, of them I have, actually I have regulars do really of well over five too. years. Okay, and there's some that not do. Really do you believe well, atheists can get married? I think atheists get married because they want a tax break. I don't see the point in an atheist getting married. Why don't you just live with your partner, okay? Whatever it is that you're dating, you're at the stage you said, I don't know if you live with your boyfriend or whatever it is. Why take the next leap? 
you're wearing crosses for fun and you know well, it I mean seems if like you're, you're actually you're, you're, asking yeah, the question yeah. I mean because then I would just be pledging the fact that I would want to be with them forever but I you don't can, really you can just be with them forever so why what is it right, that you crave that when you when you want to get married what's that next step for you what does it mean what's the difference between dating and marriage because it's a commitment it's dating, not a commitment. <laughs> it's a commitment, but it's saying a but next you're in step. The, in, it's within, solidifying it. Okay, solidifying what? Because if solidifying you're, if a you, bond between two people that love each other. Okay, but you, but what is solidified? If you can then jump into that next commitment, which is the exact same as dating, and you can sleep with other people, and you can put topless photos on the internet, what are you getting married for? Pictures on Instagram to say you did it? I mean, I'm not sleeping with other people. What's but the difference for you between dating and marriage? I just told you it's a bond between two people. You're solidifying that by law. You're literally making it known. I want to be with this person forever it isn't just a simple breakup oh I can go and do whatever the fuck I want and leave it's a partnership it's a bond it's forever but there's no difference between dating it, and marriage there is other a difference. than the idea in your head that it's a bond because you're saying also but it's not an idea in my okay. head it's on paper oh, okay it's the paper that's and that was but it's I was not making. a tape it, but I'm saying it's, it's not a tax break it's a legal and, thing and I'm, I think I'm for people connecting that are committed. to somebody for the rest of my life yeah well I think for people that are that think about marriage and don't think about a cross as something funzy to wear it's not a piece of paper um, you know, it, it, it is a union between a man and a woman, a sacred union that should be protected from external forces. Um, definitely not something that you open up. You did how I would feel disgusting if my husband ever came to me and said, I want you to sleep with another man or oh, sleep with another woman so that I can fill my sexual fetish. I mean, it's, 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 it's an utter perversion of what it means to be married. And it will lead to divorces. People that have this perspective will, and I'm not saying that if you don't do it, you won't get divorced yeah. 100%. But I do want to say that there is probably a reason that a lot of sex workers struggle to find people that want to marry them. Well, can I say a lot of the perversion that comes if you are not going to be acceptant with your partner, if he comes to you and is like, hey, uh, I really like getting pegged. I want you to peg me. And you're like, ew, that's so disgusting. Like, I would never do that. You want me to eat your ass? I would never do that. Well, then, huh? okay, what are you gonna do? Divorce hmm? him, or I'm, what are you gonna do? Realistically, I'm asking you, you an old. I'm asking. Hold on, I really want to. I want to know. What are you gonna do? That's well, your husband. I He's think, like, hey, babe. I think one of the things about marriage that's really beautiful is I know what my my husband before we got married. I think I, I know who but he is. But things change, and maybe he wants to start exploring. He wants yeah. to start doing what? Uh, so exploring. say, he wants so he rim. wants to start exploring, and he's like, oh my gosh, maybe I do want you to like eat eat my ass, and what? I, I kind of, and I kind of want you to peg me. Like I'm kind of, I kind of want <laughs> anal penetration from you because you're my wife and you're so beautiful and hot, and we're married and we have kids together, and I'm and I'm feeling a little bit kinky, and I with you since we have this special marriage and bond. Mm. How would you feel if we could just try this out just this one time, babe, please? I think it would probably indicate to me that my husband was involved in some perverse world, whether it was through pornography, that something else was okay. happening on the side, because these aren't normal things that people just think of okay. when they wake up. So like, what's hey, your next I'd move? I'd really like a strap-on dildo. Okay, right. Well, so what's also, your next move? Uh, what's the ultimatum? He's going to divorce me if I Wait, don't peg so what's, him? So what's <laughs> the next move? Crazy. Uh, I would think that that individual would probably need therapy and not the kind that you give. Okay. Hmm. And... But but you're gonna stay with you don't, this person. You don't immediately divorce. Okay, marriage is about say, working through issues and working through problems. Okay. You don't immediately right. divorce them. And this gets back to what she was saying about because if your husband, if suddenly a woman doesn't want to have sex, which would be another huge issue in a relationship, I would hope that my husband wouldn't instantly divorce me. But I would hope that they would well, take. Some guys the are terrified of that, and some guys don't even feel like they can open up to their wives about that. S- about that sounds stuff. like they need therapy. They then. need therapy. Yeah, 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 I you know. Got to work on your marriage. But the thing is, is that they'll come to us talking to us about that you know what i mean so it's just like and i think I don't that know. that's I think unhealthy and i yeah. think that you know the fact that sex workers exist as this what you believe to be a solution when in fact that's a detriment because you're getting in the way of the wife and the husband being able to communicate um and so i would much rather my husband go if there was an issue and your wife's not having sex i'd rather him go talk to a priest i'd rather him go talk to another male when males sit down and talk about hey man you should talk to her about okay, this let's i'd rather him what no, man nowadays let me finish my statement that. i'd rather him what do you mean bros talking to each other about things that's a normal i'd, I'd rather if i have an issue like in my pretty it's pretty normal <laughs> i'd rather go talk to my sisters about things that are going on no, in my marriage like, there's man? a lot of steps you can take before you talk to a prostitute about your marriage i just I, I, maybe i'm crazy maybe i live in such a crazy uh, well, i'm saying what man is willing to do that 
on a ta- turn on a Taylor Swift a song, of those on cry a side, little bit in my I'm room. Saying. I don't know. There's a lot. I would turn to Taylor Swift before I would go to a prostitute to, to, about well, my marriage. And I know, but you're not a male, so no, I'm just saying. Like, men can talk where? to other. What are you talking about? There's all of these podcasts of men talking, you know, talking to men and, and being inspirational and talking about porn addiction and talking about the things that are are, are corrupting men's minds. That's out there. Okay, and, and those are that. those are. I would r- much rather my husband listen to those men right. and look for guidance, whether it's in the church, I whether it's on you. a podcast, whether it's a spiritual leader, than to turn to a prostitute in a brothel. I hear you. So there's a lot of steps that you can take from. We're having an issue in our marriage to my husband's at a brothel laying next to a prostitute talking about yeah, issues. I, I, I think, actually, let me, let me just step in really quick. Uh, I do think, though, I, I would like to redirect the conversation because I do think it's probably a very small portion of people who are married are seeking to bring in a prostitute to, for the husband. It just seems like such a small kind of, I don't know. What's up? Really quick. Uh, statistically, married men are actually the highest number of clientele for prostitutes. Yes. And that's why I'm saying, please listen for me. I'm literally telling you guys, males come to us and say all this stuff, which is like, they're first scared of you guys because how you might react Two, they feel like they can't be honest and open with you guys. That's why they result in coming to places yeah, like just that. Just so you guys know, that statistic doesn't mean that the majority of married men go to prostitutes. So I didn't be, say that. No, I know. I'm just letting her know because she said, like, yes, like it was if it was a debunk. I, no, and I think no, what no, he's no, saying no, is no. that the majority oh, of married nice. men don't yeah. turn I'm just saying, yeah. like, to prostitutes. A lot, so there might get be a small contingent and saying, they might be majority right? married. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I get that. Okay. I think that's a good reason to have, I guess, to, on the point of like something was brought up earlier about like how, what is like a responsible marriage to you so part of being a good partner as like a wife or a girlfriend to whoever you're with is making them feel comfortable telling you anything especially if it's something that they think is serious enough to consider leaving like their relationship with you for like if, if it's serious enough that they would consider divorcing you if they can't explore the sexual fantasy or anything like that I think that's just a part of being good on the, um, I, I I agree with what you're saying here that they um, that these men don't feel comfortable that they could tell their wives, and I guess that's just a part of being not that it's justifiable that you as a wife you should give in to any sexual fetish your partner brings to you. It's whatever you're comfortable with and wherever your boundaries are. But um, I guess that's a part of that continuous conversation with them, so that they always feel comfortable bringing up anything to you as a right. friend, as like. Right. confidant and knowing you're, they're not going to be judged right but they'll be a partner with you and i do have to, to do i that. do have to move on so we have a couple chats here i want to try to get through we have beaten cheeks candace owens do not hold back on these libs wipe the floor with your intelligence congrats on being prego again be easy with my essie though she's about to get retired out soon okay first of all we i have beef with beaten cheeks Uh-oh. because he asked me on a date and then Uh-oh. posted a photo with another girl on twitter oh so are you guys oh. are you you guys loyal? I mean, he asked you on a date and you guys are <laughs> committed to, you're committed to beaten cheeks we're, with his we're ridiculous basically together, name. together, so yeah. he's posting photos with another woman right after asking wow, me out. Wow, beaten, beaten cheeks. cheeks. He's How literally could you breaking my heart. He's breaking commit my heart. this act of infidelity on Essie over here, who you've never met yet. Okay, we have Frankie K. Um, hey, thank you, man. You know what's funny about Beyonce? She encourages single ladies to have fun, supports promiscuous behavior in her music, and perpetuates the I don't need a man mentality. And when she's done recording, she goes home to her husband and her children, who, by the way, I did her. Jay Z cheated, right? I yes, yes. Okay, all right. All right. Good, good point, Frankie. Thank you, man. We have Kenneth J. Candace, the Honey Badger Queen. Is that your nickname? I don't know. Or did you just get bestowed? With <laughs> I just the, got bestowed. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your voice and being on. This wacky space is a cultural battlefield that somehow pushes beyond ideolo- ideological bubbles. When are Jeremy and Ben going to make Brian an offer? Seriously, think about it. Yeah. Uh, I'll never. bring it to them. Oh. I've got a lot to bring to them. After. Yes, the, the yeah. Tiger King. Yeah, Tiger King thing. and Matt Walsh. There you yeah. go. All right, we have... Uh, Travel trades here. Oh wait, uh, I'll just read. Hi Brian, long time no see. Hopefully I can come on once I'm back from Kuwait. Hi Candace, thanks for being a voice when I felt odd having conversation. Felt odd having con- conservative behaviors. Excuse me. Your bravery has helped countless people become comfortable with being conservative. Thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you. We have travel trades. People in this day and time are exceedingly haughty and refuse to pursue the ab- abolition or even suppression of ego in their everyday lives. People appeal to uh, people appeal their own wants, needs, opinions, ideas, etc. Above all else, instead of appealing to something greater from travel trades. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. And then lastly, we have Sosaiji. 
I, that's probably not, I don't know. <laughs> Panel, please listen to everything that Candace says. You have a rare opportunity to see what a high value woman is and learn from her as she's intelligent, respected, and accomplished. You can't justify and make excuses for your lifestyles. Do, anybody got a response to that one? Thank you. Oh, okay, there you go. All right. I like my lifestyle. Yeah. I love okay. my lifestyle. I, I can change it at any me. time. These Being in this industry, you don't run out of opportunities. Men are coming all the time. If I wanted to settle down with one of them, <laughs> I, think, I think that could have happened. Yeah. Wait, when you say men are coming to you all the time as clients, right? Yeah. And you said if you wanted to settle down with any of them, you could, but do you find the men who come to you attractive? Because I mean, I've heard from yes. a lot of women who do OnlyFans or even women who uh, are exotic dancers, strippers, whatever, um, and women who do porn or even adult content, that the men that typically like are the fans or consume the content or come and see you, your clients, a lot of these women don't view these men, like just by virtue of them coming to you or by virtue of them subscribing to your OF, like that in and of itself makes them not a prospect for any like long-term no, relationship. These are normal guys and some of them are hot. So I'm a fitness competitor. Okay. All right. I'm 46 years old. I figured I was going to age out of the industry. What has happened? MILFs are all, all the, all the thing. They're the cat's pajamas right now. So I'm getting a ton a MILF. of <laughs> well, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of youngins. The Coming the youngins, the youngins, young gentlemen, really? tons okay. of them, and and then you know fitness competitors, judges that that judge in the circuit. So then they'll say, hey, I, you know, you're looking good, or, or tighten this up. So there's a lot of opportunities to meet a lot of individuals now. To meet them though, but I mean, and, and and date, when it comes and to date them, but and when it comes to back, long-term commitment, I mean. I think they want well they I I agree what I what I encounter um in something what Candace said is these guys they are prideful so once they start dating you they do uh, in my experience they do want you to can maybe consider settling down now I've done real estate I was vice president of business growth at an active um wealth management company during COVID. I have a master's degree I can do different things oh, yeah. what do you have a master's in education okay. I got straight A's got yeah. So, nice. and I taught for a while. Okay. So I, I come in and out. I'll go into white collared work and then I'll go back into the industry because it's fun for me. I enjoy it and, and it is good money and it's an adventure. I enjoy going out with huh. these guys and being a travel companion and getting to go on vacations. Can, can no, I just wanted to ask oh. you oh. as a, the man sitting at this table, are you attracted to their lifestyles? Do you think men are attracted to their lifestyles? Uh, I'm just curious about your opinion, just to hear a, a male. I don't care. <laughs> well, that's so rude. Uh, no, he sat I mean, here and good, asked you your opinion about no, everything. No, I said, like, good thing I don't care for but I what an other male has to say about my industry, though. But I'm he's just been saying. asking you questions about what you think about men. No, I'm going to listen to him. He's been asking you questions about your life. And the first thing when no, I ask one he question can to say him, his you say, I'm I don't saying, care. Like, I feel personally, like that's... I'm very hurt. Like, I want to know. Yeah, I'm just, I just, yeah but, but why How interrupt that? Like when he asks you a question, what if someone said, I don't care what she says? You know, I think that's just no, a little like, rude. I'm saying like, because everybody's <laughs> always out here. I see your faces that you're giving her and stuff like that. And no, I, think it's funny. I just and I'm so saying I'm just like, saying, I'm letting like, her talk, but I just wanted to hear his opinion on it. So I just, was that ahead, like Ryan. a little bit of insecurity to just jump and say, I don't care? Because Can I did poach Candace from the Daily Wire? Well, I just, it was just a little rude. I need He's letting you talk so much. We've all been letting people talk with different perspectives. So I just thought it was like, Suddenly, he hasn't even said anything, and you've there already was a diminished. There times where condescending. Okay, well, in, yes. any case, so, in any case, it's so, okay. I just want to hear just a male continue, voice. Ryan. Like we've been all talking okay, about our opinions. I'm trying to let Brian continue, and you're you're still talking. Okay, um, a little bit so, of insecurity coming out over there. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but go on. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, do I have your permission? Is it okay? <laughs> Is it okay? Okay, okay, cool, cool. Um, so, sorry, can you just repeat the question one, one yeah, more time? Yeah, I was just saying, like, it's interesting because we're all women and we're giving different perspectives and the female perspective mm. on this topic. When you hear what she just said about sex work and how she feels about sex work, or you hear mm. what she's saying, or you hear what she's saying, what is your honest opinion as a man? Because what we're trying to get mm -hmm. to, I think, the nucleus of is, you know, 
high value women, high value men, what creates that, how men respond to that, and we have the opportunity to hear a man. I, don't know. I mean, I personally would not date a woman who is involved in sex work in any of its various manifestations. Um, just, I mean, it's kind of, there's, I, I'm, I'm not really like a hater if people want to do that sort of thing. When On a societal level, I don't know if it's, uh, eh, you know, the best thing, but uh, I'm kind of like, hey, whatever, go do your thing. But as far as my own personal preferences, standards, and boundaries when it comes to a relationship, uh, I don't foresee myself wanting to uh, get involved with someone who does sex work. Uh, and why do you think that is? I think most men would agree with you. Uh, I think, and I, I think that makes sense to me, but why mm. is that? Because I think it's just interesting to hear a male perspective, that's all. Sure, I mean, well, it, I, kind of going back to there being different levels to it. So I mean, if she's a prostitute or was a prostitute, I mean, it's kind of, I feel like that's just common sense. Like, I wouldn't, no offense, I just wouldn't date a woman who's a prostitute. I'm not offended, like I said. And probably the, oh, they wouldn't want to date me. I don't know. It's fine. It's cool. But yeah, I wouldn't. I uh, no. If you're because I would want uh, monogamy. I'd want loyalty. And even though it's for for work and they're just doing it for money, um, my view of sex is not. I don't think you can. Well, people do, but I don't think you ought to detach intimacy from sex and people who engage in a lot of casual sex or people who do it for work, you've essentially just detached intimacy from sex. So um, definitely not a prostitute. Um, I mean, I, not a stripper, not a OnlyFans, no. I feel like that was just like an unnecessarily long way to answer. Like, no, no oh. dude's gonna wanna no. date a hooker. I don't know, it's like, I don't think it's, like that yeah and I said I don't care because it's like and you're like no don't take offense like I'm not gonna take offense to something I don't care about that's why I'm like no it's just and, a preempt and you, and you stated you were like and, and you looked at me and you said and don't take offense like baby I'm not offended by any means you know um, what I mean that, okay okay that's, I, that's, that's I'm totally not fine. looking for we I'm not, I'm, not, right now. I'm not trying to offend you she was just asking me yeah my, literally was just asking stance. a question no, I know. yeah yeah yeah, earlier I was like talked about like promiscuity. Like I'm assuming you guys believe like promiscuity is like bad or shouldn't be encouraged in society. I was wondering if what specific factors do you think encourage it most? Do you believe it's like media? Do you think like birth control has anything to do with it? Do you believe like I, I want to know what your top factors of promiscuity are, or what you believe it is? Yeah, so I would say number one contributor is, is culture and the education system. So I remember when I was left-leaning, a lot of my ideas came from the school system and just what you're talking about, Planned Parenthood in the classroom, that effort began in the 70s. The majority of high schoolers were graduating with their virginity intact in the 70s before they started um, teaching health class, which was teaching people that everybody's doing it and actually they weren't. And within one decade, it completely flipped and the majority of teens were now graduating having lost their virginity. Um, so we ceded a lot of that to the education system, which when, when parents had more control over their children, what was happening in the classroom was based on arithmetic and not cultural issues and focusing on engineering children to think that sex is this positive, um, it, it, you know, it's you just do it, everybody's doing it, doesn't matter if you have multiple partners, you combine that with feminism in the classroom. I, I was forced in college to take a, a Feminism 101 course, and they kind of made you think oh. that, yeah. Beaten boo. Cheeks donated oh. $200. Oh. Candace, please tell these women their past promiscuous matters to be with a decent guy that will not be beta males. SC, that was just a friend, we still on <laughs> relax. Just answer my text and we good, I promise, equals D. <laughs> All right, thank you, Cheese. Um, was there a question here for Candace, or they said these women Wait, can okay. I, do you mind if I push back a little bit on the education system mm -hmm. comment? Sure. Okay, because at least from the things that I've read and that I've studied, it seems like that is true, but in a very particular context, and that very particular context was like basically abstinence-only education, which I don't know about you guys, but makes complete sense to me, because if you tell teenagers like, don't do this thing, this thing is like super, you know, like don't do it, um, it feels super good, but you're not supposed to do it or whatever, if you phrase it that way then teenagers are going to go out and do it because like at least everything that i've seen recently has been talking about how um if you talk about proper sex ed and people who have more access to contraceptives as well as well as better sex ed tend to have like a lower body count than people who are like in like lower education less sex ed less access to contraception so i was just wondering like your yeah. thoughts on that 
I'm, I'm telling you, it's not true factually. In the 70s, before they got Planned Parenthood, went in the classroom and started funding initiatives, um, and they started teaching sex education. There used to no, there used to not be sex education in school, and the way, the way that they got it into the classroom in the 70s was by saying, you know, it's better to teach them, which is what you're saying, because then they'll be more responsible. It actually, within one decade, it flipped. The majority of high schoolers were graduating with their virginity before there was sex education, and then when they put sex education in the classroom, the majority of them within 10 years were, were not graduating graduating with their virginity. So it actually sexualized children. Yeah. Um, my understanding, but the reason why was because the first manifestations of sex education was abstinence only. And, and it was working when, is what I'm saying to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was working. So they abstinence, it used to be, you know, considered, and I, I'm not at all trying to, I'm, I'm just telling you what the facts are here. Um, like when people, when abstinence was the cultural simulation, when everyone said you should be abstinent, you should not get, you should not have sex before marriage, that idea was permeated throughout culture. It was reflected in culture. There were no sex ads. There weren't people naked on the internet, and people lived their lives. It was considered a, a big thing, you know, to lose your virginity. You were actually considered someone that maybe a guy wouldn't want to marry because you lost your virginity. That was that was the cultural understanding, like you know, in the '50s and the '60s, and then in the '70s, you had this fourth wave of feminism that reared its ugly head and started associating sexual. Um, promiscuity to freedom and things completely flipped again I'm just giving you historical analysis of what happened in the classroom yeah I without be interested. commentary it, yeah. Hold on. it's okay if you sorry can I, I'll just finish yeah. make it quick if you yeah can. I, I'd be interested to see like where exactly you're getting that from if like later you can tell me or whatever Thomas Sowell inside the education system and okay. he has all of the sources listed in the back of the book okay because mm -hmm. at least in modern day do you think that any of that has flipped or no no I think we've become you know, there was to use a term. I was I was actually talking about this yesterday on a podcast. I thought it was pretty brilliant. But Paul Joseph Watson, I love his YouTube stuff, mm, yeah. and he started talking about hoflation, which is like that is a, that's a thing. Actually, hilarious. Which he's saying that men used to have to do a lot less and get a very high value woman. He's like, so think about your grandparents and your grandmother. She was a high value woman. She you know she raised the kids. She was conservative. She was beautiful. All of these things and and. Now we live in this moment where everyone's kind of a hoe and you have to work harder to get a woman that doesn't have any self-respect or any value. And I just thought it was a really interesting video. It was obviously funny, um, but he was saying something. And we live in, we live in hoflation now where everybody in their own capacity is selling their, selling their bodies. And unfortunately, this, these are the options that men have. Now, I'm not saying it's stunning to me that women talk about what men need to be and what men need to be, but I think just kind of the complete disintegration of when I look at you know what my grandfather, my grandmother looked like in picture, she passed in 2013, and just how classy and how beautiful and how much I wanted to be like her. And now I look at you know women today, and I just think, man, I, I feel bad for guys that you know that the pool is getting smaller. But also, it's really positive for women that are conservative, and you know who uh, it, it means that you're a part of you know maybe a smaller pool of individuals. I see it a lot more in the South and that men should aspire to pursue those women, absolutely, um, to raise their families and you know to raise their kids. Do you, do you co-sign on the, the hoflation oh, theory? Oh yeah, I believe, yeah. Oh. The women I today okay. are very low value, and so oh. it's funny because the simulation is like men ain't shit is kind of the thing everybody's saying. Don't need a man, and it's funny that someone brought up Beyonce because she's living the exact opposite of what she's singing. She's just mm. making money because she knows how to make money in a hoflationary environment. You know, okay. smart woman. She's like, I'm just going to pretend to be a hoe, but then actually privately I'm going to be like super. Like, Hold on. Um, you wanted to come in, then you, please, if you can, try to keep it brief because I need to get oh, to chat. Oh, I was just going to say that my version of sex education, or what, my sex education was literally them showing us a birthing photo or a video, sorry. Yeah, in fourth grade. That terrified me and I was like, actually, I don't think I'm going to have sex for a long time. I think I'm good. <laughs> Go, ahead. Go ahead. And like speaking of hoeflation, I mean, we're common we're always trending apparently right because hoes mm -hmm. because without us hoes you wouldn't have like mm -hmm. that many views to be watching right you have oh, hoes oh. come on the podcast to talk about hope. our i'm not knocking hoes well, i don't want to be a hoes. i'm saying i don't want to be a hoes. i'm saying you have hoes and when i say you have hoes coming onto the podcast you you know you're a hoe you you're a, a hoe. literal hoe or like more of a the colloquial <laughs> that's brian's dream you know what i mean you have hoes brian <laughs> so you sit what? here and you want to bash sex workers but you know we come on here bash, bash, bash anybody bash. anybody i don't think there's, there's, anybody has bashed he's bringing bashing. you on here and giving you a platform to speak so yeah. i think that if he was going to be bashing you he wouldn't even allow but anybody on the hero of hoes wait what do you mean making 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 what 
making a scene. Like, I'm not making anybody seem any you know, sort of like. No, I'm just talking about a video. Trending, oh, we're a trending topic, right. so it's relevant to speak on. Because it's interesting. Wait, what? It's yeah. fascinating. I am That's fascinated by hoes. I'll say it. I'm absolutely fascinated by the way the hoe mind works, the way the hoe hive works. I'm fascinated. Next documentary. I cover it on my show. You and are it correct. Is it is, it is trending. Saying, and that's when Emma gets up and does about. a video and says something like, you know, I'm, it's chic to be divorced before you're 30. It is absolutely <laughs> fascinating to see how someone's mind can be so warped. You know, in the same way that I think it's, it's fascinating when anybody does anything crazy or says anything crazy and I cover it on my podcast, you know, I am not knocking it at all. I just tell people what the facts are. You can choose this lifestyle. And here is where you are 99.9% likely to lead in, in your life, right? You are probably not destined for marriage. You're not probably not destined for a stable relationship. Men are going to not want this long term. You can say it a thousand times. You can have a thousand cultural examples. And women's still got to go out there and be hoes, you know, because they're about they money and about a Cardi B song or whatever it is. So, yes, I think it is fascinating. Um, and it, it is why I wanted to. To you know, talk, this is why I talk about it on my podcast and why I'm very interested to talk to you guys. And I hope you guys feel that I've been respectful in listening to you know your lifestyles, even though it's so different from mine. And so I appreciate Brian for hosting. Well, thank you for coming, Candice. Uh, let's see, I have a couple chats here, and then I have one more question, and then I think Candice will have to leave here in a moment. We have uh, Yvonne. Oh, okay. Modern life dating donated one hundred and ninety nine dollars. Hey, Candice. Thank you for being a voice of common sense and a good representation of being a decent woman in today's modern perverse time. What are your thoughts on the passport bro movement of men leaving America for better wives abroad? Hey, John, thank you very much for the uh, TTS. I um, see why. Maybe a brief little snippet on this, if you Yes. Can. Yeah, I, I think that you can find higher quality women in other places. Like, I married an Englishman. I'm, I think America... Are you a passport... <laughs> <laughs> Not a bro, but passport like a passport sis. A passport sis. Passport sis. There you go. Uh, yeah, I think that America has really lowered the cultural standards mm. for women more than any. You don't see this kind of even this, the way women dress in America compared to mm. England fascinates me. And so, yeah, I I think find a wife, do what you gotta do, but also don't discount the South because there are so many mm. good women in the South in America. Come to Tennessee, they're wonderful. I have heard Sorry. something kind of interesting on this. Is that uh, you have a lot of men in the West, a lot of men in the U.S. going overseas to try to find perhaps a, a wife who's a bit more feminine or, you know, whatever they're not finding here in the, in the West. But you don't hear of men from other countries in droves coming to the U.S. to find a wife here. Hmm. You don't really hear that. So, um, all right, we have Yvonne Yvonne St. Simonis. Candace, I know you're listening to these women with a re realization that this country is doomed. How will you help your son navigate the swamp before you right now? And if we can just try to be... Uh, I moved to the South as soon as I got pregnant the first time. I moved where my values aligned and my son will be just fine. Perfect. We have a uh, goodest boy. One of them is too young to remember the movie Pretty Woman. Imagine a guy just wanting a better life for the both of you and maybe even a family. Again, the world is effed. Hey, goodest boy. Thank you. Uh, Yvonne. Candice, do you think Lyndon B. Johnson has anything to do with the fact that these women that have an OnlyFans are actually able to find a relationship with a man? I don't know how we correlated Lyndon B. Johnson to yeah, the was OnlyFans account. LBJ? Yeah. He died are you familiar with anything with fans, LBJ? Of course. Uh, okay. Um, Yvonne St. Simonis? Can Candice, what specific steps will you take to ensure that your daughter does not become one of the women sitting at the panel right now? It would just be impossible in my household. We keep her away from this kind of secular living, keeping them away from tablets, don't letting them, not letting them be raised on Instagram and social media and TikTok, making sure that they have family values instilled in them, that they know what the cross represents, <laughs> um, and that you know they're, they're church-going children. And it's all about who you hang out with. You, be, you will become the average mm. of the people you spend your most time with. And I, you know, I appreciate the time here, but I would definitely would say that, you know, I want my kids to be in a different climate. All right. We have the cast man 777 marriage must be a closed and permanent relationship between two people for the purpose of raising children. Without this definition, marriage just becomes dating with a contract. Sending your husband to a sex therapist for sex is just prostitution with a loophole. Hey, the cast man 777. Thank you very much for your comment there. Uh, final question here before uh, Candace has to take off. Uh, so, um, would any of you date a trans person? 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. I feel like if I say no, I'm going to get a lot of backlash. Well, but I think I mean, my beyond, personal preference, I would say no. Okay, that's fine. No. 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 Hell well, no. you're married. Um, <laughs> me, me personally, I, I, I would not. Um, my question to you guys is, would any of you object to a man not wanting to date a transgender woman? I think everybody has their own personal preferences. And if there's one thing you're allowed to be super oh, picky on, it's who you date. Like, okay. you know, I think that's the only thing that you can 100% have free reign on. You can date who you decide. Any? I would completely agree with okay. her. Like we talked about before, I think that everyone should have boundaries, mm. you know? And as long as that person's upfront and honest and they can have, like, an adult conversation that isn't rooted in hatred, I don't think there's anything wrong with preferring somebody that isn't trans. Okay. I have a question. So, and we, this has been, like, a thing that's gone viral on this podcast before. Um, and it always seems to spark quite a debate. So, would you consider it to be gay for a man to date a trans woman? Yes. For a man to date a trans, no, personally. Would, would, he, would you categorize him as straight? Um, probably, yeah. Because, what is it? Oh, sorry. This is Here, like too technical. I mean, I'm I'm like, I just... If you don't want to answer, that's like, fine. Go just, ahead. If you don't I want to answer, that's I'm, fine. Go ahead. I'm with Pixie. I don't think that that makes me gay in, at all. Essie. I'm like, I have no uh, clue. For not to answer. Yeah. You, uh, okay. Um, question. Do, I mean, does your answer change based on the stage of transition? Like, what if this is before any transition has occurred at all, but the person has a, come to the realization that they are transgender? Well, I would assume that you have some level of like homosexual inclination if you're a man attracted to a person who looks and represents as a man you know mm -hmm. like if you're saying pre-transition i would say like you're if you're attracted to those components of that person pre-transition if you are transgender are you a woman pre-transition you're a woman who hasn't transitioned yet so you're presenting as a male what, until what if you there transition. hasn't what, what if there hasn't been any bottom surgery what do you mean? Like there's still an appendage. So yeah. you're saying they transitioned everything but their bottom? I, they're, maybe they're in the process of transitioning. Let's say, they're, fine, everything but the... Okay, I feel like I'm kind of confused here, so I'll just yeah. leave it in, the, in these it sentences. It seems really technical. Two people that have penises, I don't care how you feel on your inside, I don't care if you dress and you wear a dress, you wear a wig, if you come together and you have sex, you're gay. And I think that is homosexual right so I know that people are trying it's it is convoluted so I understand I why like, you're like uh, they're yeah. trying to it's make it something thing. else and hurt. it's in your head and well what if you feel like a woman it's very simple if you are a man and you are having sex with a man irrespective of how you feel or whether or not you've mutilated your body or you've chopped something off it doesn't make you not a man you are your man and two men coming together to have sex with their appendages intact, obviously, is homosexual sex. So yeah, I think um, you know it's different if you're presenting completely different because at that point, like you know, you have men who say that they've been trapped or whatever, and I'm like, that person is straight. They literally slept with someone who was like presenting as a woman, looked like a woman. They couldn't tell. Like, I wouldn't consider that gay. Um, but at the end of the day, like, honestly, I don't really care about people's sexual orientation that much. I feel like this is, like, kind of a culture war issue. And for some people, culture war issues are important. But I'd rather talk, like, policy about something. I don't know if that makes me boring here, but... Uh, well, I'm not sure I'm totally following, but I guess, so, what is a woman? <laughs> I've answered this question before on the podcast. Here, I can start with Azalia. Did I say your name right? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Azalea. you never do, but it's okay. I, okay, <laughs> go ahead. Well, so what is a woman? I mean, I think that gender is a spectrum. I obviously know that you do not agree with me, and a lot of the conservative people here won't agree with me, but I guess it's just how you present and how you feel. I mean, I don't really, again, I don't like to structure things that way and, like, make it so black and white. I think that people should represent themselves and be what they want to be, and it's nobody else's business, to be honest. A female is somebody that has a vagina. <laughs> That's what it says in the book, right? Okay, cool. Which book? The Bible? Uh, the health ed book. Oh, the health ed book. But okay. Is vagina. okay. No, but what Gender is and sex are two different things. So. Okay. You answered the question correctly, okay. so I don't want you to feel like you didn't even answer it wrong. What, what is a woman? A woman is somebody... <laughs> I'm like, somebody, this is so complex, I'm okay. scared. It doesn't need to be. Okay. Go ahead. It doesn't a need to be. A woman is somebody who presents or acts as 
the social construct of women. And the reason why I don't say biology is because whenever we look at biology, the truth is, before coming to this room, I did not look at anybody's genitalia here. I did not look at any of your chromosomes. I just assumed you guys were women because of how you dress and act. So I think that maps on more to our reality of how we use the word woman. Essie. This is so controversial. Um, I'm very, like, a man and a woman, man has a penis, woman has a vagina, biologically, man and a woman. I agree. I think that it's like whatever biologically, and yeah, anatomically, what you've got going on. Um, I feel like what brings out my feminine qualities the most is the thought of being a mother in the future. So I guess I associate um, being a woman with being a mother in all aspects of that. Um, oh, okay. That's well, my answer. Uh, your gender is decided before you're born, when you're born, and for the rest of your life. I'm having a little boy. The doctor knows that. I know that because uh, he's got a penis that is growing inside of my stomach right now, which is kind of trippy mm -hmm. to think about. Um, if I get onto this table and I start meowing like a cat, I don't suddenly become a biological cat because I present like a cat and wear a tail and say meow, meow. That is probably means that I need to talk to a therapist. Not you, not you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not that difficult. It doesn't need to be convoluted. It doesn't need to be controversial. Um, a woman, to answer your question, is an adult female. <laughs> adult human female. It is an adult mm. human female. And that is the answer to something that it's just shocking to me that every person knew, every child, every, and then within just a couple of cultural years, everyone is so confused about you know, water being a liquid. <laughs> it's very, like, again, I'm fascinated by it, so I love to talk to people that are confused by that, but if you were born with a vagina, you are a female, and if you were born with a penis, you are a male, and if you had some rare thing happen, which hardly ever happens, but people always talk about it, where you're born with both, both parts, you might be intersex, hermaphrodite, hermaphrodite uh, but generally speaking, I think we know that that means that something genetically went wrong, <laughs> we are born either male or female. Pixie, do you object to her definition? Yeah, because I think, um, I understand where you're coming from, but I think when it comes to day-to-day -day use of words, they have to map onto our reality somewhat. And the truth is like, as I didn't check anyone's like biology or chromosomes before coming here, you can say it's an act, but the truth is that's, it's an act that everybody plays into. Everybody looks at how a person looks like and says, oh, they're a woman or male based off of that. And you can say, oh, that person is putting on a disguise that doesn't change their real gender or anything, but everybody acts that way. So to me, it's like, no, like the word that maps or the definition that maps most onto reality, onto our day-to-day -day usage is appearance-based. Uh, Candace does have to uh, take off here. Do you have a final response to her? Yeah, I just, you if you grow an afro and wear a wig and put, you know, a lot of black makeup on, you're not a black woman, you know? <laughs> so your appearance doesn't actually mean anything. You are, a, you're, you're not black. Um, and the same way that I'm not white. So how we, uh, if we can trick someone, you might be able to trick me. I think Roy Richard Dalazel did a really good job tricking people into believing that she was black for a long time. Uh, by darkening her skin, getting super tan and wearing fake wigs, but she wasn't actually a black woman. So how you feel on the inside and how you present, you might be able to trick people, but that makes you a liar, not a woman. So um, yeah, that's what I would say in closing. Yeah. <laughs> if you want, you could direct your further comments to me what after, okay. <laughs> afterwards. But um, guys, please be sure to check out Candace Owens' documentary, yes. Convicting a Murderer. You guys will love it. Tomorrow. It's not political. Yeah, I'm going to watch it tomorrow. <laughs> It'll be live on X. Live on X and yeah. thedailywire.com? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, exactly. Yeah, be sure to check that out, guys. Well, Candace, thank you so much for coming. Thank you guys so much for having me. And honestly, I really did appreciate talking to you guys. I thought it was fascinating. And I think everyone was super respectful. So I, I really appreciate it. And you, because you're so young, I'm just going to say a prayer for you because I, I do think, you. I really do believe that in there there's just a different life for you and i'm just going to say a prayer for you tonight i just wanted to say that because i a felt for me tonight for i mean because i don't gonna, know what that prayer entails well <laughs> i'm gonna say so it anyways it. yeah someday you're, you might are you reje you're rejecting <laughs> the prayer yes. the prayer is rejected okay i am That's rejecting okay. your prayer uh, That's the okay. show goes on but candace is is leaving guys give me bye. just a sec bye to bye say guys. goodbye Yo, guys, W's in the chat for Candace. W's in the chat for okay. Candace. O7's in the chat for Candace. Sorry, let me, I'll, I'll scoot over a little bit. Yeah. If I want to be a hoe, I'll be the hoe. Uh, guys, give me just a sec while I say goodbye, and then uh, we'll, we'll continue with the stream. Oh, wait, oh, Madison. Okay.
I'm sorry. No, Madison's gonna sit here. I know. It was kind of sad. Ew. Yes. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, girl, the fuck? I know the eyes Amy kept going. Amy, what you shout out to Air Force <laughs> Amy? Look, I told you, you know, I love Air Force Amy. Amy. Shout out to Air Force. Are we live right now? Now we can like no? actually see. Oh, guys, some stuff. go to like, twitch.tv slash whatever. Shout out to Air Force Amy. Guys, twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow on no, the Prime no, sub. Twitch.tv. Dot. Wait, excuse me. Twat. 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 Twatch, twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow. Drop us a prime sub. Yo, uh, Sauce, thank for the prime. Wait, guys, if you can be quiet, please. If you guys can be quiet. Yo, Fuzzy, thank for the... Guys, guys, please. Fuzzy, thank for the tier one. NPC, thank for the prime. Devosh, thank for the prime. Uh, Scream, thank for the prime. Appreciate it, guys. Twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow. Drop us a prime sub. Uh, big thank you to Candace Owens for coming and being on the show. Um, yeah, she had a hard out at uh, 8.30, guys, so... Uh, Madison will take over this seat. Uh, okay, so where were we? We are talking about race and gender. You guys had good with Candace, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was good. You guys, she is a little, uh, little back and forth. It was good. Yeah. It was pretty good. I, I disagree <laughs> on some things, but yeah, she's, she's I very respectful, very Wait, smart. Just, just a reminder, just when you speak, if you can, in the mic. Thank very you. Very super smart lady. Mm. Um, very, very awesome. I disagree on some things, but it's yeah, just, it's a matter it's, of lifestyle. Right. It's good. It's good. Um, let me see if I can get a couple chats in here. We have question for the S workers from travel trades. If the entirety of mankind adopted your ideologies on S marriage, do you think your ideologies would be a net positive or net negative to the world? Uh, we'll go around the table on that. And guys, uh, actually, go ahead. I, I guess I don't understand, yeah. like, the question. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> like, like, would it be generally positive if everybody was sex positive? I, I, I guess is that the question? Yeah, because I, I don't think we're saying, like, our ideology is that everybody should be a sex worker and have lifestyles like us. Right. If that's what is implied. Because I don't think, th I think that would be a net negative, obviously. I think it's for a specific type of person to be into, into sex work or perform sex work. I don't think that that's for everybody. That would definitely be a net negative if everyone wanted to be a sex worker. Yes. Okay. I agree. SC, I agree. SC. I mean, yeah, I would, I would agree with Azalea. Pixie. I'm, yeah, I, I'm like kind of, I kind of am stuck from the last thing that was said. I kind of want to respond back to it. But so, oh, to the Kansas thing? Yeah. Okay, yeah. just pretend I'm a pregnant black woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. What? I, what, is, what is the, remember, you're not what you feel inside, Brian. <laughs> Oh, I mean, the reason why the argument for like gender and race is so different is because like our conceptions of what we're gen where a proper claim on gender and race is like radically different, right? So we treat race or culture as like a group identity, right? So to be black, you have to be part like of a black parents, have some sort of like black history, um, be part of like a black community. It's more of a thing that gets put onto you based on like what your general history is and how much of validity you have to claim. Wait, women, but, everybody has a claim to women because everybody has a fucking mom and everybody has been affected by what? gender roles. <laughs> Wait, hold on. But if you're black, that manifest itself in your skin color like your yeah but there's color. light there's people have you ever heard the term white passing no like albino but no, no like black people oh, who oh okay yeah white yeah. yeah no no like, they don't, they yeah but they then, don't know no white passing is not trying to make yourself look black or make yourself look no, white it's, it's you, no, you are look white light. because you're black and you have a light skin right you just are extremely light well, skin are and you a hundred percent like one of your parents mixed, must be mixed. white. 100%. Or maybe you just okay. have, what is it, like one ancestor a long time ago that was white and then it just came out in your dreams. That's happened before. Okay. So are you suddenly not black because you're white passing? No, but you were arguing that it, like, it... it that the appearance is what makes you something. Well, That's I'm, what, yeah. what I was, yeah, I'm arguing, I'm saying that there's a difference between race and sex for the, or like yeah, gender Yeah, there is claims. a difference, but. Yeah, and for this reason, the reason why it's seen as like so outlandish if you just suddenly claim to be a black person is because we consider cultural identities, group identities based on like historical claims. While gender, everybody has a claim to gender because everybody's been affected to gender roles. Everyone has a claim to gender. Because everybody's been affected by it. Oh, you have to be more masculine. You have to be more feminine. This is what a man means. This is what a woman means. Everybody's been affected by it. Not everybody has been, you know, a descendant from slavery. Wait. <laughs>
Oh. Are blowing you your mind no, 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 no. here. No, you're not blowing my no. mind. Because you just said descended from slavery. Are, you think... I don't you think, think all black people are no, descendant of U.S. No, slaves because there's black not. people in, I never said in that. various regions around the world. Of course, yeah, absolutely. But the but, point is that they what? have a what is it historical claim that oh, you know, these people were viewed as black here. This is a history of this place, et cetera, et cetera. Not like oh, you know, I have no culture or background connected to it. Now I'm going to claim to be black. Well, that's what I'm saying. There has to be some. There's a historical claim there, at least in our society, that treats it that way. Okay. So that's the difference. We can talk about something else. Now. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, that was Candace Owens' argument because she was making the race comparison. I, like, I wasn't really prepared okay. to make that argument, but what, what, so what you I got? I just have one more comment, and it's not about the race versus gender because those are two very, very different things. Yeah, what, what things. you yeah. got? Mine is for you in oh. particular because yeah. you said that your view of a woman is motherhood, and there are a lot of women that would take offense to that because it's really really painful for women that can't have kids or can't be mothers yeah. for that reason so yeah. i think that that's not a good way to identify a woman i'm we, just saying that yeah like, no that's a, a great point honestly that's like, a great point i just meant for me how i feel like um what makes me feel most woman out of like anything else and, and but but also i don't have kids it's just the thought that i want them it's, mm -hmm. it's so maybe even it's just that maybe it's like the mothering instinct i i don't have kids and i may be someone who isn't able to I mean, hopefully that is absolutely not the case, but it's just the desire to have kids, the desire to be nurturing, that's where, and I don't have them yet, but yeah. that is still what makes me feel most woman than any, like... Yeah, and that's very fair. I just think those are two, like, the way you said it the first time and saying that, those are two very, very different things. So mm -hmm. that clarification yeah. pretty but much I mean, means everything. I don't particularly, in the first place, have a strong opinion mm -hmm. on the transgender issue i mean in in terms of like words of it all and like the wording of it all the definitions mm -hmm. of it all like i don't really have like much commentary on that because again it's just words it doesn't really have like much well the, okay so the typical recommended go-to for what is a woman if you you say you lean more conservative right pretty center but yeah i mean i think she does she does make a good point like your ability to get pregnant doesn't like if a woman had like a hysterectomy She's still a woman just because she can't have children. I mean, I, what I would recommend, probably your strong, strongest definition for what is a woman is just an adult human female. Mm -hmm. I just think in general, everyone should worry less about other people's genitals. Period. Thank you. Because mm -hmm. what does it matter? It's not on your body. It's on theirs. Like if you're not sleeping with them and well, the, it's like, it's just not your business. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like if you're your having like an intellectual conversation about it, like truth no it's kind of, of a big deal i mean we can have the conversation but i think like the worrying of it of like oh are they trans are they this are they that what are they are they woman are they a man i like i don't think that we need to be having That's even like in-depth conversations about shit. somebody else's body and somebody else's decision and how they feel because i don't think any of us can dictate how anyone else feels i think it's more of a yeah. constructive conversation or debate if what you want to talk about is something like Policy related like if you want to ask like a have a debate about like a question that um, I don't think it's a stupid question Like what is a woman to you? You're asking, you know for someone's mm -hmm. like ideological take on it I just think it's more fruitful To have a conversation about like how should the law define it or Absolutely. how should it like apply in society? I just think that's a bit more of like Interesting and constructive of a debate to have because it could mm -hmm. have real consequences versus like I mean I was a philosophy major in college all you know half of philosophy philosophy gets hated on because like you know Half of it is just arguing about a definition of something that's completely abstract in the first place. It, there, uh -oh. it doesn't have a <laughs> physical reality. You know what I'm saying? I mean, biological reality, like that's different, whatever. I'm not even trying to get into that. I'm just saying it's a philosophical argument we are trying to ask when you ask people like, what is the what is definition of woman to you? It's not you know a philosophical I mean? it's, argument. Well, it's very relevant. It's not a philosophical it's, it's argument. I think, what, with I think it's very on. simple. It's very simple. Yeah. An adult human female. Cool. Okay, so, but I think okay. what everyone's it's, trying to did say. You check, did you is, check if I had a dick before point. I came in here? So here's what one does thing. that? No, did you she, did you she, check my chromosomes? She, this is yeah. No, this but like valid. but you most still people, call me a woman. Did I? I don't. Did I? I would call you a woman, but <laughs> you I. You would call I me a woman. I don't know if I called you a woman. Okay. But I. I okay. Did in you, any case. Did you check? But that. Oh, Brian. If you line. Okay. Here's the oh. thing, though. If you lined up, a hundred women and a hundred men, with pretty accurate certainty, you would be able, like, very easily, be able to be like, 
and oh, excuse me, females and males, let me clarify, you'd be pretty easily able to assess, that's a woman, that's a man. Yeah, until they start changing their appearance. And now Not necessarily. Uh, I, there's a lot of passing people. Like, the point is, the fact that somebody, even just one person passes, already throws a wrench into the argument. Because if it's supposed to be this pure biological thing, then passing wouldn't be a question. So it would just be... When I was getting my master's degree in education, I had to take lifespan... I need to... Come back, I had Candace. To take, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, lifespan development. And when we were studying lifespan development, we were um, studying transgender and transgender people just in case the, there's this minuscule um, statistical possibility that a child might reach out to us as educators. I was an actual teacher for children. So we studied that. And there's a tiny, 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 tiny minuscule percentage of legitimate transgendered individuals in our society but now due to all of this this trendy stuff now everybody's jumping on the bandwagon now you've got kids in school when they're supposed to be studying saying oh i identify as a unicorn you have to call me a unicorn today and if you don't you've got a, a principal breathing down your neck saying that you have to that's happened to my son so that's where to me I, i'm starting to see mental illness happen i'm starting to see a trend of let's just jump on this whether it's true or not and let's put push buttons and let's get attention but i mean being transgender is actually already studied in psychology it's gender dysphoria and it's a real thing where they legitimately feel like the opposite sex and i'm not saying that you're wrong with people maybe jumping on the bandwagon but in the united states i believe i could be i don't know the exact t statistic but i believe it's 0.04 percent of people in the united states are transgender so, legit yes right. and that's that's a very 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 minuscule amount of people so and i don't believe in transition i think it should be up to the parents what they want to do and having them you know go to therapy and go do those things in order to figure out whether it is just like a bandwagon thing and they're just hopping onto it or if they legitimately are and that it is something that they need to process and go through and talk to someone and maybe they are somebody that needs to transition later in life and that should be their choice the bandwagon stuff is scary especially when you've got california trying to create laws where if your five-year-old comes to you and says i feel mm -hmm. like a boy today but that but biologically it's your little girl the that the lawmakers would actually start making you put into motion biological changes and changing their hormones. Okay, but I think that there's like a huge misconception with that because there's so many steps before it comes to hormone blockers or anything like that. Like they have to see a psychologist, they have to go through therapy to determine if they actually are transgender. Are so I think that's like, just, that's like a huge misconception in the media and like propaganda of them putting that out there. You are 100% right because it is, they are, blowing this out of proportion and scaring parents into believing that that's what's actually happening that they are like the second that your child says that they're the opposite gender that they feel that way that they're immediately being sent to doctors in order to completely change their sex and that's just not happening I, I, hope, I hope that that's like the case that it's like not actually that you know you have to you're legally required to go straight to hormone blockers but even if it's the case that the first thing is oh put them into therapy even if that's like the first tiny step it does i don't i'm pretty sure there's no law if your six-year-old 12-year-old five-year-old comes to you and says i want to kill myself today no parents are re legally required to put their kids in therapy Maybe so i'm kind be. of confused <laughs> i know so i'm just saying are grooming. we really curious about the kids best interest because i feel like there should be there should have been tens of if that's if that's how radical we want to go with it why are there not like hundreds of other laws already in there about like if your kid comes to you and says i want to kill myself you're legally required to put them in therapy okay. i feel like it's, on. I feel like it's on. because Moving they're grooming on. Moving on. All right, guys, I got to get a couple chats out of the way. We have Mr. Lamavi Slavic. The full moon controls the tides just as the water in our bodies ebbs and flows with the lunar cycle. And just as the sun gives birth to creation each day, so too does it give birth to potential for growth and transformation within us. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. No idea what the fuck that, any of that meant. Beautiful words. <laughs> Uh, Doc Venablis, question to the sex workers. Do you really think that the men you attract outside of your work are, go are going to be mentally healthy and don't confuse mentally unhealthy with insecure? Candace, you are the bomb. Sorry, man. Yeah, she left, but uh, yeah, go ahead. 
Um, as somebody that's been in a relationship with a very, very normal person for the last year and a half, he is very mentally healthy. He is probably the most kind, patient, um, honestly, just one of the most amazing men I've ever met. He is, you know, it, it almost feels like he's gone to therapy for years. I don't know. He just knows how to handle situations. He knows how to handle conversations or difficult conversations I, he's just an absolutely wonderful human being I don't have anything bad to say if anything <laughs> I don't deserve him for sure but yeah I have a very mentally healthy boyfriend and I think it's very possible for sex workers to find those people and I have friends that have as well I literally wouldn't be anywhere without him I love him he's great and he's a great person just because I'm a sex worker doesn't mean that I'm not deserving of that any response to the question um, we are just as deserving as having a healthy relationship with somebody that we love. I'm trying to think what would be the mere opposite if I were to rephrase, what would a, what's the equivalent, would the girls date a sex worker? I, that's not <laughs> a fair, hold on, that's not a fair equivalent. Like a dude who doesn't have a job? I don't that's, know. That's, that's, because then they're not making money, what? that's completely different. Yeah. But what is the mirror opposite? Like, uh, let's say among men who would view someone who does sex work as, among the men who would view someone who does sex work as not desirable for a partner, what would be the mirror opposite? Like, what profession or career would women, like podcast Why isn't it hosts? the same? I was about to say podcast, podcast, podcast hosts. Yeah, yeah, I preempted it. I knew y'all yeah, were going to come for me. I knew you were coming for me. These toxic like podcasts. The, it, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the equivalent these, All these maybe white maybe men like, with their like podcasts. You would it's the same worker. equivalent, just flipped. Why Why do we, why is it? Yeah, why is it not yeah. the same way? Would it be the same way? Yeah. Yeah. Why would it not be? I don't know if it's a total, like, mirror opposite, though. You know, so men can be sex workers and everything's good and fine and they're yeah, cool. Right? Well, no, 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 that's not that's not what I'm really getting at. I guess I'm more so getting at no. in the same way that I think men care more about women's promiscuity than the reverse. Not to say that there's definitely women out there that don't want to date a guy who's promiscuous or who has a high body count. But I do think, generally speaking, women tend to care a bit less or a bit less than men do when it comes to body count promiscuity. I mean, I'm just different because I do care. I don't think I... You wouldn't date a sex worker? Bro, you do yeah. sex work, huh? Yeah, but I have restrictions. I do. I post lingerie. I wouldn't oh. date a man who posts his nudes on the internet. You, but if I, he did what lingerie. If yeah. What if he did lingerie? If he did lingerie, it'd be okay. If he was doing the same things, I would... That's why I don't want to be a hypocrite. So I'm doing the things that I would allow huh. my partner to do as well. What if it was like nude but no not, nude. not sex just doesn't nude, matter just peeing no nude no pee pee swinging in the air <laughs> no god no okay no. okay so then you wouldn't date a okay all right i feel like this is a men uh, this is a lie a lot of men tell each other the idea that like oh men can like sleep around a bunch or like have a bunch of like you know girlfriends and women won't care maybe you'll find a woman who doesn't care but i think most huh? women like don't want that well that's not really what i said Oh no, I, I'm, sorry, I'm not saying you okay. specifically. I'm saying that like this is a sentiment I've heard from, from other people. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Right. Yo, uh, I feel like maybe the reverse could just be guys who use like who like subscribe to like sex workers. Oh. Do you know? I feel like that's the opposite. Like in my head, could be. Which I would like not be okay with. I. But I don't know if that's technically the opposite. Yeah. Because you're like seeking like those both men are would be seeking it out. like. Both are like types of boundaries though, that like mm -hmm. if the guy doesn't want his woman being shown to a bunch of dudes for money, I don't want my partner being like paying to be shown a bunch of women for but like I, his money. Again, I think the difference is that men are that, that are subscribing to OnlyFans are like going to seek out a sex worker. They're like actively seeking that out and that connection with somebody else, whereas somebody that's doing it as a job, like is we're like, not seeking out the men that are coming to but us. But they're still yeah. like, <laughs> Selling no, out their sexuality. I feel like that's like Here, still let's, like, pretty, uh, let's, like a boundary uh, thing. Yeah, let's just move on. Uh, rare. I don't know how to pronounce your name, man. But hey, thank you. Uh, you always talk about World of Warcraft. Why not raise the topic of the Illidan, Illidan funeral raid? Oh, on the realm Illidan. I, they would not. I, it's no. just <laughs> it. No. I will say though, would any of you guys date a? Uh, World of Warcraft gamer like 10 hours a day 
I did. No. You did? Anybody did. here? Show of hands. Show of hands, ladies. No. I did. Is he doing it professionally? Yeah, is it his job? Is he getting paid? To no, do it? he's just a. Oh, that's the no. I dated someone doing it he's for a, work. He, he's an amateur. He does it for the <laughs> love of the game. He doesn't Hell care about no. the money or the accolades. <laughs> he wants the glory. He wants the epic loots, Does son. He, have he a wants the job? purples. Huh? Does he have a different job? If he's working yeah, 10 guess. hours for this he game, does he have time okay, for another right. job? Right. Time does he for work out? All right. And, <laughs> wait, not Jack donated 100. Thank you, man. Much appreciated. Only Toes, thank you for all the uh, gifted subs on uh, Twitch. And also, thank you to erudite not so what's her oh not so erudite yeah she rated us on twitch i oh, i missed yeah, it earlier you should have her on she's really oh, i'll shout out the twitch people really quick yo devosh thank you for the oh i already oh, read Vosh. some of these uh big fella thank you for the prime not so erudite thank you for the raid bayleaf thank you for the prime only toes thank you for the 10 community subs appreciate it guys follow us twitch.tv slash whatever drop us a prime sub if you have one we have this guy hold on uh, uh. She literally doesn't know what she's talking about. My best friends are black. I don't act black. Whoa. Oh, my God. Are you a <laughs> racist? I literally oh said you God. need a historical claim. Like, hello. That goes, that, he's proving my point. <laughs> Pixie, wow. Uh, you guys caught me, you know? What if you wow. were, like, adopted <laughs> by a... By a black family. That's, you're still missing the historical claim, right? You're still not what black. His, wait, what historical claim? <laughs> no, I know. That of your, like, ancestry. What do you mean? That your ancestry, you know, like slavery is that what you're talking about? Like your ancestry. She's the one who said slavery. That your ancestry earlier. belonged to whatever culture you're claiming oh, to be a part okay. of. Oh, okay. I thought you were bringing the slavery thing back no, into it again. No, no. <laughs> okay, all right. We have a couple more chats. We have, wait, hold on. Uh, we have goodest boy. If Pixie's confused on Jow, how to define trans men, man slash women, then how the hell are the rest of us? supposed to figure it out without offending or catching a charge i'm not offended am i catching how did charge. i come off as offended like i don't oh, know your lips quivering a little bit <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding just terrified without offending i like, think they're offending a, like the, like her person a transgender, a way, yeah. a transgender yeah. person oh. like misgendering them or something yeah no i think um from my personal experience it's completely anecdotal most of the trans people i've met like if I've misgendered them or whatever, they never like really get upset at me. They're like, oh, I prefer if you call me this. Mm -hmm. And then if you keep, if you're kind of an asshole and you're like, no, I'm gonna call you whatever I want, deal with it or whatever. Then they're like, okay, fuck you, I'm going, bye. Go ahead. I heard that there's like a state where you can get fined $10,000 for misgendering somebody. Mm. That like too. Michigan sure. or Which something like that. Where's that? Cause but I've, I've never heard that. Yeah, is this true? In mm -hmm. the US? Yes. Mm. That sounds. Maybe. Can, I, can I look it up on my phone? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. All right, we have Yvonne. Uh, just save it. Oh, thanks, Chris. I'm thank not you, sure thank if you, that Chris. Was You're the homie. I think that was a bill they were trying. Yvonne, to how? Yo, you, can you please tell me how to pronounce your name? Because I, I don't like to, I, I, I don't like to fuck it up. Oh wait, let me read this one. Again, she is lost. Haven't lived with my parents since 16. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's related, Pixie. <laughs> wait, what? Was he has not lived, lived with his parents since he was 16. Who? This guy. Cool. You can, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, cool. Awesome. Good Sweet. for you. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Uh, how do you? I found the article. Whenever, what if what you is wanna, it? Really quick. Do you want to? Oh, I'll, yeah, sure. We need to fix your screen. Uh, it's fixed. It's just the screen protector. I know. We got to get you a new no, one. No, I don't want none. <laughs> you like it all busted like this? Okay. <laughs> Mich Michigan House passes a bill that could make unless you want to give using me a new one. Wrong pronouns. I'm not sure about that. Uh, wrong pronouns of felony, finable up to 10,000. But then it gets website. signed into was law? It, was it oh, passed? this is Fox uh, News. Yeah, it says passes bill. I would no, have to read it. The House passes a bill. But then it has to go. It has to, yeah, it has, it has to, to get, signed. and then by the governor, I yes. think, yeah, so. But they did pass, I mean, it, it is That's, in the. Wow. Yeah. Could, That's making, crazy. using I wonder, wrong pronouns of felony? Wait. But it could be, there's also like, I've heard stories about this, and sometimes it's within the confines of like, if you're working for, it might not be like to right. every citizen, yeah. it might just be like if you're in a healthcare setting. In any case, I still think in a he healthcare setting, that's yeah. ridiculous, but. I've read about. Um, the fuck was that? Yeah. <laughs> did, is Nick Googling something? <laughs> Don't, it, I did. 
Uh, uh, the Fox News article? Yeah. Uh, we'll pull it up really quick. Oh. Why not? Oh, uh, it's gone. Oh, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. We have... Oh. Wait. Did that... We wait. read that one. No, yeah. no, no, no. No. No, I think he sent it twice, oh, the madman. Yeah. He sent it twice, the madman. Okay. <laughs> no, he's uh, explaining can you tell his me? previous... Oh, okay. Comment. Sorry. Hey, dude, sorry we weren't able to get to it, unfortunately. She did have to uh, get out of here. But um, the correlation of Lyndon B. Johnson with men being in relationships with OnlyFans women is the fact that these men did not have an everyday father figure to steer them away from such women. True or false? What does it have to do with Lyndon B. Johnson? I'm so confused. <laughs> so confused. George Classic Washington male answer. would not have approved of your <laughs> lifestyles, okay? The motherfucking That's cherry a tree. Male answer. The fucking cherry tree was a disgrace. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Okay. Uh, anyway. You have, can you please, please just send another chat, though? I really want to know how to pronounce your name because <laughs> it's confusing to me. Okay. Uh, the cast man. Thank you, man. You don't. Th thank you very much, guys. Uh, you don't need to check someone's biology to know if someone is a man or a woman. I can tell based on body shape, like all other sane people. Also, if sex and gender are not the same, why do men cut their D's off to become women? It's gender, not sex affirming care. Yeah. It looks like you have the second half. I, I like honestly, I was so clocked into the first part, but the first part I know for a fact is not true because there are plenty of situations that have already happened where somebody thought that they could clock somebody that was trans and they were co completely incorrect. There are women that have masculine features and they look more masculine and they are still women. And same with the opposite. People can be androgynous just because your body shape doesn't look particularly feminine doesn't mean you're not a woman and are a trans person. That's just a load of BS. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is. Yeah, period. <laughs> she ate that. I feel like I'd be very skilled at identifying. You would think women? that, but there would Man? be there wouldn't be there people that are coming in, not including breasts. That could be a YouTube video. I mean, I I've done a body shape though, because I feel like you, a woman, you only wouldn't be able to tell was a woman if she like was completely flat chested. Well, there are women that have broad shoulders. There are women that are have Pretty a more flat. masculine build. I mean, like every we come in all shapes and sizes. I mean, this has already happened that yeah. people have not been able to tell. So, there have been women that have gotten arrested breasts, for using the women's restroom because someone thought they were trans and they were actually just a masculine presenting woman. So I'm gonna, like, you, you can't tell. Men wouldn't be crying about being tricked or whatever if they right. were clocking them 100% of the time. It's just not accurate. They tricked them. How do you pronounce this guy's name? <laughs> Is that how you pronounce your name? Can you please clarify? Okay, thank you, man. Uh, okay, I got a couple questions here for the panel so olivia muscle worship huh what the what is that you, you, in your pre-show notes to us you said something about muscle worship i was recently asked to go to to go uh, do a muscle worship dom session where i beat him up and i licked his veins oh yeah what happened there this is wild guys do you have are you a muscle so I do, I got, do fitness competitions. Can we see the, oh, the tries, okay. Yeah. We got, oh, the lats pretty good too. Don't, don't, Thank don't you. sleep on her lats. <laughs> so Solid I do line. fitness competitions and I lift Can we really. see a bicep? Yeah. All right, okay, there. Um, so you beat the dude up. How much, does that cost extra to beat a dude up it, or is it, it almost? Is. It's a specialty. It's, okay. So yeah, um, it's interesting. And then after I did that, um, it got some fanfare on um, Twitter. And then these dominatrix had me on their uh, Spotify podcast. But this gentleman got a hold of me and said it's due to your physique. But I I like women who are really ripped. It'd be even better if you were even more ripped on like steroids, which I thought was you fascinating. Can, Nick, leave it. Oh fuck. Okay, never mind. Okay. Keep and going. he, yeah. And so he wanted to lick my veins and he wanted me to choke him. Um, I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a while, so I would kind of initiate the rear naked choke on him. And he was fully erect, just loving it. And so, I mean, it just kind of went like that. And mm. he totally got off on it. I, I got it, Nick. Hold on. I got it. Start again. Um, okay. We can start however you want. No, I, I heard it. Okay. <laughs> so it, it's a, it's a fetish thing and it, it's fascinating Sorry. there's a whole world of guys that <laughs> yeah 
that want that want this. So it, it's it's psychologically interesting for me because here he is getting erect and he's enjoying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this. So I'm having to gauge, and then I'll go kind of like really Hurrah! sensual. Oh. <laughs> I have a question for the both of you. So disclaimer for the viewers, for the ladies here, I would never do this. Let me paint a scenario, and I want you to tell me how much it would cost to hire one of you um, courtesans to fulfill my hypothetical fantasy. What if I wanted to play chess with you while watching The Lion King, and then afterwards I wanted to engage in a joust? (laughs) Fully clothed, what is the cost for that? Or are you just down to do it for free? Because that shit sounds kind of fun. <laughs> is that like a whole night? Or how long? Like a I'm solid... Gonna... I think that would take about 70 minutes. Maybe 90 minutes. Well, legally, wow. legally? technically, Technic- hmm? we can't disclose the... pricing. Hold on. It's not... There's no sex, okay? <laughs> I just want to play Lexi, right? I would love to spend a night with you, play some chess watch The Lion King, and then fucking joust you, son. What? I'd have to it's take a, a 10%. Percent, I'd, it's 10%. A four, in the four-figure range, and I'd have to take a 10% deposit to book that appointment. Four figures? Yes. What if I around, provide the horses? Around that. There's horses. There's, yeah, it's a joust. Do I have to pay for, like, uh, health insurance in case you health get insurance. fucked up? In the joust. In the joust. <laughs> or during chess. You never know. I have my own. But I have been known to violently throw chess pieces. <laughs> what, how much would it cost? It's, it, we're looking at um, a four figure. Four figure? Yeah. It's like a, a ma- thousand smackaroos? A thousand bucks? For the amount of time that you're talking? Yeah. Go up. 70, bit, but like, oh, wow. Okay, you guys. We're must... high end. Yeah. Legal. Oh. Okay. I would do it for a $2 bill and like a 12 pack of pizza rolls. <laughs> we can. Uh, talk after the show you should stream it (laughs) that would be good that would be good okay um i don't know i go into the most ridiculous places okay so um i had oh chats right i think or are we caught up on the chats here spooter guy yo thank you man appreciate it rav 805 says cringe i don't know if i don't think that's in response to my ridiculous scenario but okay we have uh to she's saying she's an idiot I don't know who. I don't, I don't know who he's talking about. Oh, well, what's that guy? I don't know how to. I still don't know how she to pronounce your name, dude. Please tell me how to pronounce your name. Uh, and then we have not Jack, coming up here in just a sec. 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 <laughs> excuse me. Not Jack says since the dawn of time, female promiscuity has been abhorred, even to the point where women were killed for it. Get the stones. It's still frowned upon in most of the world today. So why in the West? Are we going to pretend that it's now okay? Also, lose the cross, witch. Do you have anything to say to him? He just insulted you or complimented you. I, I take that as a compliment. It's also, by the way, it's not a cross. I was it's just, a sword? It's a sword. Okay, you were just... <laughs> you were trying to get under his skin. It's so totally a sword, girl. Yeah. It's not even a cross. Oh, okay. I know. Content, I, I guess. I the profession empowering. So I'm really glad that it's not the opposite. Where Wait, we're getting I stoned found, to I, death? No, I mean, I, yeah, I find our profession empowering. Oh, okay. Uh, Azalia, <laughs> you were on the show before, had lots of disagreements there. Uh, what was the big thing that I... Th- oh, we, my God, we are not doing this tonight. Do we're what? not doing what, what this tonight. We, what? I love it. What were we... Because I would take it back anyways. I, like, looped myself into something, and I couldn't go back on it, so I was Wait, just doubling down. No, but I, honestly, I don't... I... <laughs> we, were, we were talking about who has a harder time in, like, getting... Not getting sex. Laid. Was yeah. it specifically getting sex laid, or, getting, yeah. or dating? I, I thought it was dating laid. in general. Well, I think it was... It could have been both. We might have been yeah. talking about who is dating harder for men or women, right. and then da- uh, getting laid, who has it harder. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. what it was. Wait, so hold on, you're backing, you're walking I, back. I'm wa- I'm walking back. No, come uh, on. But but okay, but but you have to under, you have to hear me out. I okay. I don't disagree with everything I said. I do think that women do go up to men in bars and they actually like do talk to them and ask men out. I would say okay, you're correct in your erroneous, <laughs> erroneous. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. Oh. No no no, but, but like the. But, but what I'm okay. walking back is my 
point in saying that was I think that dating is more difficult for men and they have less options because of the way that they treat women and these boxes that they place women in. And that was my Erroneous. point. Erroneous. Erroneous. <laughs> I, I disavow. Dis <laughs> wait, what? I was going to say, I think um, dating is also is harder for women in the sense, in the sense, context, right? Wait, a little posture check just so yeah. we can get you closer oh, to the mic. Yeah, it's all good. Um, I think dating is harder for women in the sense that it's like, oh, women are socially conditioned to like fear and be wary of men. So, you know, every single time a guy comes up and does the courage to ask a girl out, she has to go through like a million possibilities of like, can I trust him? Is he safe? Is he going to put something in my drink? If I don't reject him in the right way, is he going to get aggressive? Is he going to call me a bitch? Blah, blah, blah. So I think like that makes dating really difficult for women. But I think ultimately it affects both negatively because now everyone's paranoid and worried about each other. I mean, like, I we literally see. just saw that on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. The like, this week, the brick hurt around the world. A you woman, didn't see that? A woman oh. rejected a guy and she, he hit her in the oh, face yes. with a brick. Yeah. Well, on a, oh. Wait, do we see the video? Like, do you actually see the video of her there's, getting hit? There's, like, she there's takes the video immediately in the hospital. after. There's, it's in the hospital, but she definitely got clocked. Well, there's brick. another video of her after right after it, it happened. happened. Yeah. I. I saw the photo of the injury, and then she, I think I saw the video where she was blaming men for having not protected her in the situation but then i saw a video she had released either right before she went out where she was basically talking shit about men and then and then she was like but i also saw wait no 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 hold on there was another video that came out where fuck what did she do she like slapped a guy. she slapped a guy oh, that's dumb. It was or a something. skit, though. What? Oh, it was it? a skit. All of her content prior to that, they were skits. It even said in her bio, like, all work is consensual, blah, blah, blah. Well, she so, could say that as, like, I, a plausible denied, like, but... It looked like a skit. <laughs> like this, It looks like she hit him pretty fucking hard, if I recall. I, I mean, it could be a kink thing. Who knows? I don't know. Like, but again, when she's in the situation, I, the people that are... for him to, like, throw a woman, a brick at her. You, do no, you, no, but do you but think that's well, acceptable? Well, like, well, obviously, it's not. I'm just saying. I'm just making the point of like, why? Well, like, I don't, well, I don't I even know it's anything a about. Her. I'm, trying to, I'm not trying to defend yeah. this guy for like throwing a brick if, at her, but I'm just like, if it's maybe a kink, it's a kink. Like, I don't know. But I if think it's that's consensual, like if it's consensual and she's hitting him in the face and that's what he wants, that's completely different than her saying, "No, I don't want your number," and somebody picking up a brick and smashing her in the yeah, face. Those yeah, are two completely different scenarios. Yeah, like they're not even comparable. If it is a kink, but you were just like throwing it out there because it could be. If it's consensual, we don't. But it's a skit, so. Okay. Obviously, what? the slap yeah. was consensual, whether it was a kink or not. The way she was acting in the video, she seemed pretty fucking loose. Not in a sexual sense, but, like, loose in her behavior. Like, I mean, if you're acting like a justify? fucking I don't think, yeah, that no, doesn't I'm not justify it, that. No, I'm not saying it, it justifies anybody being physically assaulted, but if you're acting like a fucking lunatic, like, there's other crazy people out there that don't, have the like that that don't abide by the social contract contract and if you tread on them in any way they're going to be like fuck this person i'm a smash them in the face nazis of the brick should get punched <laughs> like, what's that do you not do you believe in, wait do you believe in not, that nazis should get punched out of curiosity do i believe uh this this is an interesting question um well i don't think that I object to Nazis, certainly. Um, do I think we'd have to define specifically what you mean by Nazi and then what are they saying? But across the board, I'm against physical violence. Okay, so you agree with the brick scenario? It's like you're against it, right? I'm against it, but like, is it shocking to me if you go out in public and you're like talking shit to people? Mm -hmm. I don't know what this woman did, so I, I'm only speculating. I saw one video where she was really act. It seemed like she was acting very, very wild. If you go out in public, I don't know if she was in some like bar environment where alcohol is involved. Like, if you're acting like a fucking moron in an environment where people are drinking heavily and you're like antagonizing people, not everybody has their head screwed on straight. So Especially you got to like, drinking. like, there's a lot of. I mean. <laughs> There's a lot of violence when you're out at bars and clubs. People constantly get into fights. If it wasn't the case, they wouldn't need bouncers. They wouldn't need securities in nightclub environments. So she was out uh, night on the town. 
Um, again, I don't know the full details. I don't know the full context of what happened. I didn't see all the videos. I did see a video. She was acting like pretty out of pocket with some of her shit. So should she have been physically assaulted? No, but like if it's not surprising, does that make sense? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, I, yeah, sure. It, it, I, I see where you're coming from. I agree with like, you. Like if I, if I go to a dangerous neighborhood and I'm an, antagonizing the right. people in the neighborhood, like you're asking for it. I'm ask like it's uh, no. I agree with you. I'm just curious. We can't really say anything without the full context, right? So right. That's a problem. Yeah, I I only I didn't see yeah. the full video. So, anyways, because I'd, because of what she's saying is accurate. Obviously, again, we don't know. But if what she's saying is accurate, and a man asked her for her phone number and she rejected him, and his response was to pick up a brick and hit her in the face, I think that there is no justification whether right. her prior content pictured her slapping men consensually or whatever the case may be it doesn't justify it obviously those men don't know that she has these skits online and that that's the type of person she is when she got hit in the face so there is no right. justification of it if, right if the if the details are guy approached her she reject she rejected him he picks up her brick and smashes her in the face absolutely wrong right if, if a girl rejects you oh hey nice to meet you have a good night yeah. like that's it Let's just move on, you know. And I, All yeah. right. I mean, Here, I, I guess but let's let's move on from that. It's kind of irrelevant. Well, it's but what I was unrelated. Uh, well, let me just. Re oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just have I have one more thing to say because related we were just, to related to the brick. Thing, well, or? it's tying back into what we were talking about before. Okay, just that's ahead. why um, what she was saying about women when we get approached in bars or whatever, because we do have to have that process and that analysis of like the potential things that could possibly happen when a man asks to take us out or get our phone number or whatever the case may be. So that's the only thing I wanted to say, and that's why your point made sense and why we brought it up in the first place, but we just have let, to think about it. Let that. me ask you a question, Pixie. So if I went out to like a, a bar mm -hmm. and I walked up to a guy, with not threatening physical violence, but I just started calling him a pussy over and over, you might say that it would be wrong for him to physically attack me, but should I be surprised if he does. <laughs> no, like that's, yeah. 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 So, um, you know, um, okay. So <laughs> like, I wouldn't be surprised. Like if I just walked yeah. up to a big dude and I was like, dude, you're a fucking pussy. Some like, I'm like, there's a pretty good chance. You're like gonna get hit. Gonna, yeah. I might get hit. Should, get hit. should I get hit? No, but I shouldn't be surprised when I do. Um, so let's see, we have a couple chats here. We have, Teleher, sorry, uh, it's German, first initial, last name. Oh, Leher, 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 T Leher. Uh, last name is pronounced like dragon's lair, to layer, to layer. Last name literally means teacher, specifically a male che teacher. Well, uh, Donka Shine for the uh, donation, man, much appreciated. Let's see here, we have, wait, hold on. I'm trying to pull up my notes here. Uh, wait, what was it? Did you have something? I, you had something. I know you I had, had something. I had messaged you? Or? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was so long ago. <laughs> I have a question for you. Yes, go ahead. I know previously on the show, you've really like been adamant about the fact that you don't want to be married. Yeah. Right? But did you see, um, I was watching the Andrew Tate interview with Candace Owens. Uh -huh. And in it, she asked him, would you ever consider getting married? And he says... If you asked me like 10 years ago, I would say no, but now I'm not opposed to it. So I was wondering what your thoughts on that were. Okay, it's interesting. It's, so when it comes to Andrew Tate, first off, he says 10 years ago, but he did an interview on your mom's house podcast where, and this must have been, it was within the past two years he did this interview, I think. Um, and he was very, as recently as two years ago, very much against marriage for some of the same reasons that I've articulated on this show. Um, but so your question to me is, what, why am I against marriage or? Yeah, I guess, are you like persuaded at all by, he seems to have been persuaded away. Cause when he was giving his answers, I was like, oh my God, that sounds exactly like what Brian mm. says for all of the reasons that you give yeah. for why you're against marriage. Sure. But then he says to Candace that he has changed his mind and now would be open mm. to it. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe you've found your thoughts changing at all? Sure, well, I mean, I, I think I can 
say this about T Andrew Tate is he uh, he was an atheist and then he became Christian and then he converted or I think they, they call it reversion Do you, are you familiar with that well in any case he reverted to Islam and he became a Muslim uh, and I think him getting very much involved with religion has reshaped his view on marriage um, but I don't think it dis I don't think that dismisses some of the concerns he previously raised or some concerns that I've raised in the past. Um, so, you know, I actually, it's, it's not so much that I have a problem with marriage, it's that I have a problem with divorce. Mm. So marriage is yeah, wonderful. Yeah, that's true. It's just, it's divorce a Divorce is, have to like but obviously, make a good choice. but obviously if you get married, one of the potential negative outcomes from that would be uh, divorce. Now, from a religious perspective, I don't object to divorce at all, but when it comes to, you know, m most marriages, you go to the courthouse, you go to the state, you get a marriage license, that gives you certain benefits, but um, I'm very much against it because in divorce, you have alimony. Uh, if there's a divorce, not, uh, let's say the, whoever's the breadwinner, you got to pay for your own lawyer. You got to pay for their lawyer. It's just very financially risky. It's yeah. very expensive. And al alimony comes in. We have Kevin Costner, who we're in Santa Barbara. Uh, they're in the Santa Barbara courthouse because the divorce is being overseen by uh, the county of Santa Barbara. Uh, they just awarded his wife like 100, I don't know the exact number, $150,000. This isn't exact, guys. Don't quote me. But around $150,000 a month in uh, child support. And the, you hear all these stories of these, you know, celebrities, obviously I know celebrities aren't perfect examples, but you hear, or just even wealthy people, and they get destroyed in marriage. The alimony, the contentious divorce, he, you gotta pay for both the lawyers, it's, it's absurd. Do you think if you fell in love with a girl who was who really wanted to get married maybe because she was religious maybe she's not religious and marriage is just important to her do you think you would consider it or do you think still you know it's still a hard no no matter what there's no open door there's more there's no open to it no matter who the partner is because I'm assuming you're not you know you're not foolish you're not gonna marry any just any woman if you were to get married it would be with someone you're very certain about and think would be a good choice but basically are you open to it at all especially if it was important to a woman you cared about? I mean, it would... Or is it just you think me, well, me, it's a deal breaker? Well, me caring, caring about a woman does nothing to remedy my concerns when it comes to divorce. Um, I wouldn't... I, I don't want to 100% rule out marriage, but this woman would have to be so compelling... Like, I would have to be so sure. The largest labia ever. I was about ever. to say the same thing. Oh, is that, what, is that what you were... No, it's, I have something else to say, but I was about to say that, too. Um, I guess my question would be... I'll answer your question, oh, but go ahead. Sorry. I was just about to say, what about if you got a prenup? Because well, prenup. then... Okay, yep. Pre that could prenups. take away some of the financial aspect of the divorce and kind of keep sure. you in the clear if that happened. How, what if you fell in love with a woman and she was okay with doing that? Would that be something then that you might be more inclined to consider? Okay, so as far as the prenup goes, no prenup is going to save you if the woman is motivated enough because all she has to say is, well, I was coerced into it and, um, you know, I... I um, I thought he would, you know, not want to, you know, stay with, you know, whatever. So you can make up a whole bunch of stuff. They're going to, here's the thing. Uh, Kevin Costner, um, who had a prenup, ironclad prenup, had lawyers review it. It wasn't just some, oh, let's download a prenup from the internet. No, he, uh, Kevin Costner had prenups drafted up by probably the most competent lawyers in California. Um, maybe, I don't know if they were in Santa Barbara and it doesn't really matter. Um, and his wife is challenging the prenup in court. So even if there is a prenup, and even, even if the prenup is rock solid, there's still an opening for a woman to challenge the prenup. And th that opens up, okay, cool, let's litigate it. I still have to pay for your attorney, so now I'm paying for my attorney to defend the prenup, which, which we agreed to, and I have to pay for your attorney who's litigating this. Um, basically with Kevin Costner, uh, very wealthy actor. Um, he's got like a 
I don't know, $10 million, $15 million property in Montecito, just outside of Santa Barbara. Um, the prenup said that if she initiated a divorce, she'd have to move out of the family house. She would get $1.5 million uh, just immediately, uh, but that would be the extent of any sort of alimony payments, I think. So right now she's just going after child support uh, so the kids can keep up their lives to the tune of $150,000 a month. Um, so prenups constantly get challenged uh, and sometimes even thrown out. We had this happen with Dr. Dre. He had a prenup. Uh, prenup prenups are not ironclad. And like I said, if you are motivated enough as a, as a woman, you can just... It's not, a prenup is not going to save you financially if she's motivated enough. Or he's motivated. Sure. Let's, let's well, sure, but you're, no, 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 sure, but you're asking, we are you're asking about, you. yeah. about my specific, and I wouldn't marry a man, so. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I would just also say you just never sign a contract with someone who is rewarded for breaking it. So uh, marriage is a contract. Again, I don't object to it from a religious perspective. Like getting married, cool, that's, that's wonderful. However, uh, and I've, I kind of always say this, but if your wife decides to divorce you, she's not going to turn to her religion to, pr to help preside over the divorce. She's going to go to the state, and the state presides ultimately over the financial components of your marriage. So this idea that, okay, we'll just marry a really religious woman. Well, okay. When you get a divorce, she's not going to God. She's, she's not going to her pastor. She's not going to her priest. She's not going to the church. She's going to the state. You're saying when, though. So I personally, I think if you are open to the possibility of divorce, you shouldn't get married in the first place. So I guess my assumption here is you're going into, I wouldn't, it's a hard no on marriage because there's a possibility of divorce. She could divorce me and then the risk is too much. I just, personally, I, I honestly just don't think, like, if you are open to the idea of divorce, I don't think you should be getting married. I think you should be doing can, the can coupling. I, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. can I, and I'll, I'll try to reel you guys in here in a sec. Um, would you want your doctor to disclose to you, let's say you're about to undergo uh, a procedure, a surgery, would you want your d doctor to disclose to you the uh, p potential complications of undertaking the procedure? In fact, they're legally compelled to disclose. Yeah. But I assume you'd want your doctor to tell you, well, uh, there's a 10% chance of this. You're going to have yeah. X, Y, Z. Yeah. Uh, there's a chance of, it depends on the fucking procedure. You know, you could have whatever. I you get where you're imagine. going. It just comes down to picking a good partner. So if you're thinking of, I'm assuming here, you, you would only ever get married if you genuinely, this isn't just because like you're like, oh, I got no other, like I'm bored, like I don't want to be lonely, I'm going to do this because I'm just like afraid to, like I don't want to be not married. Mm -hmm. I mean like I'm, I'm assuming you would only marry someone if you were, if you knew for certain their values, you knew them very well, you knew they themselves were not open to the possibility of divorce. Sure, but let me ask you a question. Um, how many people who do get married think that exact same way about their partner? Um, how many people who get married think, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this person? How many people think when they are getting married, yeah, we're probably going to be divorced? Like most people, I assume, Honestly, going into marriage. I think, I think the possibility of divorce is very present to the majority of people nowadays who are getting married. Think of like Imrata, who Candace mentioned. She's, you know, the idea of making it trendy to be divorced by 30. If divorce is normalized, what I'm saying is open to the possibility of divorce. Clearly, the majority of people are very open to the possibility of divorce if it's a trendy thing okay, or I, super normalized sure. to get divorced, is what I mean. Is what I mean. Are you, sorry, are you planning to have children or no? Good I'd question. Like, I'd like to have sorry. children. Do you think that being in a two-parent household that's like married is better than like a non-married household? Um, I suppose there are certain... Uh, like tax benefits, I guess, if you're married that are, in my view, fairly minimal, um, I guess because you could file your taxes a little differently. The only other benefit that I see is when it comes to your estate, if you die and you're married, I don't, but I'm not, I'm not an estate attorney, so I, I don't know, but it's not clear to me. Let me paint a scenario for everybody. I know I'll, I'll get you in and I'll get you in here in just a sec. 
Let me paint a scenario, right? So you got two couples. Uh, one gets married, one doesn't. They stay together for their entire lives. They both have three children. There's no infidelity, they're monogamous. What's the difference? Yeah, no, I don't think, um, what is Anybody? it? Anybody? What's the, like, I, I don't see the difference in term, like, if we're speaking on yeah, no, the benefits, but there's, there's often this argument of, well, marriage is beneficial to society, but it's not clear, like, if you have, you could basically replicate exactly what you have in a marriage, stay together for the rest of your life, have kids, you don't need to be married to have kids. You don't need to be married to stay together for the rest of your life and be monogamous and love each other. So it's not clear to me, like, what, what is the benefit for marriage besides tradition and for religious reasons? I agree. Based. <laughs> Are you wanting to have, like, a, a wedding? Like, not saying, like, to get married and sign a contract. Waste of money. But yeah, you think this guy's spending money on a party. Waste of money. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you're going to actually get married. <laughs> Because I feel like the only if, if kind of rich, woman that you're going to be interested no in, Brian, is going to be, I feel like the only type of woman you would feel happy settling for, not just settling for, but being with, is a woman who takes things like marriage. Like, I just don't see you with a woman who's like atheist and wouldn't want to get married or like something uh, like that. Unless you sure see that for yourself. You can be religious be and not want to get married. Yeah, we're just yeah. religious and not want to get married. Anything I don't, like but, okay, so this kind of, like, if I can almost tie this into... Um, promiscuity, virginity, low body count a little bit, but so you're saying that the type of woman that I would be attracted to is likely to be religious. Yeah, I just feel like I, I mean, disagree because okay, well let's say if one let's say one of my standards or preferences are I mean, maybe I just don't know you that well, but maybe you don't. But uh, well, I think this idea that like conservative women or religious women have some like exclusive claim to. Um, virginity or non-promiscuity is kind of fallacious and fall wait, salacious fall no yeah. I th I think it's I think I uh well I think it's erroneous because I think like I think you can be a liberal or moderate or apolitical woman or even an atheist and have desirable uh traits and values what at least when it comes to like non-promiscuity not uh, having a low body count or even being a virgin. Now, do I think it's maybe the case that liberal women compared to conservative women, they're more likely to engage, like be promiscuous? I would promiscuous? just say it's more likely. Probably, but then there's a lot of, there are a fair amount of conservative women who they be fucking too. So, um, but I would say generally probably conservative women are probably lean more towards like Promise or not? Excuse me. Non-promiscuity, virginity, low body count, etc. So I don't think like just bringing back to what you said. I don't think that in order for me to find the type of girl that I want, she necessarily has to be yeah, conservative. No, definitely not. Or it's religious. just more likely. It's just honestly, especially today, I just genuinely think it's just more likely that she'll probably end up being religious and then probably care to get married. It's just like my guess. I mean, a lot of religious women, though, they got a past. I'm not saying yeah. all reli I'm not saying all girls who are religious or conservative are not promiscuous. I'm not saying all girls that are liberal or atheists are sluts. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's more. I mean, I've just found this personally in my own life. Like the closer I've gotten in my, the more religious I've become over time, the more like obvious and clear it is that promiscuity is bad and doesn't serve sure. me in the ways that maybe I felt like I was taught growing up. Yeah, it might be easier for me to find uh, a partner that that matches or meets my criteria or whatever who's religious. She, it, a religious woman might be more likely to fall within my criteria. Actually, speaking of which, Lily, um, last time you were on I the already, show... I already know what you're about to ask me. <laughs> yes, last time you were on the show... So okay, you're you're a you're Christian conservative, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you and last time on the show, you said you're waiting until marriage. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, but you said that this. I think you were on the show a month ago. Yeah, maybe? that I had a miss up. You had like, a miss mm -hmm. up. 
Yes, I did. It's a mess up. Like I, I made a promise to myself in the Lord months ago that I was going to save myself for marriage and start over and look for the man that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. And then there was a mistake. And I mean, I, admitting that is, I don't find shame in it either to also Wait, be. So you made a mistake. I, sl- I slept with somebody she in the time best. period that I promised that, that I wouldn't. Promise. And I made a mistake and I'm sinful. And, you know, I regret it. And of course I regret it because I made a promise to myself. I made a promise to the Lord. But Any updates? We asked, because I told you, you need to come back on in a month or two and give us an update. If you've stayed true. I have stayed true. You've stayed true. Okay. Why do you think that happened? What do you think influenced that for you? It was an ex-boyfriend, right? Oh, yes. And a lot of things just throughout my life, I feel like I've been seen as an object, being a woman, being somewhat attractive, and any relationship that I've ever been in or dated men, even on the internet, like getting direct messages and comments and stuff. I don't know, I just, I feel like an object and I don't want the person that I'm gonna be with to see me like that. And if they are wanting to be with me as a soul and take care of who I am as a person, they are gonna be willing to wait. Wait, I'm a little confused. You, what What is the object thing that you're talking about? I'm a little confused. Like a sexual like object. Like you view yourself no, as an object? No, men view me as a sexual object. And how that they, is. Object, Why, they objectify how? me. How so? They, like the, the they view you, me the, as a body in a meat bag and not as a person who has even a soul. The, wait, are you, are you talking about the men you've had relationships with? Yes. Even the men, the, the men you've had sex with and who you've had relationships with, mm-hmm. they view you as a... A meat bag? Absolutely. I've been in relationships with men who were they, narcissists they, and they sociopaths. That's not the first time I've heard and that. And they might not yeah. say that directly to you, but when you're in a relationship with somebody for three years and they're a sociopath, they say it in as many ways yeah, as they possibly can little, without saying it straight up. Yikes. I had a little guy that was like that little... It was like a, a little, little thing. Little well, a little guy. It was like a, a little, little thing. Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a, a situation ship. A shit situation. A shit yeah. situation. A shit That's a good one. A shitty shit shit situation. Yeah. Okay. And when you and I've been there with in situations where just dating I somebody disavow. and you find this trust with them and you're sleeping with them and you think that there's a commitment and all of a sudden there's not because they're disavow. a lot of men Wait. are using you and they're tempted so by you, lust with other things. Sorry, I didn't want to. No, it's okay. Um, so you had been a virgin up until a few months ago when you. No, I was born again. They people oh, say like okay. in Christian oh. terms, like Wait, born again. When when did you lose your virginity? At what age? I'm not sure. I, yeah. I don't want to disclose that. Honestly. Sure. Okay, that's fine. That's personal. I mean, I totally relate to what you're saying as far as men viewing you as an object. That's why I was celibate pretty much for years before yeah. I met my boyfriend. But Whether you found somebody that loves you and wants yeah, to cherish you. Yeah, well, and that's you. why, yeah. like, obviously it changed, mm-hmm. and he's wonderful, so I, I didn't want to wait till marriage. It wasn't like that for me, but I wanted to find somebody that respected me and would wait mm-hmm. and would hold out and wanted and liked me and as you a trust person. Him. Exactly. Yeah. Wanted me as a person because like you can't tell a lot of the time and then when you do withhold it you see like over those two years the amount of men i would date yeah they're like what do you mean what do you mean you i don't get to sleep what do you mean and they feel like entitled to to your your body body yes because yeah wait wait wait. can you just the the entitled to your body thing Mm -hmm. are you saying within a relationship yeah yes yes in a relationship or even when you're just starting to date somebody. I've yeah. been on dates with men only like a couple weeks in and they are assuming that it is, they're, they're getting something out of me. I'm like, dude. And the, <laughs> the amount of pressure that some of the men will put on you and is shame, so, like shame. It, was, it was actually insane when I did, like when I went celibate, how much pressure was put on you. And you don't realize until you dating. are celibate. Yeah, because yeah. then you like make it clear and they're like, what? again, what do you You set mean? a boundary and they get angry <laughs> with Wait, you. Yeah, just setting a, boundaries. One point of clarification like, for the two of you. Sure. When you both opted to become celibate, were you in the middle of a relationship? No, no, no. no I'm, oh, okay. I, I've been single for a while. Okay, because like, I mean, if, if you were pr- previously like got into a relationship, and, and I was sleeping with the person, his, and all he had an expectation. Yes. No, not because, that at all. I mean, like, personally, I be dating as a, a pathway to marriage, and so I mean, you kind of when you take something that you was already in the relationship away. That's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was more so sure. after a relationship had ended, and then I kind of like looked back on my relationships and my past experiences, and I was like. I really don't like the way that certain situationships have made me feel and I don't feel the need to go and sleep with people like especially to at get the some beginning. kind of validation so, or something yeah. right so I was like I'm just gonna make this decision to 
really start actually dating somebody and see if they actually want to get to know me and then if not fuck off yeah do you think that when you were in your like early especially the early stages of your like relationships with men Mm -hmm. where you were feeling objectified do you think like the the guys that you were seeing might have been more likely to objectify you because they knew what you were doing for work um no because i so i was in a relationship prior to my OnlyFans, and then I started OnlyFans, I maybe had dated one person from that point on until I went celibate, because I've only done OnlyFans for three years, and I was celibate for two. So, and I, like, even when I was sleeping with people, it wasn't, like, a nightly thing or something I was going out and seeking. It was very much so, like, situationships. I I very, very, very rarely in my life have had, like, one-night stands or slept with people that I wasn't in some sort of like talking stage, relationship, pursuing stage for me. So I would say no, because I wasn't really like, I dated men, I guess, when I was celibate, and they kind of just treated me the same as the men that I had dated prior to me starting OnlyFans. I think that they were just objectifying me to begin with well before I started anything like that. Yeah. Uh, so quick, quick announcement, and then I'll have you right. come in. Yo, guys, uh, we have lowered the uh, threshold for the rest of the show. Read Answer is now $49.99 and up. Instant TTS is $99 and up. Streamlabs only. See the description for, for full triggers. Tr- Jesus. For full triggers. Uh, so for the remainder of the show, we've lowered the uh, threshold for Read, both on YouTube and Streamlabs, and TTS via Streamlabs. Thank you, guys. Go ahead. You wanted to come in? Yeah, so I went on a hinge date one time with this guy. And Essie, that is so rude that you're just leave at a texting time too. right I'm now. And checking all my stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> Super rude. Stop, you know, I love you guys. I'm not being rude. <laughs> Go ahead. But anyway, you're, you <laughs> like she's in the middle of talking and you're just not going to give her your full present attention, Essie. I think you owe her a po- an apology. I'll, no, give you, I'll give you a kiss so in the heart. So what heartfelt. happened was um, the guy ended up wanting to take me on like a little cruise and on like a date. And so when we got to his house or when we got to the restaurant and we had our food, we went to go pick up the car that was valet parked and it was like a Lamborghini. And I was like, OK, cool or whatever. You know what I mean? So we get in the car, we go for a little joyride and we had plans to go out to the shooting range to shoot some guns and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And. I think he thought that just because he had a Lamborghini and we went on a little joyride or whatever that he was like gonna get laid. So we pulled up to his house and I was like sitting there like, okay, like waiting to go gun shooting and stuff like that. And then he like busts out the wine and he's like, let's Netflix and chill. And I'm like, I'm not Netflix and chilling with you. And then he's like, let's get in the hot tub and the jacuzzi. And I'm like, oh my God, okay, cool. So we get in the hot tub and in the jacuzzi. And then he's like, oh, like let's shower so that we can go to the gun range. So we go to the shower and he's like butt naked and mind you like i'm wearing my bathing suit and i'm looking at him like oh my god what the heck and he's like staring at me like this and he's like give me a hug and i was like i'm not giving you a hug and he was like he i knew that he thought that that was really weird but i was really weirded out and grossed out and i was like what the fuck so he showered and i just like showered in another room and put my clothes on or whatever and then he took me home from the date and then um, so you didn't go shoot guns <laughs> we didn't go shoot guns oh, so, no. he, the, so he he wanted to have sex like his entire plan was like I'm gonna pick her up in a Lamborghini and I'm gonna give her a little joyride and by the time she gets to my house she's gonna be so like oh my god Lamborghini her panties are gonna be on the floor and and it was like okay well I didn't want that to happen so we were driving back home and he dropped me off at my house and I was like oh I had a really good time with you like I can't wait to hang out with you again or whatever and he was like uh I'm gonna uh, let my personal assistant know to ship back your bathing suit. And I was like, what? Oh, wow. I was like, what do you mean? I, I can't just go get my bathing suit. He was like, I'm going to have my personal assistant ship you your bathing suit back. Wait, what? So just one point of clarification. Was this before you started prostituting? Uh, he didn't know about my occupations. This, this was a hinge date. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. You're, you're currently on hinge or you were on hinge? No, I, I was on hinge. This was on like... Hinge six months ago or something like that in Arizona. You, you don't say Scottsdale. on your Hinge profile, hey, by the way, guys. No, I, and that's irrelevant. To be honest. Yeah, and that's irrelevant <laughs> from the story completely. Um, like, do you put your social but, media okay, or anything about, okay, on your you Hinge profile? So then, you, wait, wait, wait. One so thing, the, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Now you're interrupting me. Now you're interrupting me, Miss Candace. Now you're interrupting me. Now you're interrupting me. I have... Stop, stop, stop. 
I have a further point of clarification. So, okay, fine. You didn't put it on your hinge profile, but like before going on the date, did you thought about telling him, by the way, I'm a So I was going on a date with this guy to see if he was fun. That doesn't matter. My occupation was not the matter of the topic. The point of the conversation anyway, back on track, was the point that when he dropped me off, he wanted to have his personal assistant freaking send me my bathing suit. And I was like, wait, why? What the heck? And he was like, because we stood there. I I was stood in front of you butt naked after the jacuzzi thinking you were going to have sex with me. And you were the only girl that's ever seen me butt naked and didn't want to have sex with me. (laughs) That is so weird. <laughs> well, this is a man that didn't know. I mean, it's a pretty weird story. And this is, it's and this was a man weird. that yeah. did not know my profession. That's and that's my point: is men are freaking weird. <laughs> and why did I even have to disclose before a date what I did was weird? What, or why do I have to disclose my occupation before a date when men are over here acting like this? I don't I, really, I, I don't really follow the logic on there because his behavior doesn't really have anything to do with a what I would imagine is an important disclosure prior to meeting somebody, but um, I mean, let me ask, let's say you did like the guy, he didn't do this fucking weird, goofy shit, would you have disclosed prior to having sex that you're a prostitute? I was never gonna have sex with the hinge date. But, uh, but like if I'm eventually saying, you I'm liked him I'm saying if you liked t- the guy and you, at some point you wanted to have sex with him, would you have disclosed to him that you're a prostitute? In my dating life, if I'm out here at a bar, whatever, and I meet up with a guy, it is up to me to disclose my occupation. I don't have to tell somebody that I am a legal sex worker in Nevada. You don't, you're not legally compelled to do it, but it seems like it. If I'm going to pursue a relationship with this man and uh, be in a relationship with this guy and he's gonna be my husband or whatever, okay. yeah, I can disclose whatever I, I want to. But Wait, I don't. You, what do you mean, you, you want to? No, I said if I ever would want to be in a relationship with a man. Yeah or be married or whatever. Sure. I have no problem with disclosing At this. what point would you disclose? But I will not be disclosing my occupation with just strangers. But at what, at what point would you disclose to a guy? If I was ready Did, for a serious relationship or a marriage. Don't worry. Don't, don't worry, it, don't worry, it's just some people yelling outside but you know what i mean though it's like i Nick, can you close the are you using protection when you're yes of course so i work at the bunny ranch Roth brothel um at the bordello uh it's the bunny ranch brothel and all the light or ladies on site are std checked once a week for stds and okay. for hiv and aids once a month by blood so okay. all the ladies there are tested and we are super clean get tested regularly weekly i mean I would rather have sex with her knowing that she is a working girl out of brothel and I would not have sex with you knowing that you are just a regular person. You know what I mean? I feel more safe working and having sex with people. Kind of throwing people. Essie under the bus there. No, I <laughs> think it's valid. No, no, no. I think it's valid what she's well, yeah, saying. Like, I'm okay. sorry, but I, I'm, I'm very no, conscious but, yeah. okay. and, and as a brothel worker, this isn't, I'm not no hooker off the street. We we are very high end. Our prices are very high end. Most guys come into our establishments with chump money you know what i mean like you can't get anything like with that price right but okay so so hold on so the question is though at what point would you disclose to i just answered that five times i said i would disclose my career to my husband or to my boyfriend i do not need to disclose my career how long do you how long if the girls had to wager how long from first date first meeting a guy to becoming boyfriend, it doesn't usually take a couple months. I'm not looking for a serious relationship but right now. But you just said, well, but you put the- were. Hypothetically, if, were. Yeah. if I hypothetically was looking for a serious relationship, I would tell them straight up off the bat. Like first date? Like first like date, date, yeah. 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 yeah, but going into a date knowing that I'm not gonna be dating this person and we're just gonna be fucking for a night or two, why do I have to disclose that information? I don't. Do you feel like part of it is a safety reason? Like, do you feel like if they know, they'll be... It's my business. It's my life. It's my job. If I don't want to disclose my job to anybody, I don't have to. Also, if you're being safe, then I don't see a problem with the yeah. sex aspect. Exactly. I was about to say, I I'm mean, if this is not somebody you're looking disavow. at as like a... <laughs> somebody that you're looking at as a future serious partner and it's a one-night stand situation or like and you're going on a couple dates... And they're not asking you who you're yeah, sleeping with. Yeah, then and it, as long as it's you're being safe, because I think safety is the biggest aspect, and let's be real, most people 
people out there in the dating world are not getting tested as right. regularly. And as please that is a get tested correct. after every partner. It's so important 100%. to wear condoms and get oh, tested. Oh, here's a really good question. Here's a really good question. For all the viewers out there. If, okay, if a, you were on a, like a first date with a guy and you were maybe thinking, and eh, this is going to be more casual, and he... I don't, you have no idea how he knew. He was just like randomly asking shit. Do you work at a carnival? Do you work at a zoo? Are you a prostitute? If he asked you, I can't imagine any dude on the first date asking a girl this question. That would before. be bold. Okay. <laughs> um, by the way, Becky, um, and he asked you straight up, are you a prostitute? Would you say yes? Yes. Okay. I'm a very truthful, honest person. Would you be kind of offended by the person. question? No. Because if you ask not, I'm not very you easily offended. You can't take that profession and like I am a legal offense. prostitute. Yeah. Right. I yeah. Yeah. And that's my term that I like to use. I know you don't like to use that term, for, but for me, I mean, I am what I am, and I'm a legal prostitute, a, le- a legal sure. hooker, whatever the fuck you want to call it. You know what yeah. I mean? And I have no problem with being honest if... So the question sure. arises. But so you say you say you're on dating apps, you're on Hinge, right? You're meeting up with these guys, and not, you don't put it on your Hinge. You don't really tell them beforehand. Um, if and they ask just... what you do for work, what do you tell them? Because that's a, typically on a date. That's a very common... honestly a lot of the guys that I talk to on Hinge when I just want to hang out with somebody like in town, if I'm in a new town or whatever. Usually they don't really ask me um, like what I do for work. So. Really? It doesn't... I mean, I feel like on a date, that's pretty pretty Sarah. common. Like, just, hey, what do you do for work? I yeah. think it, like I, really... I honestly think it depends on the type of date. Because I've been on dates with men who don't ask me that mm-hmm. because they're seeking something else. They don't actually care about me. But if a man's True. looking for a relationship, and I'm looking for a relationship, the first thing I'm asking them is, do you have a job? What do you do? How much money do you make? And not the money part, I but I mean, one. eventually you get to that point <laughs> because what you, ask, you end That's up knowing what they do. You want to find out. Like, yeah, because I want to know yeah. what, what, job, what job do you have? Well, and if they tell me that they have a certain job, I'm going to assume. Go so I am in school. Need. And so, I mean, um, if they ask me like what job I have, I am open to telling them that I dance and stuff like that. Like, okay. I Look. Move. I tell them move however you want my own yeah, personal perspective and we're going to ask the chat here in just a sec um if i was on hinge and i was about to go on a date with a girl i would honestly want to know s- straight up before even the date either through text you don't have to have it on your profile but pretty early on i would want a disclosure on if she was a prostitute oh yeah and- let's ask the chat chat yeah. Would you want the girl to disclose before you meet in person if she does prostitution? Can you scroll that down? One in the chat. One in the chat if you'd want disclosure. Two in the chat if you don't care. And this is, and we're talking about like serious. Most guys care. You know, because I'm, oh, I'm know. going on I'm hinge. I'm serious. I'm going on hinge. I'm not looking for a serious relationship. You know what I mean? I feel like oh. most people are on hinge, hinge do. Yeah. Hinge is yeah, usually I'm not, and, I, and I put Bumble that in my thing. Oh, looking okay. for a long term or a short term thing because oh, I'm not okay. looking yeah. to, you know. And yeah. when I do hook up with guys for fun, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't feel the need to say hmm. nothing about it because I don't want a relationship right now. So, yeah. yeah. If I'm looking for a partner, I don't think I necessarily would be okay with that. But if we're just having sex, then... What's the expectation? And, it, and when I am looking for a partner or whatever, I will 100% disclose that information right off the bat. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. I would, I would just consider disclosing, even for short term. Think about it. No. Do you think a it's man not, should it's disclose? It's none of their business. Do you think it, a man who sleeps around probably equally as much should disclose to me that he's yeah. a whore? <laughs> but they don't. Should you? I want if, you to disclose rare, to me how many girls are in your Snapchat right before we start talking. Then a little or, different. Mm-hmm. I, here's the, here's the mirror image. If I was a male prostitute that wor- that was sleeping with five new women a day for money, yes, I think in that same situation, I think he should disclose to the women he's going to date. By the way, I am a male prostitute. I sleep with women for money. I, I'm not. I don't have a double standard on this one. Uh, the argument essentially boils yeah. down but, to: Should you tell a person? something that's going to risk them sleeping with you, right? If you think, oh, I'm going, are they going to say no once they find out this information? Should you disclose it ahead of time? Let me, let me also, let me add one other layer to this. So let's remove the relationship component. Me as a guy, and I'm not, partic- I'm very much not interested in short-term 
casual sex, sleeping with a girl one time is, I have very little interest in that. If I sleep with a girl, I want there to be a continuity. But let's assume that I was interested in a one night stand or a fuck buddy, casual sex. Low value man. I would still want disclosure under those circumstances. I owe you nothing. I owe you nothing. Uh, I literally owe you nothing but healthy, protected nice. sex. No, you don't would, owe, I don't owe, I don't think that I need to tell you anything really besides I think us having a, I safe think, sex. I think morally, I think you, it would it's be my appropriate. It's my job. No, I, I kind of agree with you, Brian, but then it comes down to the fact that that's also a risk that you're undertaking when you're having casual sex, right? You don't, right. you're not really forming a relationship with this person. You don't really know them. So yeah, you're risking the fact that like, they're not gonna care about exactly 100 what you care about so that's where i kind of like diverge that's a fair it. point in terms of hey if you're engaging in casual sex one night stands you are taking risks because you haven't had an opportunity to properly vet the person for a, a variety of different things but that's in my in my you. my stance hmm. i still think even within uh, a casual sex scenario one night stand i think disclosure sh would be warranted uh la surfer for life no hate but men can sense put uh oh probably uh -ah. Ooh, uh wait hold on i got something for that uh uh hey -uh. it doesn't she protect you from hiv or Me? parasites but she that's why you wear protection hooker vibes uh he probably just sensed thought you were down to smash i mean if he played his cards right would he have been able to get down with you also those std tests don't protect you from hpv and parasites also, that's why you get the hpv shot that's why you use a condom that's why you use protection what about herpes? do they i don't think they test for herpes and do they? that's why we do dcs at DCs. every brothel we give dick dcs checks. which are dicks checks we make sure there's no uh, lesions, warts, any of that stuff. What if it's like pre lesions? Wait, hold on. Like pre, like he could be, uh, he could be shedding or whatever, but there would be no way for you to. That's why you wear or a condom. Or same with the girl. That's why you wear a Wait, condom. Wait, question. If you if you're a girl and you have herpes, can you still work? Mm, I don't believe no. so. No. Because they, but they don't really test. I don't think they test for herpes. But if, but if I, I don't know a what the test I mean, I'm pretty out, sure they test for everything. Not, yeah, they're testing for... I know in the porn industry, I think they don't test for HPV and herpes because it's well, hard they to... Well, they test for HIV and AIDS by blood once a month. Yeah, but so. I mean, herpes, Here. that's for life, son. Nobody, son. it's Just never son. been reported that anybody ha that have um, had sex at the brothels have had STD. At we the haven't brothels? Had, yeah. yeah. Which we brothels? We haven't had any, any issues. Any legal brothel in Nevada. Nobody has have had an STD. None of the and working girls. The state of Nevada picks the doctors, so yeah. there's no corruption. So if a girl tests dirty, she doesn't work. And all that's I, look, all I'm saying safe. is, if I'm about to have a one-night stand with a girl, which I, I don't do one-night stands, at least tell me if you're a fucking prostitute. That's all I'm asking. Uh, sure. Tell me if you're a prostitute. That's sure. it. Sure. You know? I, I can give you that. I fucked five dudes yesterday for money. You know, c at least. Because I feel like, but what? But why is it going to focus on long-term relationships? How is that going to ease your mind? What if she just fucked what five dudes for you? I was going to ask that. I wish she was just straight, just fucking all the time. Is it like the four money that's going to admit that? Well, that's bad too. It's not just that it's for money. But would you want What's, her to be like, hey, so I fucked five dudes yesterday? Do you think that women should yesterday? disclose who they're sleeping with? You should just ask her who she's It's in one night stand. It's like, if you don't well, care that you, she I fucked mean, five wanted, dudes before you, well, then if, why if, do you, you care were, about my prostitution I feel like if you want to know, she fucked five dudes before you, though. I do care. But she fucked five dudes before you, and now it's a one night stand. Wait, what do you mean? Hypothetically speaking, this girl from Hinge that you're about to go see, Yeah. This one night stand she, girl, she fucked five dudes on a one night stand do. with Hinge, okay. and now she's shit. coming to you, and now she's like, "Hey, dude, not I shit. fucked five dudes from this Hinge, dude, Hold one on. night stand, ha ha ha." Fucking ha. disgusting, hell no. But <laughs> but you wouldn't but know. But that's but you wouldn't know. That's the same shit. You that was what, what I'm so, saying. Here's, here's the thing: like, she might not vocalize it, but I feel like. No. You can no, you can you tell, tell sometimes. No, you like, can't tell. Brian. No, listen, there are some Stop. girls that are very unassuming. You would never think that they're promiscuous, that they sleep with a lot of men. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're a bit demure, they're a bit shy, they're a bit reserved, and they be fucking. That's that's yes. fair. However, there's definitely some women, there are certain behavioral traits that you can kind of be able to make an assessment of like this chick's a hoe. 
You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Well, but no, I think I know I don't. girls who are dressed like super sexy, yeah. who look super sexual, and they don't. They don't yeah. I was about to say, like, well, I feel like people would have made markers. those assumptions about me when I was celibate. Like, I mean, you can you can assume whatever you want, but that doesn't make it true. Sure. Right. But but even even okay, so you're saying that well, as a guy, you might actually by using these sort of metrics with which men might disqualify women, you might actually lose out on like a good girl. You absolutely could. You absolutely all the more could. reason to adhere to a more modest, outward-facing appearance. Yeah, if you want, if, if you want to, if you want to disqualify people that you don't know based off of their appearance and their assumptions, mm-hmm. sure. But I'm not going to let somebody else's assumptions about me dis- dictate how I dress or what I wear or what I do. That's fine, but yeah. the the way you c- conduct yourself does have an impact on the people that you intr- you attract into your life. It's I true. think that's a fair assessment, yeah. But I mean, you like can I also wear find... flannels, bitches ain't fucking. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, every every girl on the show is like, Brian, what the fuck is up with these flannels, son? Get some new clothes. But but no, look, the I way think that you, you were dress, the same flannel. Last I have time. I have five set different flannels. But look, there's Are they all, like, he's there's, like a cartoon character, like a cartoon character that has like the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm-hmm. Thursday yeah. fit. It's all the same. Yeah. I can't wait, wait, Are they different colors or? I they... have blue, green, a different red, and this, and then I have one other one. Oh, I have black and gray. Yeah, I I haven't worn that one. Uh, I have a black and a gray. Look, there's a lot of women that don't want to fuck with me because of the podcast, because how I dress. I got a fucking dad. I don't know. You and Bangs were this close to making out on the last podcast. I feel like that was cap. You guys were gonna go on a date. No, that was that was for show. That was was for show. She was. um, But. I don't know where are we going with this. I don't well, know. we Let were me, just saying that like you, you're disqualifying women based on their appearance because X Y Z, and the fact that you think that women should disclose who they're sleeping with before you go on a date with them. I think a woman before she sleeps with me should have been celibate for at least a year. <laughs> that's my that's, that's my enough. desire. That's your... That is my <laughs> desire. Now, am I gonna get it? That's another question. But uh, yeah, it's definitely. I would much prefer like, hey, don't fuck Reach a dude before you're hanging out with me. You know. But I, how would you know? That's like the, that's what we're saying because I mean you're saying that she should disclose it because it's her profession. But there could be a woman. She could be again the most like, a, meek, demure, like shy woman you've ever oh, seen I, in your I know, life. I've known right. A few. But so That'd so that woman, free. that woman you're assuming like hasn't been sleeping with people. What if she slept with the same amount of people like but the day before paid. she did? Oh, but it's not her profession. So she does she have to text you back and be like, hey. Word. By the way, I fucked five dudes yesterday. Like that, that's like bizarre to because think that someone like, would do that. He expects the that. only difference is the money. Yeah, because if a guy, I mean, shit, does a guy? Okay, one night stand, man. Uh, you need to disclose what's your credit card statement. Yo, Lindo, Nate, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. You're fucking chat. Pod, thank you, dude. I watch all the lives, so dropping a dono. Dude, thank you so much, Lynn. Uh, you're ve- that's a very generous uh, dono, <laughs> man. Really appreciate it. Lynn, you're a fucking legend. Thank you, sir. Go ahead with your So, point. yeah, it's like, okay, well, what's your credit score before we go on a date? Before you can enter this, uh, what's your... What's enter, your credit score? Enter the pussy. Enter yeah. The what's hole. what's the what's the what's what's your credit score? Uh, how much money in your bank account? Mm, you know what I mean? It's like girls ask men what they do for work. Yeah. But you, you said you can, yourself that's a standard question. Yeah, right? I, I think it is a stand. I think what you do for work, whether yeah. it's romantic or not, I think it's a pretty n- normal question to ask somebody. What do you? Yeah, think? but if the and guy the if the guy lies later. about it. And it's like a one. It goes back to like, what responsibility does that person have to you? So if a guy's like, "Oh, I'm actually like, I don't know, a stockbroker or whatever," and it's a straight up lie, then it's like, okay, what did you expect from a one night stand? Like that you're gonna truly know this person? Like you're not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. So, uh, like, I'm not sure. People lie. But <laughs> yeah. no, oh yeah, people lie. I, we yeah. had a girl on the show. I, I'm not gonna say her name, but we had a girl come on the show. She was 19. Um, very quiet, very shy, very, you wouldn't like soft-spoken. You wouldn't really think that she at 19 had slept with 33 men and she had caught herpes. Oh my God. Mm. So she wasn't using protection. Probably not. Mm. Probably not. So, uh, pretty sad, pretty sad. Yeah. And she's very, she's actually a very sweet girl. Uh, and you would never would have thought 
But Never I, would have thought. I think hmm. that's like the stigma with STIs, right? And why people are so afraid to go get tested or be honest about their status. Because we have this idea in society that somebody that has an STI does have to be promiscuous or does have to be like a whore or whatever the case may be when anybody can realistically get an STI. You could have sex the first time ever and somebody could be dishonest with you and then you have herpes for the rest of your life. I knew a girl. Yeah. I yeah. knew a girl. And that's and obviously too. that person's not being promiscuous. That person's not participating in risky behavior. So I think that just boils down to stigma because she probably was a very sweet girl and nobody deserves that because generally if you're getting an STI, it's from somebody that was dishonest with re- with you mm-hmm. or wasn't getting tested. In some cases, husbands, I've heard of husbands yeah. giving their wives and that's how they found out. Yeah, it's yeah. horrible. Very and sad. chlamydia Four is like, a, yeah. like common yeah. in housewives. True. Chlamydia is common in housewives. Can you just tilt mm. the microphone down? Perfect, perfect. Cool. Pixie, what you got for us? Oh, I was going to say a real black pill, at least when it comes to herpes, is um, not genital, but like the other types of herpes, like oral or whatever. Apparently over like 80% of the population has it because it's spread through sharing food and drink as well. So Mm. that's really depressing. I don't know. It's 90% of adults test for HSV-1, which is oral. Yeah. And then that so you can get oral just from drinking on your cup. Wait, hold on. Just one sec. Prostitutes got my utmost respect. Imagine how many no game hobos would be shooting the place up. What? Essential services. What? Saving lives. <laughs> if Mike Davis were president, he'd invite a pack of hoes to the Oval Office and give them the Presidential <laughs> Medal of Freedom. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> this is Mike Davis, by the way. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, there you go. Oh, There's the photo. Uh, that's Mike Davis. Mike he owns Davis. like 300 plus Burger King restaurants across the East Coast. Um, cool. I have not seen this motherfucker <laughs> in so long, Mike Davis. I I still hold your picture frame uh, dear to me. Oh. Where you been, Mike Davis? We had Candace Owens on. You just missed Candace. This is uh, not, Alibaba, not Candace. Candace Owens, I guess. Uh, wish Thanks, Candace Mike. Owens. Wish. Uh, not even close. So, uh, good to see you back in the chat, Mr. Mike Davis. Thank you very much. Uh, were you saying something, Pixie? Oh, well, this is completely fucking random. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about. I kind of wanted to talk about birth control, but mm-hmm. we don't have to talk about that if you don't want to. <laughs> I think that's fun. Um, let me, yeah. we can come to it in just a sec. I just need to get through a couple of chats it's here. It's a good topic. Um, here, we have the real slider. Brixen, do you strictly bring these women on your show for content reasons? This perverse, hypersexualized generation of women is running this country into the ground how could you ladies possibly rationalize sex work as being moral? Hashtag Christ is Lord. Hashtag 304. Hashtag 304. I feel like if you, if men didn't buy our OnlyFans and if men hated us so much for what we do because it's easy money, maybe don't watch it. Because if, as a male, if you guys come That's to awesome. a unity and say, hey, boys, Let's stop watching porn so that these dumb, pretty girls can stop getting paid for sitting on their little fucking asses and doing absolutely fucking nothing. And, and, and they're, they're doing nothing and they look so pretty and th- yet they're getting paid more than $400,000 a year. That That's more than Whoa, a... Who's yeah, exactly. Holy Wait. And yeah. it's not by doing nothing. There's and a lot of work involved. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot so of work. I make more than a doctor and I capitalize off of men. You guys are my biggest fans, even if you're haters. I made over $400,000 last year and it is all because of you. So you guys want to keep clowning on sex work? Keep it up because if you guys just came together as a whole, as men, you guys, we wouldn't be in business. We are profiting off of you. Uh Thank you. (laughs) Keep subscribing to our OnlyFans. Keep talking shit about sex workers because we are making so much more money and I'm about to be at fucking a million this year. So keep it up. Kind of on that topic, I am friends with a man who said something about how, oh, I could never date an OnlyFans chick. And I said, why? And he's like, oh, well, I can't be with somebody who's with with other men. Like, other men are looking at her, blah, 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 mm. all this stuff. And, and that's said, an insecurity. Yeah, thing. and I said, okay. It's not, you, uh, it, it's not insecure. But I said to him, do you use OnlyFans? And he said, yes. yes. Oh and my I God. said, misogynistic, so, yeah, no, no, no. insecure, that, actually, and he is so hypocritical. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nope. It's, it's actually not... <laughs> 
it's not that's not hypocritical actually brian what are you about to, to say to, no to i will address this argument i'll address this argument hold on one sec i've been on the islands enjoying <laughs> some african queens I'm not gonna get into again, but I've already told you bona fide scrubs to follow suit and give up on these bonehead Western women. Just glad I'm reading ABT less mass shootings thanks to these hoes. What the fuck? <laughs> Mike Davis. <laughs> because we are therapists. Yeah. Sex workers are um Wait, therapists. okay, so but your your argument is is that the guy said, "Well, I wouldn't date a girl who does OnlyFans." Yes, and then I but, said, and then he, and I said, but, "Do you watch OnlyFans?" And he said, "Yes." And I, and I said, "Okay, well, do you understand why women yeah. in relationships uh, don't want men watching porn and watch going on OnlyFans?" And he said, "Okay, I can see what you mean. It's hypocritical for a man to not want a woman who's selling her body or showing off her body, it's not. but also, yes, it is. He's subscribing to the content." Just, Finish your point and I'll respond. You you can respond. No, but okay. So your position is that (laughs) if a guy watches OnlyFans, it would be hypocritical of him to not date a woman who does OnlyFans. Is that your... No, it would be hypocritical for him to not expect me to not want him to be looking at other women. Wait, that's not... You're you're walking back what you said, but I'm pretty sure, unless I totally misread what you said, you said that it would be hypocritical for a guy to not want to date a girl who does OnlyFans if he himself watches OnlyFans. That's what I heard, too. Yes. That's, is that, so is, did I accurately well, reiterate what you there said? There are two parts. Because I continued. No, but then, okay, you so, were interrupting hold on. when I was Lynn continuing. Lynn donated $100. I'm a Lynn also. My dream were to be on the pod, but I'm a NorCal girl. Uh, well, hey, Lynn, uh, shoot us a DM on, uh, on Instagram at whatever. We have girls come from all over the state all over the country you're from nashville right mm-hmm. you're from vegas uh, are you in vegas arizona vegas idaho. oh idaho oh shit okay amy was from florida yeah right? we we have people coming from europe we have people coming from out of the country so lynn shoot us a dm uh thank you so much for your uh, patronage tonight it really means the world uh so just to bring it back to this uh so okay there were two parts they, right but the first part yeah. was it would be hypocritical for a guy to not want to date a girl who does OnlyFans if he himself consumed and watched and paid for OnlyFans. No, correct? no. I said that it was be Did, hip- just hip- open it. The, she said that though, I, right? I, well, she you, did you say interrupted that. me, and I was continuing what I was saying, but you went ahead and started asking me a question before I continued my point. You answer- so are you walking back what no, you said? No, I just then, no. I never said that it's hypocritical for a man you, to. You quite literally. No, can, you just I'll interrupted say it. me before. I'll I, say it. I don't know I why heard. you're not That's allowing me to continue my sentence. Okay, well, finish your sentence. I, was I you said a clarifying, that clarifying I, a man told me that he would not date a woman who was on OnlyFans. And then I asked him, okay, well, do you use OnlyFans? And he said, yes. And then I said, okay, well, do you see why women in relationships or women in general don't want men looking at porn and watch? It's, it's all going off of the point of whoever said okay. the last comment. But I, then I must have misunderstood. But I, what I thought I heard was, again, just... If a guy watches OnlyFans, but he's not down to date a girl who does OnlyFans, mm-hmm. that's hypocritical. Now, no. maybe that's not what you said, but do you uh, do you believe that it would be hypocritical for a guy who consumes OnlyFans to not want to date a girl who does OnlyFans? I think it's different. I don't know if it's hypocritical, but I think that, like, as a as a person, if I'm looking for a man who's uh, w- looking for a man for the rest of my life, I wouldn't want them looking at OnlyFans. I think stuff. that's. I don't object to I that. I don't think men should be, like, it was just going off of the point of the person that commented. I don't think that okay. men, I think men should collectively, if they're going to attack women constantly About for being only fans, burgers, people, then maybe yes. they should join up together yes. and not watch porn because it's up to you and the male race to stop me from making so much money. <laughs> only you can stop okay. me from making Wait. so Make much money. Sound like the I, kind of, <laughs> I kind of understand your point, but so you're saying you would object to... What I don't. Are, I don't think that men should be consuming porn and going to sex workers and all I, those things. Did anyone else hear the? Yeah. I could have sworn. I, yeah. the, I'll take I could have sworn. Hold on. Talk about that. I could have sworn the way it was framed was again, if you're a guy and you are watching OnlyFans, watching porn, and you don't, you wouldn't want to date a girl who does OnlyFans or who does porn. That makes you a hypocrite. I but that, agree with that's that. what I heard. I was ready to rebuttal. I, that, that might have been what you <laughs> heard. No, no, I think that, that might have been what you heard, but I would don't. I didn't say that, and that's not what I believe yeah. in, and not. And I don't agree with that well, statement. I mean, okay, so. But I can see where you sure. Heard let's that. just let's just throw it out there. Let's. 
you didn't say it, but just as a mm-hmm. for, for the yeah, sake of argument, say, yeah. my rebuttal to that would be someone could enjoy watching professional sports and mm-hmm. not want to particip- yeah. participate in the NFL. Absolutely. Like you can enjoy watching the NFL and also not want to play in the NFL or even have their son play in it because of CT, concussion, injury risk, mm-hmm. et, et cetera. So just because you participate as a spectator does not mean you need to necessarily endorse it. I guess the question Agreed. is like, it goes back to the reasoning behind why they wouldn't want to date somebody who does OnlyFans, right? If their reasoning is like, I'm just not comfortable being romantic with someone who's being sexual with other people, that's one thing. But if their reasoning is like, oh no, it's like disgusting or something, mm-hmm. then it would be like the equivalent would be enjoying watching sports, but then thinking it's like wrong yeah. to participate in them. So that I think It would think be that's, disgusting to date her. Yeah, if he's saying, if that's a reasoning, then they are being hypocritical. I don't think so. Because it's, to take your sports analogy, it's can like partici- somebody- Can you participate in something that you well, find disgusting? How, how can, you, how can yeah. you look at a picture of a woman sure that you think is disgusting and get off of that? Yeah. yeah. That's mm. the point. It's like- I don't know, people be jerking it to some weird ass shit. Mm-hmm. Jerking it's it. True. Yeah. They yeah. be- um, That's kind of like Madonna whore complexy. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that yeah. men have said though is um, they've said- that have spoken to me their reservations of going with a girl that's in the industry who is getting constant attention for themselves will she be satisfied just hanging out with me um you know when she's not doing that persona when she's not in character or does she constantly need attention and validation from Mm -hmm. other men and that's something that has been a concern that men have described to me and that and that's reasonable i think that is valid because i mean i think if one of the things that a man can do in terms of what he brings to the relationship is giving her his attention, perhaps his sexual attention, uh, but if she's kind of fulfilling that in other ways, getting attention, validation from other men, then the validation and attention that a romantic partner would, would provide is not quite, is to some degree diminished. It's not as it's not as uh, valuable right. because she's getting it from all these other sources. All these other guys. Her, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's how girls feel about guys that watch a lot of OnlyFans or like a lot of porn that it's like, oh, I don't feel special anymore. I am so with you though. We need, and I agree, yeah, we need right. a male solidarity <laughs> movement because it's a supply and demand right. thing. It's supply and demand. There's a demand for porn for OnlyFans. So are you advocating that we as men need to step up and not be these gluttons of consumption and paying for porn. And if we do watch porn, just watch the free shit. Is that uh, what you're saying? My dress is orange, not red. You idiot. (laughs) You idiot? Good job. Um, You're colorblind. Okay, so just just one thing, right? Okay, so... uh, Wait, I lost my train of thought. Well, well, we were going off the point that men create the market, and they do. Yeah, they do. They They do. They're literally why I'm thriving. So, yeah, I mean, it would take men to actually band together and decide that they were no longer going to consume that kind of content in order for it to stop. And you guys aren't strong enough to do that. You guys are not strong enough to come together as a whole to stop paying us I mean, for sex. Come, okay, this idea of men coming together as a whole, <laughs> there's a couple of problems there. First off, uh, the male population is like, what, 3.5, 4 billion? You're so not a hive mind. That, <laughs> that's pretty tough. Well, if we're talking about male solidarity, and then when it comes to male solidarity, the, the thing is is that men have an out-group bias for women, So it's that's and uh, women have an in-group bias for other women. So it's, very hard for men to have solidarity in the same way that women have solidarity. Yeah, but you guys are males, uh, and and you guys, we, us females, profit off you guys of males. I mean, it's like the disdain. I don't, I don't pay for porn. I'm just right. It's it's like the disdain for sex workers. I mean, even if you're watching free porn, you're still contributing to what mm-hmm. you guys consider the problem. I mean, yeah. in 100%. free porn, free porn is still actresses still getting paid. Yeah, no, they're still, they're still making you... money. The the websites are still making money. Right. However, if it was, I, I want to say, if you're just, because like, what's these these memes about like. Why would I pay five bucks to see your boobs when I can type into Google and get eight million boobs? 
I think th- well, you know I think I mean? a lot of the appeal for OnlyFans and the reason that it is so successful oh, I get partially it. is I get because it. of like the parasocial aspect. I yeah. mean, if you see a hot girl on Instagram mm-hmm. or somebody that you follow their story and you kind of see into their personal life, like, and mm-hmm. you want to talk to them, that's a very easy route to go, especially if you're like interested in them sexually and you're like that piques your interest. That's mm-hmm. exactly what men it's, I've asked yeah. about yeah. stuff like this have said. Yeah, they, it's they parasocial. They like some kind of, yeah, yes. parasocial. They As think only they actually particular. feel oh, like sorry, they can ahead, get you. I mean, they, th- you are attainable. You are a, a realistically attainable for some of them compared to a girl in mainstream porn. Yeah. And they can converse with you. Directly. So I Directly. guess there's more of an emotional or personal ca- some kind of intimacy experience. rather than so, just searching up a, a random video. They're more attainable right. in some sort of way. Right. I think Even that's more of... kind of not, but... Right, but I mean, like, that's the appeal to a lot of, especially OnlyFans in particular. I mean, I think that's why it's thrived so much. I mean, you have these girls like Bella Thorne and Karina Kopf that are uh, cashing out because these men see them online and they're like, oh. I want to see her name. Like I could pay this, and I could, I could talk to her. I mean, obviously, they're, especially with those accounts and how large they are, you'd be absolutely delusional to think that you're actually talking to them. Mm-hmm. But if they want to play into the fantasy and pay the money, then more power to them. But again, that stuff is never going to stop. Donated one hundred dollars. Hey, Lynn, thank I you. I do whatever hashtag get line on oh. pod. Okay, back to watching. Yo, Lynn, thank you so much for your uh, patronage. Appreciate it. Uh, hashtag get Lynn on the pod in the chat. Thank you, guys. Continue with the um, point. But again, you're never going to get rid of OnlyFans. You're never going to get rid of pornography or prostitution or anything like that if men don't stop objectifying women to the level that they objectify women. It's not clear to me if it's because of objectification, though. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It's sexualization and objectification. Question, if women watch uh, porn, are they also objectifying the men or the women involved? Yeah, absolutely. Is it? It's not clear to me... uh, this, you're watching them as like this you're is an object rather than a person. Yeah, well, like I'm not watching porn going. We, okay, oh, I'm thinking so, about their soul. <laughs> so are, are we objectifying actors then? Sometimes we do. Oh, yeah. A lot of times, Brian, most of the time. Brian, sure. oh, I mean, look at Twitter. Sorry, I'm late. Yeah. Busy Just day about how drugs. people talk about. Wait, I make four hundred thousand dollars per year oh, doing it. Congrats, man. I like to tell myself I don't contribute to the deterioration of society. These addicts should really band together and stop buying drugs. That's a good point. LOL, not my problem. Exactly. That, that is... <laughs> or what if no, everyone I... just stopped selling drugs? Mm. There we go. That could... Um, like, what if um, all women just stopped doing sex work? Then the men would have nothing to pay for. Or but it's our bodies. Are and we're going to be objectified whether or not we... never going to happen. It's our body. We're going to be getting porn. DVDs from the 90s. You can't stop us. No, I'm kidding. You can't stop us. <laughs> men really? need, to, be, men need be to have better self-control. Control DVDs yourselves and better and no. don't pay us. Actually, Maybe we won't the, profit off of it. The other thing, too, to, like, to look at is also... Um, and this is kind of... I don't know if people are going to agree with this, but I believe that if there were were no options for pornography or prostitution, that there would be way more violence against women and and children. children. Um, Wait, if there wasn't... If there was no porn available... There would be way more violence against women. Is this a study? Why do you think that? I think that's, that's when you look at sexually repressed countries yeah, or countries that are more like true. strict when it comes to that stuff, like their rates of violence against women are very high. And like part of that reason is probably like part of the repression, right? Like if they feel like they can't express themselves sexually or have no outlet, then they just that take sounds it out. like psycho babble no, to me. But I, I would, would have to see the study on that. Violence in the United States where there is there is an abundance of pornography. I mean the U.S. is one of the most violent countries in the world. Strong disagree. I think it would more have to do. I mean, I don't know. No. I don't know exactly which like well, are which we countries like you're talking about. Countries with like ongoing military for sexual violence. Like no, we're talking about sexual violence. I think I think oh, they're okay. saying well, that like access to pornography and sex work in decreases some in some ways. Like decreases You're saying, hold, no, 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 sexual no. violence against Absol- women. I, I, think no, what I would saying. agree. There's, there's I would, no way. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you come in just a sec. I, there's no way that if men didn't have access to porn that they would just become these like rape, like, uh, uh, okay, like without going sex, to, like they would just start but, <laughs> no, but there's widespread like actually, wholesale start assaulting women. There's yeah. actual statistics too about during natural disasters that sexual violence and violence against women actually skyrockets because they don't have access to those things. And I mean, whoa, 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 this whoa, is an whoa, actual whoa, whoa. statistic. That's a crazy. That, that is that, an that's, actual that's statistic. That's true. During, I'm from Houston yeah. and when the floods happen, every time those floods happen, women and children go missing. They are shown to be 
Where's the connection, like, though? Because it's not clear to me that that these instances of assault are happening because they don't have access to porn. Well, they I don't, don't see had, the right. here, Essie. You wanted to come in. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna say I agree with um, what she said because if I would not have porn for like a year, you, I would be feral. I'd be foaming at the <laughs> mouth. I'd be. <laughs> but you can still. But you can still. I can't use masturbate. my imagination. I can't use that. You I have to have still, a visual. Men are visual creatures. All right, let's. Uh, here, I gotta get a couple <laughs> chats in here. We have unwoke thoughts. The seven on Brian's collar is his body count. Uh, you're uh, welcome. Unwoke thoughts. Thank you. Is that Thank true? You. Negative. <laughs> Negative. I want to make a point in favor of OnlyFans, too, compared to mainstream porn. Have you guys noticed trends in mainstream porn? So, like, I was asked to do some mainstream porn. I've, I've been asked all throughout the years. And have you, like, have you guys seen the trend of when guys will grab onto this? Okay, now we're going to smack the girl in the face. That crap. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, they'll Absolutely. just do this formulaic crap. Whereas in OnlyFans, we're creators that are getting it on with whom we choose. So if I'm wanting to get on, get it on with this good-looking guy that makes me coo and moan, versus, you know, <gasps> <laughs> you know, like screaming my, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, get slapped. I see what you're saying. Sorry, yeah. you're not gonna slap me on camera. But I see it all the time. I see these trends that that could be potentially damaging to yes, because it's it's yeah. been just proven that it changes people's brain chemistry to actually be more violent to watch mainstream porn because most of it mm. is violent. Yeah, and objectifying I'll know, look, women. Look, I'll know about about you guys, but of my sexual encounters, it's the chicks that are like, "Yo, I want to be fucking choked." I'm and not. And I think that has a direct correlation to the porn that, that they're watching as well because oh, women, women okay. are also. I mean, the same porn that men are watching is the, the same, same porn available to women. So I think it's it's affecting both. Don't men watch more porn like? Yeah, I mean, they might, might, might I'm not sure, more, but, but this, this, it's the same type of porn, and I think it still affects women in, or, in a way. Could, as, as I mean, couldn't it also be the case though that like one guy comes in and he's like into some BDSM stuff, and then the chick's super into it, and then she's just tainted for all her future partners. <laughs> I guess so. I'm, I'm not. not look, I, I mean, that's not po that taint, is possible. Not, maybe not tainted. The but like, the kink. <laughs> she's just like. It's a start of something. Well, it's sensual, like, and someone else is into it. Yeah, I mean, I would say something. whatever, you know. But it's like yeah. okay. But if you. That's what you're into. If you introduce it, and then, like, bro, I'm not trying to catch a case to like for a woman's sexual gratification. Like, I'll do other shit. I'll do as much as I can, but, bro, I'm not trying to slap a chick around in the bedroom. No offense. But and some that's, some men want to do that and that's actually healthy that you feel that way because so many men like will just do it because they see it in porno or and they think to. that's normal i think it is a normal yes. healthy reaction for you as a man to be like i don't want to hit you like you. and you said you don't pay for right porn thing. you don't really watch it <laughs> you so, I mean, should that's probably feel that why. way because yes. you're not watching every single day women getting well, i hit. mean i've seen porn but i'm like it's pretty rare <laughs> yeah you know, it's rare, rare what for women to be hit. No, no, no for no, him no, to for watch porn. For him to watch porn. I was like, I don't know. No, but look, I mean, look, you could have like, you know, when it comes to sex, you can. It doesn't mean you have to be like a fucking passive wuss. No. If you don't want to hit a girl, but like, yeah, I just don't really feel inclined to like smack a girl around in the bedroom or be like excessively rough. But like, a little fucking spanking or hair pulling, whatever. That's fine. But like. Yeah. Getting rowdy. But like leaving marks and shit, I'm not not really my thing. Okay, we have Diesel Daddy. <laughs> Go ahead. Three three a foe in the red. You literally sell your body for money. How is it possible for you to have any less self esteem? I don't financially support your perverse satanic content. Satanic? How so how is it hypocritical for me to comment that down with the who's like I said, Diesel Daddy, um you're colorblind as fuck. My dress is orange for starters. <laughs> Second, Roasted. I am absolutely confident in who I am. Uh, and yeah, just because I am a legal prostitute doesn't make me less of a human. So, yeah. She's still making $400,000 oh, a year, whether and or I'm not still, you're supporting yeah, her. And I'm still making way more money than you, Mr. Uh, Ooh, Diesel Daddy. Diesel Daddy. Uh, and, and probably a lot of you viewers that are on here. So do not bash me for being a sex worker. What does Diesel Daddy feel about like Mary Magdalene? Who the? Mary Magdalene, like, like from the Bible, know, guys? <laughs> she was homies Sorry. with Jesus. Oh, yeah. Jesus. And me being she a sex worker has really made close. me They're even hair. more confident, they were, like, too. Romantic. More confident? Yeah. Yes, being in this industry. Okay. For sure. All right. 
Wait, oh, qu uh, quick question. I, I, you seemed open to answering it. Uh, I do want to ask the other girls here. Uh, so you said you're a really high earner when it comes to the industry that you're in. Um, are you able to break, so you, you do, do you still dance or mostly just yeah, OF I'm, and like yeah, the... Yeah, so I'm a stripper. Okay. I do OnlyFans. I stream on Streammates. And right now I'm currently at the Bunny Ranch. Okay, sorry, can you just scoot your mic a little closer towards you? You hate me, don't you? Okay. <laughs> no, but I, is this good enough? Uh, if you could just tilt it down ever so slightly. Uh, are you down to... Like you make this? six? Yeah, perfect. You make six figures a month? M or mid, high figures? Mid... Five figures a month? I make... Sometimes six so figures. So monthly, it depends. Yeah. Um, on a bad month, I can make anywhere like 10 grand. On a good month, I can make like 90,000. What's the most you've made in the year? Would be the $400,000 a year that I had. Is that the most recent? Yes. Okay, nice. Do you want to... I mean, I don't want to disclose like the exact, but... Range is Monthly, fine mid five figures. Essie? I don't think it's appropriate to talk about how much your income sure, is. Sure, totally fine. Um, Pixie looks like she's considering a career change. Um, <laughs> I'm pulling some decent cheddar. I'm oh, pulling some pretty good cheddar. Some cheddar. Yes. What about some uh, Parmesan? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I have, um, oh I have two houses paid for. Oh. I have um, a house in Costa Rica. I have a, a portfolio that's doing well. Right. Like pretty much everything that I have are have are assets at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You. Uh, I put my son through private school. Let's go. You, did a you, lot uh, of travel. Have you ever been a sugar mama to any young bucks? <laughs> <laughs> any young studs out there? I think there's some that are feeling me out for that. But oh, shit, I've been a sugar mama in fun. Like 22. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're a sugar mama? Yes. What, what would you do for your sugar baby? Are you Aww. asking me or her? Uh, both of you. you go first. I have a lot of sex with him. <laughs> sex but, <with> Yeah. <laughs> Was he Bill Clinton? What the fuck? <laughs> No, I have a lot of youngins that want to do OnlyFans, which is like perfect because they're young and their bodies are great and they have huge cocks and they've got the stamina to go and come a lot. So like uh, for me, like huh? I give them the trade off if they want to work with me in film because I usually charge quite a bit to film. People will come out of the gate and that happens to us all the time. They'll be like, oh, you do OnlyFans? Okay, well, we can just negate the, the entertainment fee. It's like, no, <laughs> no, you're going to pay. Okay. The Unless last you're really hot. Um, like sugar baby guy that I had, I helped him pay for his CDL license actually. So trucker. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that was. Uh, that's so sweet. Wait, Brian, how oh, much yeah, do you I'm make? I'm very generous. So. I am a, I am a starving college student. <laughs> uh, it's tough out there, guys. Speaking of which. Read answer for the uh, you know, TTS one. Just saying, guys. Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, oh, Twitch. Pull it, let's pull up the Twitch really quick. Guys, twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow. Drop us a Prime sub. Yo, uh, Ellie, thank for the Prime. Steve, th Stevie, th Prime, thank for the Prime. Zerker, thank for the Prime. Cody, thank for the Tier 1. Appreciate it. Guys, drop us a follow and a Prime sub on Twitch if you have one. Twitch.tv slash whatever. What's I'm up? so sorry. I try to stay for as long as I can, but I have to work in the morning, so I have to go. Oh, no, are you cool to stay for another like 10, 15 minutes? Yeah, that's fine. For us to wrap Absolutely up. Fine, yeah. Okay. 20, 20 minutes? You think? <laughs> I could do, I could, I like could do 20, max like, like 20 minutes. You think like 25 or? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that's 20, what we like. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try to wrap, we'll wrap Thank up you, soon. Thank you. I'm here. sorry. No, it's, it's all good. I was planning to wrap up pre, uh, pretty soon here, anyways. Let me just check on some chats we've had. We have. <laughs> Um, you better call him out right now. <laughs> we have. Well, I was going to anyways. Oh, here. It's fine. The comment oh, I missed that was it. Just on there. I'll, I'll pull it back up in just a it's sec. It's all right. Joe Hall, hey, thank you. I don't think the SF Giants will make the playoffs. Thoughts? Is that like a cricket team or something? I, I don't know anything about Is baseball. That baseball. It's baseball. Is that it? It's a baseball team? Baseball. Woo! Go Giants. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. All right. Uh, we have Joe. <laughs> We have Joe Hall, the Bunny Ranch, Sarah Connor. I don't know Sarah me? Connor. Because of the muscles? <laughs> is that it you? It might be. I don't, Sarah Connor? You? I don't know Sarah Connor. I think she's from the Terminator, yeah. the movies. Oh, nice. yeah. Damn. Uh, Tyler, 304 equals to three huh. 
four? Guy with Lambo trying to smash a hoe, not being a hoe is confusing. There's an expectation equal sign to blind girl who wants to marry, meets dude on Tinder, says he's 6'5", but he actually wears stilts and only makes four figures. Now she doesn't want to marry. Bro, I have no fucking idea what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> I was so confused, Brian. Tyler, Tyler excuse me. Uh, Tyler, wait. <laughs> Let me just try to parse this. I'm gonna, this, this is, uh, okay, Tyler, blind. I think he's saying, he's asking if the Lambo dude was three, four and blind. I, I'm sorry, <laughs> dude, I cannot, I tried to read it over. I can't understand. Outlaw porn, there is. Uh, Ducks 2009, outlaw porn, there's not one positive thing that porn and OF brings to society. Brian, let me come on the podcast with my NorCal girl, Lynn. How am I going to have an orgasm? Also, don't just get yeah. rid of the porn. Don't get rid of porn. We're also just saying wait, if you, you guys outlaw need porn. porn. We're going to be freaking. How not, do you not, orgasm, not, Brian? Okay, Real note. How does like Brian with, orgasm? Like with a partner? I'm not watching porn while I'm fucking my girl. Like what? So you don't, mm -hmm. what is it? You only fuck. You don't watch porn. If honestly, if I'm like in a proper relationship and I got a girl, what if, I don't need porn. What like, if you're I don't not in a proper? Huh? Not proper. What do you mean not proper? Not proper relationship. Now you're what are you doing? Like if I'm single? Yes. yes. If I've been single for an extended period of time, maybe I'll use it as an aid for like, once a week. Like a visual or aid or just your hand and imagination? No, I, I, look, I'm, I'm not going to cap here. Like, yes, if I'm choking the... Chua what the fuck is it called? What are the terms? Choking, choking the chicken. Choking, if I'm choking the chicken, <laughs> but I'm not like a compulsive, like every single day, multiple times a day. It's just a visual aid. How often do you masturbate? Bro, what the fuck? This no, shit that, no, you want to know. Now it's on you. Sure, sure. I'll answer. Why not? Since um, we're talking about porn. Me, when I'm single. If I'm in a relationship, like almost never. Like unless she's fucking gone for two weeks or so. You know, like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe once. But, uh, once a week, maybe. And do you like, do you usually use porn or no? Do you? Yeah, yeah, I use porn. Okay. But That's I'm not cool. like a compulsive porn consumer, yes. like daily no. buying. No, not like, if it's no. just once a week. Yeah, no, once no, no, a no, week, no. 20, no. 30 minutes. Yeah. Shit, I, maybe I should bump that. <laughs> I should bump that up. Shit, I. No. Telling on yourself. 90 minutes. On yourself Let's now. go. 90 minutes. On one hand, I'm like, yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to like sell it like, I don't watch that much porn, but also kind of, okay, whatever. I just think too, <laughs> if you actually just, were like to be serious about outlawing porn, that porn is still going to exist and it's going to be very, very expensive. Yeah. And way more expensive. And prostitutes and sex workers will be making even more money. Mm, true. Oh, that is. Because it's not going to go away. But she's right. Mm. Yeah. Word. <laughs> Word. Okay. Do we have any more? Oh, we have the real slider. Oh, and Thank I have you, to reply to that comment. That's the one. This one? No, yeah. the one that was up there. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to read it? Sure. The OF content creator on the far right. Hey, you do sex work for a living and still have the audacity to wear the Christ, cross of our Savior on your neck. That is nothing but disrespect for the man who died for our sins for you to live a faithful life. First of all, I would have to actually believe in religion for that to matter to me. Secondly, I already stated it's not a cross. It's actually a sword. And thirdly, um, Jesus would actually like me more than you, considering he hung out with Mary Magdalene and prostitutes and the what? sinners of the world. Period. Instead of the people that were actually harassing them, you guys would have killed Jesus Christ all over again. She ate and, and no crumbs. That's true. She ate and left no fucking crumbs. I agree. Erroneous. Good job. Boom. I don't know. I, and thank you, Joe. I don't know if that's any of that shit is historically accurate, but okay. It is. God yes. loved hoes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you're. I know that this is a very foul Sorry. object. It is. But I need well, you to like, God loves hoes. Okay. Biblically, he it's known he spent time with people that weren't necessarily holy the in the, uh, the eyes of the law in that time period. Oh, no. So yes, he was spending time with it's okay. He was spending time with prostitutes. He was spending time with time with tax workers and all those things like that. So mm -hmm. he was Did he get it on Mary? Is, I don't think it, that no. He was never promiscuous yeah, he with, was Mary. with Mary. He was uh, never with her. But I know that there was blasphemy. times that he was romantic, romantic with, with her, her, and he he loved her. Aww. He also, I mean, there, but it's not in the Bible. It's in the like removed pieces yeah. of the Bible. When someone asked him like, oh, like what should you do with a, with a woman who makes a guys' eyes wonder? He also said like, pluck thine own eyes. Like get your like basically it's your fault. Get your eyes out. Right. Like don't blame it on the woman. So, so yeah. Jesus fell in love with a low quality woman. Is that <laughs> yeah. yes? Yeah. Jesus fell in love with a Where's low Candace quality now? woman. Where is she? <laughs> Candace, she Jesus fell in love with a low quality woman. I How was do you raised Catholic, that? so I'm actually not capping. Like, I know this stuff to be factual in the Bible. I would have to uh, do a little research Please on this do. because there's some 
I mean, think about accounts it. Of, uh, Jesus was a person who wanted to spread okay, good okay, and like dating. Let's okay. and yeah. love. But, mm-hmm. yeah. but you get my point, right? Yeah. yeah. It okay. was all about forgiveness and loving everybody. And thank you for being mm-hmm. honest about your knowledge about it because you're yeah, religious and you're conservative. Mm-hmm. Good times. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Okay. Uh, what what are the things that... Oh, uh, I'm curious. Uh, do you guys, I don't know if you guys like keep a record of this, but do you keep track or do you know how many men that you've slept with when it comes to the work you do? I do. I kind of have a guesstimation. Uh, you go I first, have, and then we'll have. I one. actually have a book with oh, all book. like I'm there. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> My birthday's on Saturday, and I just love being organized. So if I meet a guy at the Bunny Ranch, I will um, write his name down. Uh, a girl actually from the Bunny Ranch taught me this. Her name is Nico, but I'll actually write his name down. Where I met him from? Was it a call in? Did he place a deposit down? Like, did I meet him? Did he email me or did he walk in? Did I see him sitting at the bar or whatever? And if we mm. party together and he paid me, I do keep track of how much he paid me for how long and how I met him. Bookkeeping. Yeah, because when a, cli- when, when a client comes back to me, I want to be able to remember like what we did last, kind of like little notes about our session, like what we did last, what he really liked, like mm. stuff so, like, about him. So it kind of like gives me a refresher. Do, like a therapist, do a sex therapist. Right. I am, yeah. I consider myself uh, so a So what, what's the total number? I'm not gonna give you my. Total oh, I, th- number. I, 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 I don't. I don't have. Uh, I don't have like a total number. What's the um, like? Is my it one year. Range? I don't know. My one year mark is coming around September 15th of me being doing this for a year. So yeah. I'll be able to like total it up then. But I really don't know right now. I can't. Yeah, the like guesstimate. I really don't know. Hundred plus. Okay. Well. Okay. Okay. She said she had a number. Sure. Well. Okay. So well, I keep an Excel spreadsheet. And I, every time I make a sell, I go in and, and put it down. And then in, in my contacts, I, I keep notes on, on individuals as well. Um, so I know how to, to help them if they, when they come back. Um, I would, I have to say like, cause I've been doing this since the HBO special. So was that was, oh, I mean, I'm like a 15 nine. year vet in the industry. So I'm an arrival. I'm going to say I could probably rival Gene Simmons numbers. What was the name I of mean, the special? I want to watch it. Uh, Cat House. House. Cat House. I loved I loved Cat House when it was on. They asked me to get on. Wasn't that funny? I loved it. I thought it was yeah. so fun. Um, yeah, and very very interesting because obviously I'd never like seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. So I really liked that when you were mentioning um, Amy. I yeah. was like, oh, I yes. loved Amy. Amy, yeah. she's, supposed to, she's so yeah. cute. She's always... I just have a question if you don't... If... Sure, sure, sure. Okay. How do you guys sleep with somebody if you're not attracted to them? Or right. like, are there other... I guess I should... Are there ever people that you guys that's, get as a client that you're just not like you you're just like oh god okay so like i feel like that's very shallow to be like oh you look ugly and i'm not gonna have sex with you you know what i mean i feel like at the end of the day it's all about personality and how they treat mm-hmm. me so when my customers come in smelling great and they are their hygiene is on point that's all that really matters to me is there a hose how in is the back? your we have <laughs> bathrooms. It's okay. like a little facility. I have a bedroom. We have a bathroom. It's mandatory that all of our clients take a shower before Even partying with us. Even if they come us. in clean. They Even if they come in clean, it doesn't shower. matter. You sweat. You We're sitting right now, and we're still sweating. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's absolutely a must that they shower before partying with us. Did there ever used to be us. a hose? Never was. <laughs> Just I spray them with a cold hose. But for, um, for this festival, what was it called? Burning Man? Yeah. We were all joking around at the Bunny Ranch. We were like, ha, ha, ha. All these guys are going to come in after Burning Man. We should probably just hose them down before they come in because usually a lot of guys from Burning Man will come in and they'll have like... Mud. Oh, dirt. Yeah. 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 So I, They're yuppies. Wait, so did you answer though, uh, What? what's the total number? Oh. It's, it's you don't have lot. to be like I 1,232, mean, just like... Uh, I'm thinking it's probably 2000, in the thousands at this thousands point, you know, yeah. Of sexual parties. Yeah, because there were times, yeah. like, there were times when it was really busy at the Bunny Ranch where yeah. if I was going, they called me the Energizer Bunny, because mm-hmm. I've never really done a lot of alcohol and drugs, but I've always worked out. Right. So athletically speaking, like, I could get it Endurance. on all day Endurance. long. So if I'm doing 10 guys in a day, right? 10, okay. But then there's other times where maybe I do two people in one week. It's very, it's appointment-based. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's how much you want to work. And also, there, you know, during this time, like, for the most part, I j- would just, just work for two weeks and have the rest of the month off. Right. Nice. 
Yeah. I, I have a question. Um, what would you say the percentages of like return clients to non-return clients? Just out of curiosity. I get uh, quite a lot of, of mm-hmm. regulars. I have 10 year regulars that I've oh, seen wow. for 10 years. And they're, it's almost like, we're kind of like a married couple in ways. Mm-hmm. I get a fair amount. If you're a good provider um, and you're really respectful um, and you're clean and you know, you'll know you get repeat regulars and you'll relationship build with them. Yeah, yeah, like we're, good, we're friends. Yeah, of we support course. each other in the community. Yeah, I was curious because I would assume that if you if somebody had a good experience and you know they enjoyed it that they would probably come back, but I wasn't sure like what the ratio would be. Yeah, and like it we depends do, on the provider. Yeah. We call them kind of like brothel boyfriends at that point a little bit because they're like our boyfriends. You know, they come yeah. to see us. They bring us flowers and stuff, right? So it's yeah. like they come back pretty regularly. Yeah, and yeah. they bring us gifts too, right? Uh, yes. They'll like take yeah, it's take amazing. us out, take us on trips. The amount of money, um, one guy. I mean, he kept seeing me. I mean, he spent over a hundred thousand dollars alone on me in one year, and that was just me. Yeah. There's some other gals that, you know, I know that he likes to see, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. kind of related to this body count. All of us? Well, in general? so, because there's the men that you slept with for your work, but then there's, like, men, obviously, that are not for your work. I assume that you've had encounters or relationships. Um, what do you think? Yeah, is that, for sure. Is that up there, too, or? Um, or do you encompass them all in the same number? Mm-hmm. No, I mean definitely you for lose pay. Track after a thousand. For shows. pay, because mm-hmm. I'm very when when it's for personal, I get very selective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get very picky. Yes, you and too. Yes, it's be and me. because we are very clean. Like I know that I get tested every week on the dot. I know for a fact that I do not have anything you know what i mean it's like am i really gonna have sex with this hinge dude for a one night stand and risk losing your career yes. losing my career that makes me 400 five hundred thousand dollars a year hell no you know what i mean so i'm very selective and picky as to who i'm gonna be spending my time with now that i can make so much money and you mm. know what i mean it's yeah. like and also it's like yeah it's just like that basically okay uh let, we can go around the table on body count really quick. Maddie, why don't we start with you? Eight. I'd prefer not to say. Wait, is it? Are your parents? They, did you come with your parents this time? No. But they're watching. Is it because they're, they're watching? No, I just think that's a piece of information that's for myself. Sure. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, my parents I, are very, we're very excited about this episode because Candace Owens was going to be on it, so I will not be answering that. But I've answered it in previous episodes. Guys, so. if you want to know, you, go, you got to go back. Go find to her, it. Her, her, it's been a while since you've been on, I think. It's been uh, mm-hmm. it's the longest. Trying to think when you were last on. When were you? Who? Was it with Kiko? Not, not the big panel, but. I think this might be my sixth, sixth time on. And I think oh. my last time was like before spring, before the last quarter of my. Senior it's year of college long. started. It's been so, yeah. Essie? I already said this before, but mine's six. I do not want to answer that question either. Pixie love. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, can you give us a range? No. Less than 10, more than 10? No. I will not, because any information is bad information. Is it zero? No, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> like Me? your civilian body count. <laughs> My civilian troops. body count. Wait, can you pull the mic closer towards you? <laughs> like this close? Perfect. That's great. Okay. That's perfect. Um, civilian body count. I want to say less than ten. You want to say less than ten? Yes. I want to say that I'm a billionaire. <laughs> Not everything that I want is Civilian. true. Civilian. So I actually started sex work when I turned 18 and in high school and middle school I knew a lot of girls that were not even selling sending out new photos and videos let's let's not talk about that no I know and so um I never did that and so the day I turned 18 I profited off of selling my nudes okay the legal way and the only way you know what I mean so and I lost my virginity at 17 years old I never really like was sleeping with multiple dudes and like hanging out with multiple guys and stuff like that. So my sure. civilian body count is extremely low and then my working body count is 
very high mm. and yeah so there's that i stopped counting after like five so i really don't know <laughs> <laughs> to be honest wait you stopped counting after five yeah i just like didn't really care anymore it wasn't a metric that mattered to me but like let's say it's honest. 10 right exactly. i feel like you'd remember you'd still remember even if you stopped counting you'd be like okay well there was jace and <laughs> I mean, Rupert. you have to keep in mind, I'm 31. So, like, I lost my virginity when I was 16. That's 15 years ago. Like, I, okay. I don't... Should, should we do some yeah. a little math here? Sure, oh, go for it. Like, All right, like, so three dicks a year <laughs> times... <laughs> that is a lot. That's cause that, that's 31, like, so that's 15. Three times 15, that's 45. 45 dicks. I would say that's not accurate Not at all. accurate. Because you have to consider that I've had relationships for several years and I had situationships too. I wouldn't even say that there was three a year and a lot of times. And I was celibate for two years. So. But maybe there was one year where <laughs> you know like. Why are you just assuming? Well, Why just, are you assuming? <laughs> look we have. Okay so we're we're a couple. We're close to uh, UCSB, University of California, Santa Barbara, yes. which is ranked as one of the number one party schools in the nation. And let me, let me tell you as a spectator, we got girls freshman year in their first quarter, not even their first year, their first quarter or semester, 20, 30, 40. Dang. I was, wow. so I didn't go to traditional like college i went to school in new york city so we didn't have like on-campus housing and stuff you like that you went to that. ventriloquist school yeah. in new york no oh, okay, okay, my bad. i went to like a like an accredited university but for it wasn't ventri like for ventriloquism no oh, okay my where bad. are you sorry, getting sorry. that from i don't know you said you didn't go to a traditional school so i was just filling in the blanks i went to an, an accredited university for an actual degree but it wasn't like a place that had a full on campus like with dorms scene. and frats yeah. and stuff like that so in college, I actually was celibate for the entirety of my college career until I was in a relationship my last year of college. So, and it's not sad. It's not sad at all. It was great. It was totally fine. Um, so R.I.P.'s in the chat for Azalea. Did I say it right Azalea. this time? No, Azalea. I'm you sorry, said I'm it sorry, that way that. every time. Azalea. Say it. I want to know what's say your body it. count. Yeah. 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 Since you always ask us that. As a man of God. I do not disclose oh, my on. body count. Bull. Come on. I'm a man of God. Don't be a Pixie, pussy. what do you think my body count is? Why me? Why do I have to guess? I don't know. You just seem like you have good radar for, <laughs> for body counts. For body count. What do you think it is, Pixie? Um, do you think I'm, I, I'm a, I was a, a man whore, a man slut? Were you? No, I'm asking if uh, you think I was. Um, you, th you think so? You said was, maybe you still are. <laughs> yeah, sure, don't discount the fact that I could still be a man ho. Um, how about you, you tell us? Have you ever no, had. No, 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 you just got to uh, Okay, fuck. Um, what, what did you want me to tell you? If you ever had a phase where you're particularly promiscuous, that'd be me answering the question with which I'd asked you to guess, but. I mean, it, I would still guess. You're just telling me if the number's gonna be higher or lower. I'm already confused, Pixie. Okay, Can you I gotta bring eight. it down. This is it, huh? Eight. Eight was, eight was what eight. I was gonna My say. Body? Your body yeah. count. Eight. eight. I can neither confirm or deny if this is the case. Oh. I, I say, say higher one. or lower? Nope. I say 20. 20. 20. <laughs> I say more than 20, actually. <laughs> Okay. I, Anybody I else? Think, I think Brian wishes it was 20. I don't <laughs> think it's that high. Oh, that's kind of insulting. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No offense, but I'm just being like... You, you don't think I pull? I think you took that as a compliment, is what mm. I'm saying. I feel like it's she six it to 20. eight. Yes. Yeah. Six to eight is a good same. range. It's low for sure. Or five. No, you or said you're like, a man of God. Maybe like, <laughs> maybe like truthful, honest answer. Yeah, sure. Damn, Brian, Four. I think you pull. Four? Four? <laughs> You think you think I pull? It's twenty. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> how many? I feel, how many I feel like though that's twenty is not four. even that much. How is, many? Is it? Am I right? Four. I feel how like many twenty is not that much. Have you had? Well, if you got game, like as a dude, you you can. Play you don't more got than game. Who said you have game? Why? Well, you I have game? Say, <laughs> I didn't say I have game. I maybe I don't have your kind of game. <laughs> I feel I feel like the type of guy that like will have to lock you down. Like, you need a fucking hyper-masculine... Because I'm kind of the class clown type of guy. I'm not like the fucking... I'm not the jock dude. I'm not like the hyper-masculine no dude. No chat here. So wait, so what kind of guy do I need to I'm lock me down? I'm the class clown dude, you know? <laughs> what huh? kind of guy do I need to lock me down? I feel like... 
you would go for an MMA fighter. <laughs> my ex was an MMA fighter. Oh, boom. Boom. my ex Got actually it. was an MMA fighter. Oh, boom. <laughs> boom. More than he one. He was, more and he was one? 45 years old. Was there more than one? More than one MMA fighter? No, just one. Any oh. boxers? He was 45. 45. How yeah. old are you? Ooh. Professional UFC fighter. Um, any cops? What's his name? Any Andrew Tate. Cops? No. That any cops? Have you Wait, dated I'm, <laughs> what's his name? I Andrew the cop. What did you ask me? No, she I didn't ask. Well, I made a joke. He <laughs> asked me what his name was. Wait, she asked what? <laughs> I made I made a joke because he was like ex ex UFC fighter. I was like, oh, Andrew Tate. No, <laughs> not Andrew Tate. <laughs> it's so no, such a good joke. <laughs> a UFC. <laughs> That's a great joke. I laughed that at That is so he funny that you say it. that though. We both laughed at did I say it. what? That, that MMA he was fighter? yeah, because he yeah, that's what he does. Um, I th funny. Your current wait, past ex. Yeah. Okay. I dated him for like a couple months. I think, I want to say. But you were right. I was right. Well, yeah, because okay. right, because I, I was, dated a yeah. yeah. The I was thinking UFC of fighter. like making some other guesses, but oh. For some reason, I thought you'd be into like a nerdy guy or something. No. I don't know why. No, That's so funny. I don't have the type of game to get you. No, no chance. I, I'm just not that guy. I'm not that guy. You need like, a, you basically need a guy who could be a pimp, but isn't. I love <laughs> Brian. Maybe I, maybe I do. Yeah, you're great. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? Cool. Yeah, like cool. Like he's not a pimp, but he could be. Are you guys listening to him? Like, take notes. Wait, is this? Am I, are you just joking? No, I like, like take notes. Like, mm. are you joking, or is that kind mm. of like spot on? Spot on. Uh, yeah. Do you think you could look at everybody and tell and like them this what guy was like is? big? Oh, that'd be yeah, great. this guy's like yeah, big that and had a, like a beard, yes, and he actually, was really good yes. looking. That's all our type. But he was really manipulative. <laughs> really manipulative. Yeah, the UFC, I think you go Mr. For, UFC. Do you go for really toxic guys? No. Oh, okay. Mr. Okay, UFC there. is what my friends like to call him. Mr. UFC. Well, because everybody's like, you what's his name? You still talk about your ex? That's kind of a no. No, you're so funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, you. Ah, <sighs> oh, you're tough. I don't know. Uh, muscular guys? Absolutely not. Really? Fuck. Absolutely not. Okay, um, mm. bears. Like hairy dudes. No. no? Absolutely not. Fuck. You're really good at this game, Brian. <laughs> well, he got okay, one. Right. one for two. You're one for two. Right, and it was spot on with me. You like, how about, you like fucking, like, artsy dudes that are emotionally unavailable. No. Fuck. Okay. I could just tell I, you. you. I got think three. she likes sweet, gentle men. That's I like her boyfriend. I like like I gamer dudes. Oh, gentle giants. Yeah. Well, not even giants. Like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gentle gnomes. <laughs> yeah, I like gamer dudes. Like I like nerdy dudes, but I do like a little sensitivity on mm. them for sure. I think Pixie likes. I think she's super into men. That. Hmm. Mm. That, would make artisan bread <laughs> like, like kind of hipstery you kind of like a little hipster dude he, if he's an, if he's a bit older he had an emo phase in high school yeah. um, he listens like, to my chemical romance on. right he listens to my chemical romance no, i'm laughing because literally like earlier we were t i was talking about my type and i was like yeah i think emo dudes are kind of cute yeah. like i still have a soft spot for them even though i'm not in high school anymore like there's something about there Maybe a guy who plays an instrument, probably like a guitar. Maybe a even a, even a uh, a ukulele. I could see you going yeah. for a ukulele guy. Um, <laughs> probably super liberal, dude. <laughs> um, but I mean, you're liberal, so that yeah. it attracts. <laughs> uh, actually, you know. But on the flip side, I think you are deeply attracted to the most like super conservative dude like i bet you you go crazy around super conservative guys no but oh, yeah i like guys I, I know for the conservative guys but i do like um people who can argue with me and people like, that can oh. argue yeah okay. like i like going back and forth on a debate oh, like you gotta challenge me intellectually okay i gotta challenge mm. you intellectually okay mm. well all right i'm out of the picture there <laughs> no. um, and we got essie here I feel like Essie 
based off what you said last time, because you said you like toxic dudes, if I recall. Yeah, I used to. That was my... Oh, just a little closer to them. Oh, sorry, um, I forgot. You like a heavily tatted dude. I think you'd like, mm. you, you would date uh, like someone in a band, probably like, someone that rides I'm trying to think cycle. what kind of band <laughs> though. Like it, it would have to be, you'd probably like, I don't know if you would date long-term, but you would definitely Fuck somebody from AFI. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't even know what that is. You don't know AFI? You don't know okay. AFI? No. Oh my God. Okay. Miss Murder? I, I, I mi I, okay, I misread that. Um, <laughs> you. Uh, MMA fighters? No? No? Um, <laughs> no. AFI was on track. I think, what about a guy who drives a truck? Mm -mm. No? Not a truck? No. Lady. Okay, what about a Prius? <laughs> I could work with a Prius. I could work with that. Nice. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you like men who are emotionally unavailable. You can't. We're talking about now. We're not talking about the men I used to oh, go for. Oh, my bad. We're just talking about now. Okay. You still like them, though, but you're trying to correct your... I'm getting cooked right now. You're trying to correct your... Um, uh, do you like guys with dad bods? Yeah, yeah, okay. you're on the right path. Like tattoos, dad tattoos, bods. Tattoos, dad bods. Maybe the gauges. No. No. No, not a fan. That's pixie. <laughs> yeah, that's like her. I don't. Pixies. Is there two? I don't like the so big good. thingies. Is yeah. that that scares mm -hmm. me? I feel like I don't know. It gets scary this, when it's like. Chat, that wait, way. chat. Is this getting boring? Chat. <laughs> one in the chat. Is this boring that I'm this <laughs> section right now? Um, here, I'll go really quick. Um, black men. Um, <laughs> Uh, reformed frat boys. <gasps> wow. <laughs> oh, that is actually so spot on. It's good? truly mind blowing to me. Reformed frat, frat boys? boys? Yes. My jaw actually got this crazy. Um, they they <laughs> wear, what is it, Sperry's and. What are the shoes that the frat boys wear? Moccasins. Sperry's. They wear like oh, the New shoes. Balances. The Ka New Balances. Khakis, New, balance. Balance. New Balance and Chubby's. Uh, I don't know. What Lily that. is really attracted to. Um, she likes a project, okay? No. She likes yeah. a guy who's recently been released from prison. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, even she wants a guy who is currently in prison. She, she likes that oh. because it's safe. I thought it was going to yeah. be like a churchgoer. <laughs> There's, um, you, you're actually, my understanding is you're actually pen pals right now with three uh, life sentence inmates. Absolutely. No. Definitely spot on. And Madison's type is <laughs> Frankie's my type. I mean, hopefully her boyfriend, right? Is, is, <laughs> well, right. Besides, before, your like before your boyfriend, before your boyfriend, your type. I've had the was, same type my whole entire life. Was, your boyfriend, and it's literally my boyfriend. Aww. Besides, like my okay. ex-boyfriend was like the complete opposite. Wait, what's your oh, boyfriend? Okay. What type, like, is he nerdy? Yeah. Is he an MMA fighter? No, I'm just really, like, physical-wise, I'm into, like, white guys, like, aunt, who have, like, brown, curly, <laughs> curlier hair. Nice. Oh, okay. And, I don't know. I like nice also, guys. Also, cowboys, though. Shout out to cowboys. I was going to say, you uh, look cowboys. Like I love cowboys. I <laughs> like a cowboy. Until he asks you to help with the cows. And I would. No, I, grew I would up love on a ranch. that. I, I would be so down cattle. to go to a farm. 100%. Yeah. Me too. Um, That's the plan. <laughs> anybody want to guess what my type is? Yes. Okay. You uh -oh. like women who wear low rise jeans. Um, <laughs> and she. <laughs> what? <laughs> she, she, she has natural hair. She's never dyed her hair ever in her life. Mm. Super mm. conservative. She wears like. You know what's crazy? Turtlenecks. Turtlenecks yeah. and like the jean pencil skirts. You know uh, what I mean? Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what's actually crazy? I, just... I, I actually like, like, aesthetically, women who have color in their hair. Like, and it could be either like red, green. Mm, green's kind of weird. But like red, pink, or blue. I actually, I like it. But it's usually tied to a chick that's like bonkers. <laughs> but it used to be like, Okay, so I'm, I'm 34, right? So before, like, politics got fucking crazy, 
it used to just be a girl with daddy issues if she had color in her hair. Now it usually is also an indicator of your politics and typically you're like hardcore SJ, like social justice warrior, or like probably really liberal, really progressive, really feminist. But just, ex just the aesthetically, I actually do think color hair looks good. So he's got like an alt his girl. dream girl right there. That's actually his wife. Kiki, she's got the blue hair. Like That's his girlfriend. The girl with the blue hair oh, in the back. Definitely. Like an alternative girl. Yeah. You like but alternative girls with tattoos? He wants a conservative alt girl. Five, six? Uh, a conservative alt girl that hides all of her tattoos. With the yeah. penciled skirt and the fucking turtleneck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like, I like cutoff points for tattoos. That can only show you her tattoos. Sure, mm. why not? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, anybody else want to wager? I guess know. what do you, you know what is it what's my type you like really short girls mm. yep preferably lighter eyes yeah. just slight preference yeah slight it's you're into preference. asian chicks whoa i feel like i knew <laughs> that like somebody else on you there said that, that. you have I mean, someone said brian likes asian girls I like, but it's not like oh i'm but yeah, if I fix it. like i date i'll date white chick like it's black girl whatever latina you like okay. her to Need nothing. <laughs> need, need nothing. Need nothing. Want for nothing. Don't not bother you. No, not me. argue yes. with you. She not pick a fight her. with you. <laughs> the perfect woman. Uh, yes. yes. And she's submissive. Kiki. Nice. Submissive. Yeah, Kiki's and she's there. like, she doesn't bother anybody. Brings she's me independent. Peace. Blue brings hair. Me peace. <laughs> You're forgetting one thing. Labia. Large labia. Lar has, yes. Key. A large labia. Lar has to have. <laughs> no, okay. It doesn't have to. I don't give a fuck. I'm just. It's kind of a meme. The only way to what, go. What's this? It's been 20 it's minutes. Yes, you're right. Um, it's been 30 you, you minutes. You guys didn't drive together wrap. to you. No. Yeah, no. we're gonna wrap. I have homework yeah. Oh, to yeah. do tonight. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Okay, we're gonna wrap. I have a flight um, tomorrow. Was there one last thing? Fuck. Um, final thoughts from anybody here before we wrap. You got something. Do you want to argue some more? Really? Yeah, well, we don't have to argue right now. We can argue next time I'm on Oh, yeah. Here. Oh, you're going to be on. Oh, yes. Pixie, you're going to be on Sunday. So, okay. Yes. We can pick but it up. Okay. We yeah. should talk about birth control. Like, I would like to really You guys good think topic. it's a good topic, yeah. right? Yeah. And Candace, I'm sad that she had some like interesting things. It will, it will be a good conversation. That's all well, I want to say. Okay. Uh, really quick. Just show of hands. Who's on birth control right now? Based. Okay, cool. What does based mean? I feel like I hear that based so much. Based in reality. In... Oh, okay, okay. It's sometimes I just say it as a meme. Like I don't, <laughs> I'll say it's something I don't even mean it to. Just, oh, I don't yeah. know. Like, it's, if someone were to say, oh, yeah, I like to fucking, I don't know, collect, <laughs> collect Pokemon cards. And, okay, based. based. Cool. All right. Uh, can you pull up the Twitch really quick? Guys, go to twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow. Drop us a prime sub. Yo, Trad, thank for the prime. Snorkeler, thank for the prime. Clipped, thank for the prime. Uh, Zerker, I think I already at, thank you guys. Twitch.tv slash whatever, drop us a follow, drop us a prime sub. Uh, let me just make sure we have, get through the chats. This is the last one, I think. Rippy, when Jesus met Mary Magdalene, she stopped being a sinner and followed him. She did not continue to prostitute. Hmm. Rippy, true. thank you very much for your patronage. Yeah, she uh, started walking yeah. the appropriate path. And then we have, who do we have? Oh, that's it. Okay, cool guys. Um, so guys, this was a special show. Nor we don't, normally we don't do shows on Thursdays, but you know, uh, so we'll be back to our normal schedule Sunday with Pixie here, uh, Sunday, 5 p.m. Guys, last call, hit the like button, please, on your way out. Thank you for tuning in tonight. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. Thank you to everyone who uh, so generously super chats, donates, and supports the show. Really means the world, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. Um, big thank you to the wonderful panel tonight. Thank you for sticking around. Appreciate it. Uh, I think it was a pretty good. I like the panel. It was good. It it's was always good. good. Uh, be sure to. Uh, oh, Candace Owen was on. Shout out to Candace Owen. She had to. Uh, she had to catch a flight, so she couldn't stay for the whole thing. Um, her documentary tomorrow. Check it out. Convicting a murderer. Uh, it's on X and the Real Daily Wire tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else. Thank you to our chat mods. Thank you to Brit who's helping with timestamps. Any women who want to be on the show, DM at whatever on Instagram. We will be live again Sunday with a fantastic group, 5 p.m. Pacific. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. We will see you next time.